is it, Don? Are you worried about us? It's a risk, Josie. Now, come on, you can play it. Look, I own my house, you own this place. Oh, not again. We but... remortgage them both to raise the money. And that way we buy the garage in joint names. Have you told Bowen this? No, of course I haven't. I know what you're thinking. So, yeah? Yeah. You're thinking, suppose we don't stay together and we split up, what no. happens then? No. I'm thinking, what's your daughter going to say when Mum flogs the house to buy a boyfriend a garage? Don't flog it, remortgage it. Anyway, she can lump it. I'm making a good investment. Yeah, we've only got Baldwin's word for that. I'm investing in you, us. And then if we don't stop together, well, all I've lost is you, isn't it? Still got half the garage. <laughs> what's all this about us splitting up? I'm just trying to see it from all angles, Don. You know, I'm just... Trying to put your mind at rest. It's because it's Baldwin, isn't it? Anyone else should snatch their hand off. Plenty of people have flogged garages, Josie, and I haven't bought any of them. I'm just saying there might be a catch. Have you thought of that? Council driving the motorway straight through it or summer. The bird. I don't trust Baldwin and I never will. I don't mean to say I'm not thinking about it, right, but I am. I just wish I knew, that's all. Knew what? What the catch was. Morning, Desmond. Morning, Derek. I heard the glass break, but when I looked out, there was nobody there. Sorry? Last night, your bedroom window. Was it a brick? Ha <laughs> ha April Fool! <laughs> I was going to ring. Then I thought, no, I'll see Norman face to face, have it out with him, as it were. If he knows out, he'll tell me, provided he's face to face. Well, you have my word, Mr. Furman. I've not heard from Reginald Holdsworth. Good enough for me, Norman. Fax machines, eh? They're cowards, too. Do unto others as you would expect to be done by, but do it by fax, and you can get away with murder. So that's all the fact said, that he was leaving? Left, gone. Had the ner nerve to mention pension right. Can he contact me at some later date? Well, he didn't give any reasons. Just passed on his apologies. Well, going so quick, my first thought was he'd taken something with him, like the contents of the safe. Anyway, I checked, and it's just Holdsworth we're short of. Well, that's not like him, just to take off. He's done it, Norman. Stabbed us in the back. I'm off to lower stuff now to sort things out. I'll let you know. Right, bye-bye, Mr. Furman. Goodness knows what he said in his letter. It upset our Maureen. She took off her lower stuff without a word. Well, perhaps Reg is ill. Perhaps that's what his letter said and Maureen's just gone to look after him. Well, you phoned. Well, you're her mother. She should tell you what's going on. Well, I tried phoning the flat this morning. I got his stupid answer phone and his voice telling me to leave a message. And did you? Well, for our Maureen, not for him. I asked her to ring here if only to let me know she was OK. Lord knows what's going on. Right, where's the panic? Hello, Raquel. I'm sorry I couldn't say much on the phone, love. But our Maureen's in some sort of trouble. She's gone to low stuff. Reg has sent this letter. Hang on. I'm telling things in confidence, not making a press statement. I'm sorry. So, you and me hold the fort till she gets back, do we? Just you, if she doesn't phone here in the next hour, I'm off to lower stuff. Well, what else can I do? She is my daughter. My late husband, Ted. He was a keen gardener. Lovely splash of colour at his house. Flower man, was he? Oh, I'll say. Wasn't he, man? Oh, yes, he was. Mm -hmm. I do a mixture on, on the allotment, you know. Blooms and veg. Ah, oh, there's now like homegrown veg, I tell you. It must be nice to have the opportunity. Oh, well, I, I take it you have not heard yet about the application. Oh, Derek ran the council again last week. Wanted to know if they'd lost the paperwork. <laughs> a bit sarky, that, isn't it? You'll never get an allotment being sarky. Well, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's some going spare. Happen you'll hear soon, eh? When the summer's over, yes. All right, well, uh, good day. i see you, Billy. Bye. There's no need to snap his head off. It's not Billy Williams' fault you haven't got a plot. Well, he makes me sick with this homegrown veg. You can bet your life it's crammed full of sulphates and phosphates and oh, all kinds don't of... don't get bitter, Mavis. No, you get bitter. 
I would if it happened to me. What? What are you suggesting? Billy and his allotment. Depends how long he's had it, though, doesn't it? Whether you've got a case or not. A case? Council corruption. I mean, was it before or after he married the ex mayoress I can understand you and Derek hanging fire until you find out. I mean, if it was after... I'll go and put kettle on. How do you intend to get down to Lowestoft Moor? By taxi? It'll cost you a fortune. But why have you decided to go? What do you know that I don't? Nothing! Raquel told me about this letter that Reg has sent to Maureen. Now, whatever it said upset her. I don't like the idea of Maureen being alone in Lowestoft. Who said she's alone? She went on her own, didn't she? I'm sorry, Norman, but I don't trust your motives. But if he's going, why don't you go with him? No. You do know some, don't you? Did Maureen tell you what was written in that letter? Hmm? No. You go down there, she'll just clam up again. I'm sorry, Maud, I go, you stay. You are going for Maureen, aren't you? Not for him. Reg and Maureen are my friends. I'm going down for the both of them. Ring me, won't you? Of course I will. Come here. Right, I'll see you. You know, I can see to things here. Why don't you go home for a bit? And do what? 7217. Oh, yes. Right. OK, I'll have it ready. Bye-bye. Mrs Battersby, picking her order up at two o'clock. I seized the moment, Mavis. Unplanned, totally spontaneous. April Fool, I said. <laughs> Desi's face, you should have seen it. He took it in good part to help. How else could he take it? He smiled, sort of. It was a, a kind of game, set and match sort of smile, <laughs> which of course it was. How was your food, Derek? Oh, Betty, um, so-so. Um, the lettuce was a bit soft and the tomatoes only just this side of edible. Oh, well, that's always the same when they're grown artificially. Well, don't blame me. I mean, I just serve up what Billy buys in. <laughs> I just thought you might have used some of Billy's produce from the allotment. Grown with tender, loving care and influence. Now, he keeps all that for the gardening clubs. Your competitions, you know. <laughs> tender, loving care and influence. Nice one, Mavis. Went straight over her head, though. Well, I'm sick of fungicide Billy harping on all the time about his own grown veg. Use you, please, Rackle. And you want to tell that husband of yours to be more careful? What? Uh, earlier on, corner of Rosamond Street nearly drove me off the road. Oh, sorry. It's a lot on his mind. Yeah, idiot drivers. Bet you've seen your share of them, haven't you? Too true. Yeah, well, there's too many cars on the road. It should be illegal to drive anything over five years old. Or anything so ostentatious that uses space it's not entitled to. Oh, hello. Who's rattled your cage? Well, perhaps if you paid tax on road area required, you might think about getting something smaller. No, 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 I don't think you would. Anything over five years old should be scrapped. And the rich shall inherit the roads, gospel according to Mammon. What's he talking about? He's saying that it's undemocratic. No, I'm saying nothing. Nothing that you'd understand, anyway. Well, let's talk about something else, then. What about one-parent families? Of course, you can afford to say that now, can't you, now that you're flogging the garage? What? Well, about getting old cars off the road. Oh, I'm in no rush to do that, mate. They're queuing up. I just can't do the deal. <laughs> no, honest. I'm too involved with this new factory of mine, aren't I? Yeah, I don't believe you, and thousands wouldn't either. You see, if you must know, Curly's got a long drive in front of him, errand of mercy. <laughs> it didn't show me much mercy on the corner of Rosamond Street. You know, on second thoughts, I might keep that garage. It's silly to flog something that's making a good profit. I was just coming out at corner shop and I happened to glance up. It's fussy, I bet you know widow's builders. And that's when you noticed it? Yeah. Hey, Rita, don't think I'm touting for work here. I mean, if you want it fixing, you ring round and get the best deal you can. A flashings? How bad is it? Well, it, you can't tell till you get up there, really. There's a lot of cowboys in it, roofing game, isn't there? Can you do it, Bill? Yeah. But, hey, like I said, don't think I'm... Come on, Bill, show us. Where are you going? Hi. Outside with Bill. Um, oh, and you've had a call from the council. You get out, Bill. I'll okay. call you. Uh, from the council? Yeah. It seems you've got your little plot of land. You've got to be at the allotments at four o'clock to meet the fella from the parks and the cemetery. Oh, did you hear that? That's wonderful it? news. I've written it down. His name's uh, Hedges. That's it. Tim Hedges. Oh, at last. Oh, I can't believe it. 
Do you think we could start planting no, no, straight hold, hold on, Mavis. Well, Chris, once we've signed and, and paid the rent, there's nothing to Ma stop Mavis, us. Mavis, please, don't get too excited. It's exactly what he wants. Tim Hedges? That's not very original. I don't know what you're saying. I'm saying I smell a rat. Or, to be more precise, Des Barnes. It's his way of avenging my April Fool joke, don't oh, you see? Derek, he wouldn't. Oh, yes, he would. Just underneath the window, can you see it? Look, the flashing. Yeah, that looks bad. Uh, what do you think caused that? Ah, it's just wear and tear, I think. But they're only newly built, these. Aye, but it's how they build them, isn't it? Hi. Is Kevin in? Uh, no, he's still across the road. Oh, I don't suppose I could have a word with you then, could I? Um, yeah, come in. Why now? Why today? Why suddenly do we get an allotment after waiting so long? You remember what Des Barnes said, maybe? He knew a man at the town hall with influence, a man who could pull a few strings. Yes, but that's how you get allotments, with influence and pulling strings. Look at Billy Williams. Makes a mockery of coincidence. I mean, only an idiot could believe it genuine. Well, I didn't say I believed it. Know thine enemy, Mavis. General Montgomery had a photograph of Rommel in his caravan. Well, I've got a picture of Des Barnes up here. I know how his pathetic little mind works. <laughs> Mind you, if it rains hard enough, we're going to need umbrellas in here. Also, why the long faces? Did you recognise the voice? What? Oh, don't be silly, Mavis. He would have used an accomplice. Who? Look, we keep the appointment. I'll be back at half past three. Oh, now who's being silly? I've only been gone five minutes. What have I missed? Hedges, Rita. A man so unoriginal, you might almost feel sorry for him. Ha! Huh. Forty thousand, Sally. Forty thousand he's got himself a garage. Blimey, you can't get yourself a good house for that. Kevin's interested, I keep telling you. Yes, but what is he doing about it? Well, I know what he will do if I keep mithering him. He's going to tell me to forget it. Well, if he won't do it for himself, he should do it for you and the kids. It's a good investment. Yeah, well, you should be saying all this to Kevin. Oh, I tried, didn't I? You know what he's like if you put a bit of pressure on him. He starts mumbling and chattering. Talking himself out of whatever he's trying to talk himself into. Hey, thank you. That's my husband you call in. I tried having a word with him this morning, didn't I? Take the books home, I said. I'll give you a breakdown of the overheads. You can't fail, did he answer? <laughs> no, he just walked off mumbling. I tell you, he needs a good kick up the backside. And you're the only one that can do it. I'm trying, Mr Baldwin. Well, try harder, or you're going to miss out. Can't hold that sail up much longer. See ya. All right. What are you doing here? Looking for you. I won't finish till one, you know that. Oh, I think how well you could finish if you were working for yourself. So, I'm here now. Ah, forget it. I've had a word with Sally. See ya. See ya. What did he want? No, I can't guess. Just checking to see if we're still interested, that's all. I've told him we are. He doesn't have to come round here putting a bite on you. I've just washed my hands. I hope you told him it's one thing being interested, it's another trying to raise the cash. All right, 40 grand might not be a lot of money to him, but it is to us. And I don't like the hard sell either. I mean, if it's such a bargain, why is he hustling? All right, it might make a profit now, but who's to say it's going to make a profit in five years' time? I found the flat. A car's here. But as yet, there's no sign of Maury. Well, what should I tell Maud? She keeps ringing. No, just tell her that I found a car. No, no, don't tell her that. Just stall. Hang on, she's here. Maury! Maureen! Curly, Curly, have you seen Reg? I've been looking everywhere for him. No, that's why I'm here. He took his job, nobody's seen him. Look, just stay there. I'll ring you back. <sighs> Come on, let's get you inside. Oh, Curly, I'm going out of my mind. Didn't I love to send you? You know, I've even rang the police. No, she didn't. What did the police say? Well, they just took the particulars, you know. Come on, be OK. Come on, inside. Come on.
Have you started making anything yet? Oh, no, it'll be at least another week. The electrical work's not been finished. It's not like him to drag his feet. Is he fully staffed? Almost. What's your hours, then? The same as yours, Mrs Clough. <laughs> You'll be lucky. Mrs Clark to the office, please. Mrs Clark to the office. Oh, my God. What side of Clough doing it? Uh, oh, she's just popped in for a progress report. It's nothing I can't handle. <laughs> I'll be glad when we get the word processing. I'm writing a solicitor, letting him know I'm sending the garage. Is uh, cash flow one word? It's hyphenated, I think. Good, that's what I've got. Right now, uh, Ida Clough, remind me. What I take her back on? Uh, about the devil you know, I think he said. Right, well, I'd better go and put my foot down. Start as I wish to carry on. Forced separation brought on a loneliness I can't begin to describe. It lived within me, growing daily and taking over my whole being. It devoured my hopes, my dreams, and eventually my heart to the extent that I no longer cared about anything, not even us. My work suffered and I had no option but to take the honourable course and resign my position. Time and distance have taken their toll and I am no longer the man you once knew. He doesn't want me to find him, does he, Curly? But I've got to. He's desperate and I drove him to it. Hello. Mr and Mrs uh, Wilton, I presume. Yes. And you must be uh, Tim Hedges? Right. Or is it Herb Border? <laughs> Short for herbaceous and brother to the famous Australian cricketer. <laughs> it's a pity you're not a lady. Then you could be Miss Candy Tuft. <laughs> I'm sorry I thought you'd come to rent an allotment. Take it in good part. We do, don't we, Derek? Of course we do. Your friend's a wag of sorts, Mr. Um, whoever you are, but he hasn't got sufficient spark to be a real wit. This is ridiculous. Just tell him the joke's on him. And you will report this conversation accurately, won't you, when you see him? <laughs> come on, Derek. <laughs> Look, I've given up valuable time to come here and see you. Then it should be reflected in your price. Whatever Des Barnes is paying you, it should be double. <laughs> Des Barnes? I'll do that. His wife is very distressed, Mr. Furman. She keeps reading Reggie's letter. She ran here this morning, apparently. Spoke to one of the girls. Didn't tell her anything, of course. Where is she now? Out there, looking for Reg. That's where I'm supposed to be. And that's what he puts it down to, does he? Loneliness. Been away from the missus. Yeah, he's flipped his lid, if you ask me. No mention of Yvonne, then. Yvonne? Uh, forget I said that. No, 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 no. I can't forget it, because you've just said it. Maureen is expecting me to come back with some sort of news. So who is Yvonne? Just like Holdsworth to lie his way out of trouble. Not only does he run out on a top job, he takes a good waiter's clock with him. With him? Yvonne, lucky in life and lucky in love. Cops for a few grand inheritance and runs off with Reg Holdsworth. You mean? Yvonne talk at the shop. You mean Reg? Has gone off with some woman. This is terrible. You're telling me? Take me days to sort out. Meanwhile, what sort of state's Weatherfield in with you here? Get back, Norman, quick as you can. <laughs> Here's me saying you should have been there. You probably were there, lurking in a shed. No, Derek, I missed it, unfortunately. Oh, well, you'd have appreciated it, Desmond. That certainly was a nice try on your part, because but for Derek, I'd have been taken in completely. <laughs> as I say, Mavis, know thine enemy. Well, you're too good for me, Derek. But it won't stop me trying. Some you win, Desmond. <laughs> Fine, that's 254, please, Alma. Thank you. 
you, love. Mm. Ooh, first of many is this, Raquel. <laughs> We've had a busy day, haven't we, girl? This is my one and only. I'm going home to cook me husband's tea. Oh, now what about your husband, Mike? He's an old hunter. Only people of. Just anybody who's daft to take him on at business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You'll stop for another, won't you? No! Ooh, if you want to chat, you'll have to come home with me. You can natter to me while I butter the bread. Well, my only other alternative is to go and listen to him grumbling about oh. that garage. <laughs> Desperate for Kevin to buy it, you know. And what would he do if he doesn't? Sack him? Oh, uh -huh. Baldwin was telling me the opposite at dinner time. He said he didn't know a sweat to sell. Well, that is not what he told his solicitor. I mean, it may have ended up with him arranging to play golf on Sunday, but before that, he said he had a cash flow problem. <laughs> you get yourself shot here with looking at Baldwin's letters. He needs a quick sale, Don. If he doesn't get it, this new place could be in trouble. 48 to 50,000, you said, eh? That's what it said in the letter. I mean, that's what it's been valued at. Good for you. Bit of inside information is always helpful. Now, I think it's time we made him an offer. But it won't be anything like he's expected. I'm pleased, Raquel. Oh, I could do a better behind here. I'm pulled out. Oh, 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 oh she's got her feet up in front of the telly. Oh, oh hello. Congratulations in order, I believe. Uh, he was arriving just as I was leaving at the allotment. Said he was waiting for you. Sorry. Tim Hedges. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That was a stunt he was pulling. What? Are you saying you actually saw... Tim Hedges? Oh, well, he's doing the admin now, down at the town... Up... Don't say you missed him. No, you couldn't miss Tim. Smallish guy with a beard. Oh, you know him too, do you? Yeah, of course I do. Derek does an all. Now, don't you, Derek? Pint, please, Raquel. Whatever Mavis is having. Derek, triple brandy. Mavis. Mavis! So were them two. I don't know. Must have been something Billy said. I drove into this house. No phoning, no visiting. No, look, Maureen, Maureen, sometimes people do... Sometimes people do... just what they want to do. You don't think he'd harm himself, Curly? Do you think that? No, no, I, I don't think that. No, not Reg. You will stay, won't you, till we've found him? I mean, you are his friend. You've got to stay. I know he's out there. I know he is. And he's close, cos I can sense it. Do you know, look, if I would just find him and tell him I love him, then everything would be all right. <sighs> Wear your suit. What, for Baldwin? Listen, I'd wear muck-stained overalls if I had any. Oh, Don! Well, it's me that's offering. It's me that's giving him money. Should be him. In a dress suit with a starch collar. No, no, I'll tell you what. In a commissionaire's outfit, eh? With his hand out saying, Thank you very much, Mr Brennan, sir. Is there any other little thing I can do for you? Yeah, er... Uh, polish me shoes, Baldwin. Oh, what I'd give. Oh, oh. He'll be wearing a suit. <laughs> He is Mr. Suit. That's what you'll be doing when you're an employer. Ah, no, no. This employer won't be afraid to get his hands dirty. The lads will drink with me, talk with me. We'll soon find out the difference between a Cockney suit and a Manchester grafter. <laughs> yeah, and every day will be the first day of spring. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Oh. I didn't want to wait you. How long have you been out here? I couldn't sleep, so I just... Yeah, neither could I. Flaming seagulls. It wasn't the gulls. Do you want some coffee? Oh, yes, please. I'm sorry there's only one towel, but if you don't mind sharing... Don't be silly. I mean, it's on the radiator. Curly, it's occurred to me. What? Well, Reg doesn't know that I'm here. He thinks that I'm in Weatherfield, so if he tried to contact me, well, he wouldn't be able to find me. Sounds like you should be at home, then. I should be where he is. If ever there was a man in despair, Curly, it's that man that wrote that letter. If he's gone... Well, it seems like it. But if ever there was a bad penny, let's hope our Maureen doesn't turn round one day and find him stood goggling. Oh. You're here bright and early. Yeah, I've been up since six. Roy Cropper was stalking around, said he'd heard a cuckoo. I behaved myself. I never said it takes one to know one. <laughs> I know where there's another. And we don't need second sight to know you mean lowest off. No, you don't. Anyway, I'm glad you're in. You'll have to excuse me. 
Because if I don't get to the bank, the manager will skin me. That's fine. Don't you rush. <sighs> Another day of Reg the Rotter. Can I call? Oh. <laughs> you must thank your Norman for giving me a ring last night. Oh, I will. At least we know our Maureen's in one piece. Well, if not Reg. <clears throat> oh, don't lose no sleep over him. Mark my, my words. If a man goes missing in low stuff, there's something fishy about him. To some people, 4,000's peanuts. We can borrow it. Oh, great. Get us tied in with loan sharks. I'll just what we need. No, I don't mean that. All right, well, where then? Well, I can think of someone. Sal, I can't do that. She's already given us five grand. Yeah, but borrowing it. And think of the trouble that caused. A loan's not a gift. She'd get it back with interest. Sal, I couldn't. I couldn't look her in the face, could you? Well, for 4,000 quid, I could, yeah. I'll, I'll keep thinking. Oh, how useful. And in the meantime, he goes and sells it somewhere else. I wish we could get that money from your dad. Well, we're getting it back, aren't we? Yeah, in dribs and drabs. It's worse than useless. Oh, look. Oh, don't pick it up. You don't know where it's been. Dribs and drabs. It wasn't exactly bonanza time, was it, when your dad came back into our lives? There's another one. Where are you getting all these from? Up there. Hey, I only wish there were banknotes I were throwing down. Oh. What are you doing up there? Just fixing this bit of flashing for Rita. Hey, uh, you can let her pick them up. They've only been in my pocket. All right, sweetheart, but just this once. Don't do it ever again, oh. will you? Thank you, Grandad. Hey, here's a couple for Sophie, eh? You ready? Watch it. He'll be throwing slates down next. Mm -hmm. You don't think he here, does, do you? Don't care that much if he did. Come on, Rosie. Just one more look. Where, though? I don't know. Where do you go if you're a lonely, middle-aged man despairing of life? I don't think you know. You, you just wander aimlessly, you talk to yourself, you look at the sea, seeking, yearning, I don't Yeah, know. right. I can't go back to Weatherford while he's out there. I'll just walk and look. I'll do anything, Curly. I, I love him. Oh. Reg. Oh, Raquel. Uh, no, no, there's no news yet. Yeah, well, thanks anyway. Oh, yeah, see, see, of course. All right, thanks, yeah. Listen, I'll be an hour or two, all right? Take care. Hiya. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for phoning last night. It put our minds at rest. Oh, that's OK. So when are you coming back? She's having one last look. Then, I think. I hope. It's romantic, really. Despairing husband vanishes. Desperate wife searches a fish pot. <laughs> Listen, Raquel, I couldn't tell you last night because she was in the room. But it isn't romantic at all. Reg, he's chucked his job in and he's run off with some woman. Apparently, she's got money. I knew it would be something like that, the filthy beggar. Wouldn't you know? It finally starts making a bit of sense, does all this. So why haven't you told her? I wasn't sure I should. Of course you should. Just think how she'll feel when she finds out. Oh. We think of her now, scouring the streets whilst he's shacked up with his rich bit. Oh, Curly, tell her the moment she gets back. I'll be off now, Mavis. Well, chin up. Good morning. Oh, no. Sorry to hear about your bad luck with Tim Hedges. Tim Trim Hedges. <laughs> thought about that one by yourself, didn't you? Oh, let's change the subject. He you gave him an earful because you thought it was a wind-up. Unfortunate, that, eh, Rita? I was very sad to hear about it. Mm, me too. Mind you, you see, you've got to be sympathetic. There's not many people that April fool themselves. But I'm still willing to put in a word because he's a decent bloke, Tim, and uh, he's got a sense of humour. No, thank you. Definitely no. Well, he won't bear a grudge. He's a mate. 
We've had all the favours we need from you. If you hadn't told us in the first place that you were putting in a word, this would never have happened. So yourselves. Uh, allotments weekly, please, Rita. Oh. Never. True as I'm stood here, Betty, for an arrest. Oh, the little beggar. Oh, yes, I'm alone. Oh, I don't believe it. I've left my purse in the cafe. Uh, can I have tick till his lordship comes in? Oh, I should think so. <laughs> well, I won't make a habit of it. It's just a tonic. <laughs> OK, Betty. love. She didn't know, he said. Oh, no. Oh, so sad, Betty, yearning through lower stuff. Oh. Orange juice, pineapple juice, two hot pots, and easy on the camera. Two hot pots, Betty. Coming up, love. Look, give it me when you've got it, love. Oh, bless you, Betty. <laughs> now, keep it to yourself, but you don't use the caviar. <laughs> so, what's the opening bid, then? Well, that's... Try 60, it's 120. Uh, 38 or 40, what do you think? Oh, no, no, now we don't barter. What's wrong with 35? No, no, it wouldn't take us seriously. Well, no, what I do, fruit juice. No. We'll open on 38, move straight to 40, but 45 is the top. So, what do you think, Nick? Oh, eh? oh, 45,000 pounds? Anyone yeah. to think it was Monopoly we're playing? <laughs> Shame Baldwin's the banker. Right. Everything's off, and you've got the keys. I don't want to leave. Maureen, you're wasting your time. Curly. He's a sensitive, vulnerable man. I know people laugh at him because he's funny looking and he, and he tells a joke or two, but it doesn't mean he can't be hurt. He, he's a totally genuine person. Uh, and and it, he wouldn't consciously hurt anybody. And... Maureen, have you ever thought that he might be up to something? Oh, yes, there you have it. Just because he looks scheming and devious, it doesn't mean he is. Don't judge a book by his cover, and you of all people, you work with him. Has he ever done you down? Yes. When? Quite a few times, actually. Well, he never has me. Never, ever, ever, Curly. So I'm sorry, but I won't hear a word against him. Are you ready, then? Yes. You fit then? Oh, hi. Uh, oh, Josie, you, you don't know Mike's movements, do you? What now? Mm. He's working through. Oh, wouldn't you know? I forgot my purse. I'm not paid for my dinner. <laughs> don't worry, I'll sub you. You wouldn't, would you? Oh, I'll get it off him as soon as I get back. <laughs> well, you just see that you do then. <laughs> off you go. I'll sort it out with Betty. Oh, thanks, Josie. You're a laugh. Bye. Bye. We'll take more than our lunch off him. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Now, look, last chance. You're definite. Well, I'm definite. When's best time? Uh, come at three, and I'll make sure he's there. See you. Oh, hi. Oh, ah, Mavis. Oh, humble pie. Sounds almost appetising when you say it enough, doesn't it? Humble pie. Humble pie. Did you ring him? Oh, yes. The secretary was out at lunch, but I managed to speak to Mr Hedges himself. Oh. He could meet us at three. Oh, well done, Derek. Well done. Yes, thank you. And a minute might not be humble pie if we explain our mistake, April Fool's Day and all that. Well, he might see the funny side of it. Oh, Mr. Bowen, I'm sorry to ask you, but your wife told me to get some money off you. I give a lump sum to charity at Christmas. I don't give during the year. No, it's not charity. I lent her for dinner. Eh? Hey? She forgot her purse. That's typical. Do you do things like that? It has been known. Then you're in the wrong job. My staff should remember everything. Oh, I remember. It was £3.75. £3.75. Well, I haven't got any change at the moment. Right, I'm off now. Anyone ask, I won't be back. What, are you going now? Yeah, why not? Oh, it's just that Don was coming in to see you. What for? Well, he wanted to tell you himself. Did he? Well, uh, what time did he say he'd be at? Three. Three? Yeah. Yes, yeah, all right. Uh, I'll hang on for him. Why not? £3.75, was it? Have you got change for uh, oh, the fire? Sir. Hedges. Which Mr Hedges? Um, tr Trim. Um, t Tim. Is he expecting you? I think so. 
I realised there were two. Because his diary's stuffed to bursting this PM. Tim's parks and cemeteries, Reg is planning. Ah. Oh. Well, I think we're part of the stuffing, so to speak. What name is it? Wilton, Mr and Mrs. Not down here. Who did you make the appointment with? Um, him. Personally, at lunchtime. When for? Three o'clock. Tim Hedges, three o'clock. Just says April Fools. That'll be, That'll us. be us. Yes, that's us. I'll tell him you're here. Tim Hedges, Parks and Cemeteries. Keep calm, Mavis. It almost certainly isn't a conspiracy. <laughs> April Fools. Well, there you are. <laughs> Seems he has got a sense of humour. Don't say, Mr. Baldwin. Oh. You're not a cigar man, are you, Dom? Ah, uh, no, thanks. Josie? Ooh. <laughs> Very wise. Stanchy growth. Sit down. Alright, so. Now then, what can I do for you? Well, uh, it's about your garage. You mean the one on Coronation Street? How many other garages have you got? What about it? Well, I want to make a bid for it. Really? Really? Oh, that's nice. How much? 38,000. Oh, come on, Don. You know it's worth at least 50. Mm. That's your opinion. The offer's 38. Can't do business in, can we? And I hung on specially for you. You don't expect to get 50. Don't I? I get the right buyer, I could get much more than that. Now, I'm sorry, Dom. Just not talking, are we? Uh, look, um, just hang on a minute, will you? Busy man, Dom. 38 thou? <laughs> You're wasting my time. You must understand, Mr. Hedges, it, it was nothing personal. You see, I thought you were abusive. Well, if I'm honest, I thought you were a nutcase, but... Ah, well, but... And it was odd, because my pal Des had put a word in for you. Yeah, well, you see what... And then you come on as if I was some kind of con man. I can assure you, I had no intention of being abusive. Oh, no, my husband's never abusive. We thought it was a joke. <laughs> An April Fool, <laughs> on your part. Uh, you and that oaf, Barnes. Uh, Des, who sometimes can be quite a prankster. Oh, yes. Yes, a well-meaning joker. I mean, there is quite a history between us. Yeah, but, well, a good nature mm, is. One way or another. If you don't mind my saying so, it is a rather unfortunate name for an allotment's manager. What is? Yours. Why? Hedges. Well, it's hardly exceptional, is it? Look in the phone book, there's hedges down every street. Yeah, but it, it was April 1st. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look, we have been on that list for years. I can't tell you, Mr Hedges, how much we want an allotment. And if you can see your way to considering us again, despite our misunderstanding... Oh, yes. Uh, the trouble is, I've let that allotment... Is this the only list you're on? Afraid so. We put all our hedges in one basket, unfortunately. Mm, should have hedged your bets. There is another one. It's not as good. Oh, well, anything. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's not bad. It's just been let go a bit. Oh, I know the one. It's over by the, um... Along the... The edge. Edge. We'll take that, happily. If that's OK with you, Mr... Call me Tim. Well, since you're friends of Des, I think we can arrange it. You owe him a drink. <laughs> Two or three. <laughs> we often drink together. Oh, constantly. <laughs> can I just draw your attention to these? Uh, of course, yes. What? It's just the council bylaws concerning garden ornaments. The Allotments Act, 1934. Subsection 13A, paragraph D, relating to allotment gnomes. Viz. No gnomes shall be permitted on an allotment unless licensed. Gnomes shall be decently clothed, under 18 inches high, and not have insanely comic and tiresome expressions on their faces. All gnomes shall have both ears. If a gnome disappears, the keeper of said gnome shall not accuse his neighbours of stealing it, nor shall he become obsessive to the point of insanity about it. A gnome that sends postcards shall be considered deviant and smashed on sight. Very good. Very good. Very funny, isn't it, Mavis? <laughs> yes, very funny. <laughs> it's 
extremely funny indeed. <laughs> Welcome to the allotments. We're not in the champagne yet, but put some on ice, because between you and me, I think I've sold the garage. Who to? Well, if not the Webster's Brennan. He came round and made an offer. Well, how much? 40,000 going in the press, but I think he'll pay more. He knows he's worth it. How? Well, Josie just happened to see a valuation line on my desk. Well, it just happened. <laughs> Do you know, it's the first civil word I've had out of Brennan since I won his car off him. Yeah, well, you rip him off a little bit of last. Uh -huh. See ya. See ya. Thank you. Back to it, I suppose. Back to what, Emily? In a nutshell, to Mr. Sugden. He's icing his simnel cake. It's a very serious operation. It involves a huge amount of, uh, how shall I put it, of Mr. Sugden? <laughs> Thank you, Gail. And I didn't have to say it myself. Oh, but you should say it, Emily. Yes, you should get it off your chest. <laughs> right, I will. I'll never want to ice a wretched simnel cake, so I don't know why I have to be instructed every inch of the way. Oh, so this is where you got to. How's the cake? Oh, all finished, yes. You'll see when we get in. Yes. No offence, Mrs Bishop, but jobs like that, it's much easier for me if I've nobody standing by my elbow. I'll have a cup of tea, please, Gail, and a mid of one if you've got one left. So... Welcome back to Weatherfield. Yeah. Mother's in there. Is she? Bound to be. Well, that's uh, it's nice for you. Oh, Curly, do you think I could have sanctuary just in your house, just for a minute, till I gather some strength to face her? It's... <sighs> yeah, come on. Oh, hello, Mr. Baldwin. Is Kevin in? Uh, yes, yeah, he is. Good. He can't claim overtime for tonight, then, can he? You can have a word. Yeah, Love that cat too. Yeah. You knocked off a bit sharpish, didn't you? He's oh, quarter past. What's the matter? Yeah, but you're washed and changed already. Hey, Rosie, come off that sofa. Let Mr. Baldwin sit down. No, that's all right. I'm not stopping. I just popped in to tell you I've had a serious offer for the garage. Oh, I accepted it. No, not yet. I thought I'd better warn you. Unless you want the place sold over your head, then. Oh. How much? 40,000. But uh, between you and me, I think there's more where that came from. So, are you saying that we should offer 42 or something? Well, put it this way. If you offer the same as the other bloke, it's yours. If, if he offers more, then it's his. I'm only human. Anyway, I'll let you know, all right? See ya. So, what now? We've had it, haven't we? Oh. What do you want from life, Kevin? What do you mean? Oh, well, that says it all, doesn't it? What? What do you want from life, Kevin? What do you mean? Says it all. Kettle's on. I need the loo. Yeah. You all right there, Maureen? Yeah, yeah, you're fine, aren't you, Maureen? Um, I just needed a moment. Oh, you know, of course. Before. It's my mother, you see. Yeah. Well, that's right. <sighs> anyway, thank you. Curly's told me. I've been there, Maureen. I know what it's like being the last to find out, but you mustn't think about it, I promise. Everybody knows what a randy little devil Reg was, and nobody will think bad of you. Well, what do you mean, why should they? Well, they shouldn't, and they won't. Uh, you see, I, I just hope he's all right. I, I hope that he hasn't done anything stupid. Do you really? Mm. Well, I think you've a very generous spirit. <laughs> if I'm honest, Maureen, when Des did it to me, I did not wish him well. I wanted very nasty things to happen to him, and I don't deny it. Well, I think Des was messing about, wasn't he? You know, with that Tanya, and... You see, Reg is just, well... He's lost, and... He's wandering the streets. Why are you looking at me like that? You haven't told her. No. Well, why? Because I thought it'd be better coming from, you know, a, a woman to woman thing. Well, do you know something? No, not a lot, no. Well, more than enough. Reg has got another woman, Maureen. 
and he didn't have the face to tell you. Oh, like a man, eh? Where have you heard this? Eric Furman. Apparently she worked at Furman's. It's been going on for quite a while. <gasps> so apparently she's got money. Yeah, she inherited. You're not serious. Oh, please, you're not serious. Oh. Oh. Like I say, Maureen, I've been there. I can't bear it. I know. I know. It makes sense. I know when you see it, don't you, when it's too late. Oh, it's terrible. I know. Terrible, terrible. My mother was right. Why don't I nip round to the cabin and ask Rita if she wants to come round for a tea and then, well, at least we can talk about it. We can see what Rita thinks and I've got some nice liver. Sally, forget the garage. Oh, you don't get chances like this all the time. You get chances every single day of the week to chuck money away. Well, don't you want to make something of yourself? Oh, what am I now? And now, because that's the guy you married, Sal, and now, that's the guy the kids have got for a dad, and now, I never said it was going to be a tycoon, so you can't say you were misled. Oh, go on, make me feel bad just because I... because I want something more than... Well, we're just stuck in nowhere. I am, that's how I feel. We're just stuck. Sally, the garage won't pay. Mike Baldwin makes it pay. I have no ambitions to be the next Mike Baldwin. You've got no ambition at all. Yeah, so you've told me. Other people do things, Kev. Why not us? Well, Forget him raising cash for his new business. He's selling that garage because he knows before long he's got to start shelling out. And he knows that because it's me who's selling him. I'm going to the Rovers for my dinner, then I'm going watching Counter. Kevin. Here we go. Nice cup of tea. Dad. Oh, come on. Cheer up. It's supposed to be a holiday. Yeah, I'm all right. Is it, um... But of course it is. I mean, she's going to have to go home to her mother sometime. It's not fair on Maud apart from anything. I know, I know. At least you've got the excuse of spending the evening in the pub, which we said you wouldn't do. Oh. Look, I'll tell you what. Listen, I promise I'll try and get her home to her mother's today. Promise. Honest. Yeah. OK. Sorry. I'm interrupting. Sorry. No, of course you're not. Have you had a good sleep, then? It's the first I've had. Well, that's good. Do you want some breakfast? Um, no, I was just wondering if you wouldn't mind if I could borrow your conditioner in the bathroom. Of course you can. I didn't like to use it, you know, without asking. Thanks. I'll tell you what, Maureen, when you've done, I'll come and help you titivate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, looks like she's ready to face the world again. Mavis, if God had intended us to grow his own vegetables, why are there two perfectly good greengrocers on Rosamond Street? Oh, but fresh vegetables, Rita, straight from the garden or the allotment. There's just no comparison. No comparison for quantity, I'll grant you. <laughs> quantity? It's quantity I'm talking about. Well, all I know is that Ted put two rows of lettuces down and they all come up at once. He were mowed out with lettuce. Yeah, you, you have to stack them as you put them in and then they just keep coming instead of all at once. Oh, he did all that. Nobody explained it to lettuce. <laughs> anyway, you wait and see. <laughs> Hello, Sally. Love. What can I do for you? I was just wondering if you were doing out tonight. Ah, somebody wants a babysitter. Where are you going? No, we're stopping in. We just thought it'd be very nice to have your company. Oh. Well, I've now torn. I was keeping my diary free for somebody, but I've not heard from him, so... <laughs> Who is that, can I ask? Sean Connery. I think he must be tied up. <laughs> well, come and have your tea with us, then. Oh. Right. Oh. Oh. Is there any special reason for this? No. Just be nice. Ah, thank you. Well, uh, see you what time? Oh, just come round when you're ready. All right, see love. You later. Bye. Bye. The fence is mended there, then. I like to think so. So, what do you do now with this allotment of yours? Oh, well, we're going up there today and Derek's going to test the pH.
I knew I shouldn't have asked. You've no idea what that is, have you? And don't tell me. I want it all to be a beautiful mystery. <laughs> you have no feeling for the soil at all, have you, Rita? Too much, love. Just reminds me of wooden boxes with brass handle. <laughs> the reason being, you see, is that... Oh, thank you. Is that... Well, I asked myself. I really did. I really asked. And I thought... In the end, I thought... No. No. I wouldn't take him back. And that was it. Had a good night's sleep. And when I woke up in the morning, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Even if he came crawling? No. Wouldn't you? He took too many things out of the door that he can't bring back. Neither him nor anybody else crawling or standing. Even so, you can hurt and hurt and hurt, but if you've loved somebody, they can sort of worm the way, can't they? That's the tragedy of it, really. You know, I suppose in a way, Raquel, it, it's like being an alcoholic. You know, you know when you've got a weakness or something, and you think, right, well, I'll have nothing to do with this. Nothing. That's finished. See, and it gives you hope, doesn't it, for starting again? You're good at this, you know. Well, all of the... Yeah. Well, I've had a bit of training, basics, huh. when I was going to be a supermodel. Oh. Any road, I think you're very right. When he comes crawling, cos he will, you kick him right back in the ditch. I mean, you're an attractive woman. Oh. You are, and you've personality and you're lively. Even if I believed you. Well, it's true. It isn't enough, though, is it? It is. And if it's not enough for him, well, he's barmy. And between me and you, I always thought he was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I do wish I had hair like you, any road, I do. Do you know, mine's nothing but split ends. Hey, somebody said they're not having lottery this week. Oh, I didn't know that. Who said? Percy Sugden. He says it's because we're being Easter and all Archbishop's going on about it, you know. No, I don't know. Don't interest me. Oh, do you do lottery? Oh, he's not a gambler, him. I work too hard for me money. Oh, so would I if anybody would let me. But there's no jobs. Baldwin's taking on, isn't it? Baldwin? <laughs> don't make me laugh. No, oh, he's taking on machinists. <laughs> See Baldwin taking me on? What grief I've given him. And I have, I'm glad to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's no harm in asking. What, and give him the pleasure of spitting in my eye? No way. So you don't, you don't reckon that it's right, then, about lottery? Well, they was queuing up at the machine in the filling station and it were taking the money. So... All right, great. You're not a gambler, are you? Half a bar on a game of dominoes, that's it. Yeah. But it wouldn't be that much of a gamble, would it? You know, the garage. Look, if you're interested, why don't you borrow the money, go and see Baldwin? Be my boss. <sighs> you're kidding. You won't want to time yourself down. Well, there you go, see? Hey, you said they weren't having lottery this week. That's correct, yes. Well, it's not correct at all. They are so having lottery. All the same, you were correcting what you just said. Stop going around the houses. What do you want to go and say it for if it will not true? I told you for your own good. My own good? Oh, yes. Oh, so you've got some God-given right, have you? Tell other folk what's good for them. You shouldn't be doing lottery at all the way you're fixed. Why shouldn't I? You can't afford to be doing that nonsense when you're on benefit. But if I wouldn't lottery, I wouldn't be on benefit, would I? No. Look, the way that's worked out, it's all worked out so you've got so much money for your food, for your eating, for your rent. It's all worked out properly, is that? They don't make any allowances for giving money to millionaires or chipping in for them that's going to be. Ah. Oh. So, because I'm on benefit, I'm not allowed any pleasure, is that it? What pleasure is there in it? The pleasure as makes life worth living. Hope. Not hope at all, it's a delusion. But somebody's got to win. Yes, and millions lose by it. I'm one of them's that lad of yours. Hey. Money you're throwing away in that direction is money you're not using as you should be doing. I'll say no more. You better not. <laughs> it's true, just the same. You agree with me, don't you? <laughs> Well, I've never quite had the nerve to go around delivering the lecture, Percy. Mm. But you still agree with me? Well, it's an odd thing about the lottery, and it makes a nonsense of every political message I've heard in my life, I think. You think? Mm. I mean, what happened to the class struggle? 
The exploited masses, they don't want to get rid of the rich after all. They just want a ticket to join the club. Sorry, Arthur. You know, and what about all that other stuff? You know, the legitimate reward for effort, vision and hard work. What do you mean you don't go around delivering a lecture? Is there anybody serving here? Right. Take a deep breath. Start the rest of my life. Back with my mother. Well, you said the right word there, Maureen, start. It's about time you started doing lots of uh, other things, eh? I don't know how to thank you, Curly. Yeah, come on. Why you've gone to all this trouble? I don't know. And Raquel. What would I have done without you? I've no idea. Well, thank you, anyway. Go on, your ma's waiting. Mavis, I can. I have a vision of the promised land. It was nice of them, having you round there, any road. And she called to tell me how you were and where you were. Yes. Yeah, good. Good friends. You need your friends. I must have been a bit of a pain to them, I suppose. Well, I suppose you were. But that's what makes them good friends. You've got a friend here and all, you know. I know you think you can't talk to me. I don't think I can't talk to you. I didn't want to talk to you. That's the difference. And if that's hurtful, I'm sorry. But I've been a bit hurt myself. Do you not think I feel it for you? <sighs> yes, but there's no buts. <sighs> oh, mother. It's a very big but. There's not. Oh, but there is. But you were right. There's your but. And I never wanted to hear that. There's no pleasure in that for me, love. I don't know how you think there could be. Please, let's not go on. That's all I've got to say that's worth saying, apart from this. You've got to get on. There's times when you think the world's coming to an end, but it's not. Look at me sat here in this and tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I know. You know what we ought to do? Go and open that shop, busy ourselves. Now, what colour would you say that was? That one or that one? That one. Oh, would you? It's hard to say, but yeah, I think it is more like that one. Perhaps it's the light. Mm. Almost the six, is it? Well, I'm trying to make my mind up. I think it's more, 5.5. Bit on the acid side, any road. I put that down the railway line, and the old factory they pulled down. All the sulfuric and the smoke over the years, you know. You seem to know a lot about it. Should do. Wolf Gaskell, Secretary of the Allotment Association. Oh, they said you'd find me. <laughs> Wilton's the name. That's right, Wilton. Your name has been forwarded. <laughs> it's Derek. Derek. Wilf. <laughs> and this is Mavis. How do you? <laughs> Would that be uh, Mrs. Wilton? Only I don't like to make assumptions. Oh, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Do you know, I find it impossible to make assumptions these days. You don't know where you are. We you younger folk, especially. <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Gaskell? Mind you, 
We do need more young blood coming into the allotment movement. <laughs> you make it sound like some old time religion. <laughs> we, we were just saying it. It is a bit like a little bit of the promised land. I don't suppose Moses took a soil testing kit to the promised land. <laughs> I don't think Moses actually got to the promised land, Derek. <laughs> Didn't he? Well, we nearly didn't make it either. Well, you're here now. So if you don't mind, I'll just pop and I'll, uh, I'll get me tablets of stone and tell you a few of the commandments. Of course. It's my duty as the uh, secretary of the association, you understand? Mind you, number one is, thou shalt tend thy allotment. We will. It's not a marriage service, Mavis. Hey, I don't know so much about that. It's a serious commitment, is an allotment. She's where? Allotment. Mavis has got an allotment. I'm amazed you don't know. It's been a right carry-on with Perum. Anyway, that's where she's gone. I don't see Mavis in Muck and Wellies somehow, or in, really. Muck and Wellies? Nothing. They've gone down there with some scientific whatnot to do the soil. They're going to do a PhD test. Mm -hmm. And what they're not going to produce from this allotment, it must be the size of Lincolnshire. Anyway, I had to give her the time off cos she's promised me courgettes. Oh. Hello, stranger. No stranger than I used to be. I'll be the judge of that. Where you been keeping yourself? You ought to know. You collect the rent. I'm glad you reminded me. A uh, packet of our particulars, please. You know, there was a time 20 years ago when you couldn't throw a brick in the air in Rosamond Street without braining the first-class machinists. Where'd they all gone? Well, they were chucked out of the jobs by people like you. No, they put out work by foreign competition and cheap labour. Now, we are the cheap labour. Economic miracle, innit? <laughs> Depends which end of the paycheck you're on. You know, I'll have to train people up. Hey, I'll probably get an easy grant for that. So, how many irons have you got in the fire? Oh, ho, too many. So, are you selling this garage or what? I hear different things. It's on the market. If you know anyone that's interested... Oh, as if I would. I think you do. I hear young Kevin is sniffing. Is he? Look, uh, you going back to the flats? I'll give you a lift. I am, but I'd sooner walk to her very much. Now, what's hard feelings got to do with it? I can offer you a lift. And I can turn you down, same as you can turn me down. Suit yourself about the hard feelings. See you, Rita. See you, love. Bye. Don't ask me what all that is about. I know, but don't ask me. Uh, no, right. So, is young Kevin interested? I think he should buy it. He won't set the world on fire, but uh, you do all right. Go on. Tell me I shouldn't buy them. Go on, go on. You shouldn't be buying them oven chips. Oh, I'm not sure what it has to do with me. Buy oven chips if you want. Well, I'm on benefit, aren't I? Everybody's entitled to tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing. Why should you be any different? Has somebody upset you? Your friend Percy. Oh, I see. Telling me I shouldn't be doing lottery cheek. Percy always tells everybody what's right for him. You don't mind him. But I do mind. Anybody would think I asked to be on benefit. Ta, see you in your road. Bye. Bye. Between you and me and the gatepost, he was quite right. Hmm. But whose place is it to tell her? Well, we've put the money in the till, haven't we? So it's not us. Well, we're running a shop, not a mission. A mission. It was a mission, just across this street once upon a time. And a woman who had no hesitation telling people what they should or shouldn't do. Now we all just cough politely and say, it depends. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And to you. Go careful. Bye. You know, it was a good idea of yours, opening up. Well, it was better than stopping at home, only brooding. Well, you think you can't face people. It's not hard. You just stand there and they walk past you. Turns out you haven't got a sign over your head after all. Well, they've got their own concerns. Mm. You shouldn't have gone and locked yourself away at young Curly's. I needed to. Them still newlyweds, practically. It wasn't fair on them. Well, it was a good idea coming in anyway. As he thought, as he thought what you're going to do with it, the shop, this property, there's all sorts. <sighs> I don't want to think about that at all. I don't want to even start. Stick up for yourself. Pigs and lambs and the cows. 
all in the same field. Isn't that funny? Flipping okay. slaughtered, oh, played off the pad. Oh, I suppose you'll have to go to the pub then. Yeah, four nil. Oh, hello, Risa. Hello, love. And I suppose if you'd won, you'd have to go to the pub to celebrate. Oh, well, why? See? They say women don't understand football, we do. <laughs> yeah, well, I've just been watching 11 blokes who haven't grasped that idea just yeah, yet. Well, don't tell us about it. That's what we'll let you go to the pub for. <laughs> hey, Rita, do you like liver and onions? Oh, you look at that, love. You go over and get Mavis. Why? Well, do you know, we're in this place in Italy and we couldn't make head or tail at Menno. Oh, and she sat there saying, what do you think this is? And I said, well, I don't know. I mean, it was a bit too upmarket for pizza and we didn't want to stick to spaghetti. Right. So I said, well, why don't you order it and find out? Which she does, being adventurous, and it comes. Well, I can't remember the Italian for it. It was, uh, what's the Italia thingy, <laughs> you know? Yeah, one, one, <laughs> one of them, anyway. And she sat in this restaurant and she said, Oh, Rita Luke, it's liver and onions. I didn't know we were going to be posh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, did she like it? No, as a matter of fact, she didn't. Oh. No. So we swapped. Yeah. It was delicious. Now, what about this garage? What about the garage? Well, I know Mike's selling it. Oh, yeah, he is. So, is that of any interest to you? Why? Has someone said it's an interest to us? Between you and me. Oh. So, is there anything you want to talk to me about? No. Oh. Well, we're not interested in buying it, if that's what you mean, Rita. Huh? Did you think that's why we'd invited you round? Oh, well, I feel a fool now. Mind you, I think you ought to tell Mike. Why? Was it him who said we was? He thinks you're keen. Oh, yeah. He'd like us to be keen. Well, perhaps you ought to be. I wouldn't know. Look, it just doesn't add up. Well, you'd know. <laughs> Will you say that again, Rita, please? For Sally's benefit. Hey, it's nice to see you. Let's not talk about garages. Make it even nicer. Go on, as it's easy to have one yourself. Oh, thanks very much. I'll have a box first. Well, I'll contribute the orange juice. I suppose it's a thought that counts. Uh, so, hey, what are we doing in here? I thought we were going into town. Because here people know us, love us and trust us. Are we sitting down? Thanks. You think it's been worth it, then? Worth it? Well, all the fuss and... And the humiliation. Well... Yes, Mavis, I do. I mean, I, I get a great deal of pleasure out of the garden, I do. Oh, and I do. But the allotment... Oh, I know what you're going to say. Oh, do you? Yeah, you're going to say the allotment. Well, it's more like elemental. Well, maybe I was going to say something like that. But seeing as you always know what I'm going to say, perhaps you care to finish the conversation on your own? Oh, Derek! It is a teeny bit trying, Mavis, that you always know what I'm going to say. Well, I'm sorry. It is, it's just... Oh, Derek, now, look, we've had a lovely day. Don't go and spoil it. You saw who came in earlier, did you? Oh, yeah. I saw him all right. It would be a good idea to go over and ask him, you know, if he's thought it over. No, no. We don't want him to think we're too keen. It's no good jumping around him with your tongue hanging out. No, it's not that. I mean, you've made him an offer. He'd be perfectly in order to mention it. I know, Baldwin. He knows I'm here. He just wants me to go to him. That way he thinks he'll be in the driving seat. Now, you see, you've got to think like these beggars. Let him stew. No, no, no. <laughs> Saw you wagging outside. I'm glad he's still there. Yeah, I thought I'd come in and have a quick word with you. Look, uh, sit down. Uh, no, you're all right, thanks. It's... Well, it's just to say me and Sally's been thinking it over, you know, about the garage and everything. And Well, it's very good of you and we appreciate it, but well, it's no go, really. I mean, not for Look, us. I wanted you in there because I like you. I wanted you to be the shadow, right? Well, it's much appreciated, but what's been going on in my head is, like, the money what I need spending. Yeah, and... well, remember I made you the offer, OK? Name your next kid after me because I've been so good to you. Now, go on, go and get yourself a drink. Thanks, anyway. Have you? Oh, yeah. Four nil. I was there, pal. They had one thing in the mind. Give, Give the ball, ball away. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Brennan and your good lady, how are you? Oh, fair enough, sir. Tell you how I'm fixed. I'm not in love with your offer, but I'm spending a lot of money at the moment, so uh, say 45, you got yourself a deal. 45, you must be kidding. Well, I know how I feel, but I don't know how you feel. I mean, do you want to do a deal? If the price is right, yeah. 
Yeah, but would I be uh, hanging around for my money? Because if I'm uh, hanging around, I might as well hang around for 50 because I know I can get it. Oh, uh, we can put our hands on the money. Don't worry about that. No mess. Then you are in the driving seat. So uh, where are you going to meet me, eh? Uh, say a number. 42. Say 43, and I'm giving it away. Fair enough. We've got a deal. And you have got yourself a very nice little business. <laughs> Testing it, Mavis. I'm just testing. And why are you taking a, a video recorder to a deserted allotment? Because I want to record every stage of its transformation from wilderness to Eden. Martin Platt. Yep. Uh, Gary Mallet. Yeah. Bill Webster's here. Don Brennan. Yep. Derek! Place on the bus if you fancy the trip. Oh, not quite our scene, thanks, all the same. Oh, he is a miserable man here, though. Oh. Oh, there you are, Mr. Roberts. We nearly went without you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm late. Is there a Savalot? Oh, yeah. Lovingly prepared to a traditional area recipe. Oh, well, I'm falling out with hunger, me. I, I, I dashed out without a breakfast, you know. Oh, nice one, Jack. We'll get them past that, right? It's a bit early for that, innit? Yeah, well, I'm on a coach trip. That's what you do on a coach trip. You get tanked up. So you're home today, then, are you? Well, looks that way, wouldn't you say, Percy? Well, I came on uh, Friday morning to get some tartar sauce, but you were shut. Now, don't you think it'd been polite of you to put a notice up showing your intentions so people would know where they are? We were open all afternoon, Mr Sugden. Well, that just makes it worse, open half a day. Are you open half a day today? No, Mr Sugden, we're open all day today. Oh, I see. It's half a day a Good Friday and all day Easter Monday. <clears throat> well, open and close this shop when we feel like it, thank you very much. It's a public holiday and we're members of the public and all. You've got a duty to your customers. They rely on these little shops. You can rely on us, Mr Sugden. Unfortunately, last Friday, Mother and I had a little domestic crisis to deal with, didn't we, Mother? Yes, we did. Oh, I see. I didn't know there were extenuating circumstances. Well, it's sorted now. So it's business as usual. Rain, hail, shine, come 12 hours a day, six days a week, public holidays included. <sighs> anyway, like I was saying, I won't be back till Wednesday night, so uh, if you want to lure young Anne back to the place, you've got it to yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, listen to them. One track mind. Not all fellas think like you, you know. Just trying to help the lad out, that's all. You're assuming that Andy's only interested in Anne because he wants to get her into bed. Well, you're wrong, isn't he, Andy? Er, uh, yes. Uh, but I must admit, Raquel, I mean, I am attracted to... Well, of course you are. I'm not saying that you're not, but you're more... the intellectual, more sensitive type, aren't you? You like to take things steady. Let them develop naturally in the fullness of time. It's a bit like me and Curly, really. Well, I hope I don't have to wait that long, Raquel. Well, no, but what I mean is you're not just after a quickie on his sofa. What, with Anne? <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing. Now, I can assure you, Raquel, my intentions with Miss Malone are entirely honourable. See? Right, then. I won't bother leaving me Barry White CD out. Uh, Fader, well, can I just use the phone for a minute, please? Oh, go on, then, if you're quick. Thank you. Oh, honestly. I asked him to change this fellow before he went. Do you know, you mentioned word horse and it alters balance of his brain. Here. Whoa, me lads. You should have seen us getting passing all the books along. See, get the other way to that time getting stuck in then. <laughs> good for him. Now then, Serpent's Gaze. Yeah, had a very good run of Weatherby last month, and I fancy that. Now it's either that. Or open glory for the free thirty. Now then, what about the poor? Hey, can I ask you something, Jack? Yeah? Aye, of course not. When you first bought Rovers, how did you find it? I mean, business sad like. Complete mystery to me. Still is. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, but you got the hang of it now, haven't you? I mean, uh, stock checking and bookkeeping and that, yeah. Oh, how we muddle through. Andy McDonald helps out a bit, but I tell you what, if I'd have known how much there was to it, I'd have thought twice about taking the place on. Why do you ask? Uh, well, no reason, no. Oh. You sure you won't have a can, Roy? There's plenty left, lad. Oh, no thanks, Bill. Alcohol reacts with me antibiotics. Oh, yeah. uh, ear infection. Ah, well, suit yourself. What's that, then? 
Wind probability 59.875. A, B plus A plus B plus 1. It's just a formula expressed algebraically. Oh. Formula for picking winners, that. Provided you can satisfy certain criteria on the day, such as there being two horses in each race, which have each finished first, second or fourth in each of the last three outings. Uh, you're a bit over my head now, Roy. Why don't you just tell me what you think's going to win? Well, actually, Bill, there's only one horse I fancy backing today. It's in the 145 selling handicap. Oh, yeah. And you reckon, uh, from your system, that it's got a good chance of winning? I don't know about that. I, I just like the name. That, that one, third one down. <laughs> hey, lads! Have you seen what's running in the 145? Of course, there was a time when everywhere had shut down from Thursday night right through to the following Tuesday. You ran out of something, you'd got to make do. You certainly couldn't go buying fitted kitchens and the like. Are you all right through there, Maureen? Maureen? Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. It just came over me. It's better. I'm sorry. Why don't I make us some tea? It's just, I came in to order some bob and cream this year, and I opened the book. I'm so rich at I'm trying to do it. Come on. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. What a thing to set me off, though. A reminder to get two shots and shots of cake and some of the cash and carry. <laughs> and every one of them's still on the shelf out there. <laughs> He was a useless shopkeeper, as well as a useless husband. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can go. Yes, you can. Now, we've only taken £7 all morning. Why don't we shut the shop and go and blow the lot on a couple of large brandies? Come on, and dwell with Percy Sobden. Right, lads, give it a five. That's what we said. Right. 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 Yep. I still reckon we're chucking money away back in a 50 to 1 shot. Oh, right. shut up. Give us a five. It's only a bit of fun. Now, come on. Otherwise, they're going to be off, aren't they? Right, where's Gary? Toilet. Again? <laughs> I think he's feeling a bit poorly. Yeah, he says he gets car sick. Well, uh, coke sick. Okay. Well, I feel sick at all. I've got when he can't. Right, I'll put the fiver in for him then. Come on, Billy, right. lad. Come on. Let's get this on. Is it a winner? Excuse me, boss. Uh, Forty-five pound to win. Bet he's off shot. Let's just have a sip before we do anything. I've been up since six o'clock. Uh, why don't we go to the engineer on Ramon Street? They've got a mail strip on a Monday afternoon. We could get a gang of girls to go. Can't we just stop in? Oh, ma'am. Well, they've got the King and I on the television. It's my favourite. I know you've watched it about hundred times. But I really fancy it. Go on. I'll stop off at the shop on the way, get you one of them frozen chocolate cakes, you know. <sighs> Great, eh? I suggest we have a mad afternoon while Gary's away. And what do we end up doing? Blobbing out in front of Yule Brinner with a chocolate fudge cake. Hiya. Hey, there was no need to get dressed up. We're only having half a lager. Sorry, Deirdre, but do you mind if we make it another time? Uh, yeah, fine by me. Only, well, fingers crossed. I might have a job. Oh, that's great news, Liz. Where? Well, do you remember I applied for a job in town, the wine bar, the hourglass? We went a few weeks back. Yeah, but I, I thought somebody had picked you to it. Yeah, they did, but apparently they weren't up to it. At least that's what the manager said when he phoned this morning. He wants me to go in at lunchtime and have a chat. Come on, Jack! Oh, my God! Oh, he's only there! He's only in the museum! Is this Jack the for talking? What are you suggesting, Jack? We should take it home and share it with wife. Very draw. No, no, it wasn't to take it to the building society. Ah, Jack. I think we should right. invest it quite definitely. Oh, Jack, Jack, what are you driving at? Tell me, what do they do with the winner of a selling handicap? Well, it's sold. Hey, hang on. 
You're not suggesting Why that not? Well, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> We're going to race it, aren't we? Oh, Form right. a syndicate. There's nine of us. We could win fortune. Oh, oh, God. God. oh now, come on, lads. At least let's go over and see how much they want for the horse. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard something about the idea. I reckon he slipped a few more bites in than us, I'm telling you. <laughs> Are you lot coming, or what? <laughs> well, there's no harm in going to have a look, is there? No! Well, I must say, that is a beautiful animal. Ah, look at those big eyes, as bright as buttons. Look at his ears. Pricks straight up. Shows he's alert, you see. He knows everything what's going on around him, you know. Excuse me, gentlemen, if you wouldn't mind standing back. Who are you like? I'm the horse's trainer. Thought we'd give him a pat on the back, like. Seeing as he's just won us two grand. <laughs> We're thinking of bidding for him. He's a good horse, is he like? Of course he is. Didn't you see him just race? Well, I didn't do too well at fast, did he, love? Not according to the race card. Well, some horses take a while to get their act together. He's a jumper. His owner spent too much time racing him on the flats. You don't think the day was just a one-off, then? Are you kidding? He's got masses of potential. Yeah? Masses. Straight up. Well, put it this way. If I'd been his owner instead of just his trainer, I'd never have entered him for a selling race in the first place. Seriously? Absolutely. Now he's found his form, sky's the limit. <laughs> I never liked the man, I admit. But it's you I'm thinking about now. You've got your life to get on with, and think how much worse it would have been if you'd had kiddies. Maybe if we had had children, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Maybe if we'd have put more energy into a family than running corner shops. What I'm trying to say, Maureen, is that in time, you'll be glad things worked out the way they did. Oh, will I? You've got a very rosy future ahead of you. And I don't just mean as nursemaid to me, either. Mother, I'm 51, with two broken marriages behind me. Third time lucky. <laughs> You're a very attractive woman, Maureen, with your own business, and if you've got any sense, you won't let him get a penny out of that shop. I'm supposed to be happy, am I? Because I own a corner shop. No, I'm just saying that you haven't missed the boat. Once word gets about that you're foot loose and fancy free, fellas will be queuing up. Rita Sullivan's an attractive woman with her own business. And she's in here most nights nursing a gin. Anyway, I've told you I don't want word to get out. I don't want people expressing their condolences, looking at me in that pitying way. Well, it's bound to come out sooner or later. Only if you and me tell them. And we won't, will we? If you say so. Well, that's the way it goes, Mr Newbury. He came nowhere in his last ten races. We enter him for the selling place and he wins. No, he's still the same horse, bless him. The only reason he won was because the two favourites fell. I've just been explaining that to the stewards. Anyway, looks as though you might have a buyer for him. So with the, the prize money, that should go some way to offsetting your losses over the last two years. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, delighted to offer you today this four-year-old bait Goldie. <laughs> he's had a scar face by Mr. Darcy and his half-brother to Bombay Mix, which is that excellent winner of the Victor Nadorum handicap of a Haydock. Well, you heard what she said, fellas. I mean, we could be looking at the next red rum here. Now, we've got to be balmy to pass up a chance like this, haven't we? Now, hang on a minute, Jim. No, 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 no. Give it a couple of years, it could be worth a million. Or it could be melted down into glue. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, uh. on its last showing, there were 1,800 quid in that pot in there. Now, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We can't let it pass, oh, I'll look at it like this, me. The asking price is two grand, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two grand is what we want, it's not real money. Right. So I'm in. Yeah. Right, so am I. Ah, Good luck, me and all. Oh, what the heck, eh? You can't look a gift horse in the mouth, yeah. eh? Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Martin. Aye, go on yes. then. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd, I'd rather not if it's all the same. Oh. 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 Well, not... You're going to be left on your own, you? Uh, that, that may well be, but I've better things to spend your money on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, all right, do what you want. Anyway, there's still 2,000 quid. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Right. He's offered to sell today for 2,000. Now, who'll give me the guineas? Who'll give me 2,000? Guineas. Uh, pound and five pence. He's asking 2,100 pounds. 
Go on, Jack. 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 Go on, Jack.
seeing my mum out enjoying herself with a her new life. The old fella's banged up in prison. It makes me sick. I'm sorry, Andy, but it's your dad's own fault that he's in prison. It's nobody else's. If your mum's managing to pick up the pieces, then good on her, I say. You don't know what you're talking about, Anne. Oh, so we didn't hit her then? You didn't leave her for dead in the Macclesfield Road? Well, yeah, and I was the first to condemn him for it. But that's not why he's inside, is it? He's inside because he wanted to talk to her. And what if he hadn't been able to get through to her? What would he have done then? I'm sorry, but uh, how long has my old fellow been your specialised subject? I saw the way that he was. You saw a split second of a 20-year marriage. There is absolutely no justification for what he did. I'm not saying that there is. And it wasn't only your mum that he scared to death that night. I think we'd better change the subject before we fall out. I think we already have. Oh, and by the way, if you think that by plying me with red wine you'll be able to get me into bed, you can think again. Alcohol just makes me aggressive. They need regular injections, do horses. And they're not covered by the NHS. No, I dare say they're not. And of course, if the horse were to get sick, the veterinary fees can be astronomical. Is that a fact? Oh, you taking oh. over MBB motion? Shh. Keep your voice down. I don't want everybody knowing. At least not to have signed up, right? Now I know why you were asking me about the business yeah. side. Yeah. So I didn't say no to frighten you off, like No, no, well, I thought about it and then I decided, well, up and me and yours, you're more suited to that side of things than you and me. You know, oh, hey, oh, no offence. Oh, do you but... think so, do you? Wait till you get your first VAT return, eh? <laughs> anyway, now I'll know where to come when the car goes wrong, won't I? Eh? Well, we'll get a bit of discount. What a bit being a mate to you. When did I get a discount on a pint? Me being a mate to yours? No, 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 it's different with booze, isn't oh. it? Because it is tight to margins, unlike garages who charge the flaming earth. I mean, you've only got to look at Mike Baldwin to see that. Hey, uh, it's been quite a week, though, all in all, hasn't it? First I bought a business, then I bought an horse. <laughs> Shit about it. Hey, who'd have thought it 12 months ago, you and me, Bosses, let alone race ups on us. Well, fortune had to smile on us at some time, done like that. Aye, aye. Of course, it's when the horse actually starts racing that your real expenses begin. Have you heard him over there? Because your entry fee for starters. Roy, will you do me a favour, put a socket? I beg your pardon? <laughs> you! Wittering on and how much the flaming horse is gonna cost. Uh, Jack, he's only letting us know what we're letting ourselves in for. You had a chance to be in the syndicate, but you were too flaming tight business. I'm just passing on what I know, so it won't come as a shock. Look, Jack, it stands to reason. It's gonna cost us a fortune. I mean, on top of what we've already blown, I'm buying the flaming beast. You're that? I went all for pulling out, you know, when we... Not what you said at the time. Anyway, come on, what's 50 quid apiece? Plus the 2,000 that we want to know. For a thoroughbred? It's a bargain. What about all the extras, eh? I mean, this trainer, she's not going to stable the horse for now, is she? No, 50 quid a week, she said. Between us, between eight of us. I think you'll find that's the basic. It won't cover food or anything. There you go, you see. The food? What does an horse eat? Grass. It's free. Hey. And a bit of hay. 100 weight a week on average for a four-year-old male. Then there's the cost of racing the horse. Race fees, jockey fees, veterinary fees. They're the real killer. Then there's your silk. Just the hang on. What makes you such a flaming expert on keeping an horse? Frank Harper told me. Who's he when he's old? Former jockey, now retired. Oh. <laughs> Rode over 60 winners between 1978 and 1985. I got chatting to him when you were in the winner's enclosure. Oh, you did, did you? £10,000 a year, he reckons it'll cost, as a conservative estimate. Oh, give over. He'll make that on his first race, won't he? Believe me, he'll make that ten times over. Oh, you wonder where it all comes from. What? Washing. There was sand in everything. Well, you will go to the seaside with a pair of mucky pups like ours, eh? And we had a good time, didn't we, Rosie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell you what, not looking forward to this morning. Has Grumpy Daddy got to go to work? Yeah. Yeah, well, Grumpy Daddy doesn't know what he's going to find when he gets here. 
Like, who's he going to be working for? Yeah, but Jack Duckworth, of all people, you might as well have taken out a full page in Gazette. Look, well, Jack's a mate. I'd sooner heard it from me than somebody else. Like who? Well, can you see Mike Bowen keeping it to himself for long? Yeah, well, I won't believe it until it is signed and sealed. This is something I really want this. Something for both of us. And that is the way it will be, so stop worrying. Uh, you can't lend me a tenner, can you? I'm a bit short of readies till I get to the bank. And whose fault's that? Ah, oh, look, don't start that again. Well, I wouldn't have exactly put a share in a racehorse top of our priorities at the moment. Well, it'll be a bit of fun. A bit of an interest, like. If interest's all you're looking for, look no further than across the road. Here you so. And if I come home and find that you have bought a share in a camel, I shall throttle you. Sell it again, oh, can't they? Yes, of course they can. To the next coach load of drunken idiots that come along with two and a half grand to throw away. How much? Cost them 300 quid each. But I mean, most of that came out of the winnings, didn't it? Oh, so that makes it all right, does it? Martin's got his share in a racehorse. Sarah Lou thinks it's wonderful. I mean, she was over the moon when he told her what he'd done. And if that was an end to it, fine. But it isn't. Uh, what's this wonder horse going to live on? Fresh air? Ah, they don't think of that, do they? I mean, of course you don't, do you? Not when you've got ten pints inside you. Yeah, I even thought of offering to chip in myself. Hey. This place, it's a sound little shop. You? Give it away your skin. No, I said I thought about it. It didn't last long. Cheers. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked anyway. I'm not cut out to be somebody else's boss. Mm. Have you heard anything? Not a word. Mm. Mind you, I've not been around much. I've been putting in a bit of overtime in down at the salon. <laughs> hey, yeah. Who's likely to buy a place like this? Well, Baldwin did. Oh, great. That's all we need. Another Mike Baldwin. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not going to be one of your main dealers, is it? No. A small garage owner looking for new premises. Could be. But where will that leave us? Same as we are now, you know? Keeps three of us going. You, me and Baldwin. Aye, what happens if this guy's got someone he wants to bring in? A brother, a son? Enough to keep four going? No, nope, five, six. Hey? Well, he could have a big family. Oh, great. Made me feel much better now. Yeah, you brought it up. I'm happy just getting on with my job till someone tells me different. That's what I like to see. Hard at it. Impress the buyers. Mm. Potential buyers, don't you mean? No, I don't. I mean the buyers. You've sold it. All I've got to do is cross the T and dot the I's, but uh, keep at it. Let them see what a good deal they got. They're coming around here to have a look? Nah. They can keep an eye on you from over there. Who? Your new bosses. Don Brennan and Josie. Wine bar? Yeah, start tomorrow. Your luck might be changing at last. I hope so. Certainly give me something else to think about. And how are you coping? She's coping very well. Here a Duckworth been spreading the gospel, I take it. People are very understanding, you know, honest. Of course they are. It's far better out in the open. At least everybody knows the truth. Stop their imagination running wild. Right then, lads, when's the off? Off? First race, we don't want to mess about. Not while well, it's winning. Don't want to go rushing things. A lot to take into consideration. Yeah, like when we're going to see you return on our money. That's right, you can't rush a thing like this. I say, you can't rush a thing like this. You need to liaise with the trainer, which I am quite happy to do on behalf of the lads like. Yes, and I'll be going with you. And me. What do you know about racing? I know that the fastest horse normally wins. No, what, what do you know about the finer points? Right, what? About distance and, and going. You know all about that, don't you, Jack? <laughs> Millions you've had off bookies over the years. Oh, come on, Jack, it's a winner. Of course it's a winner. We wouldn't have bought it. It hadn't been a flaming winner. The thing is, it's going to be winning for us now. Let's crack on, then. Let's do it again while it's in the mood. That's not the only advantage. <clears throat> I like being an owner for impressing the ladies. I don't want to impress no ladies. I want to keep Judy happy. Oh, come on. It's a good eye, sees that. Wait. 
You tell them. You know something about it. What's that? This horse that we've just bought, Betty's Hot Shop. Oh, you've still got it, then. Got it in Milk Round already, have you? Uh, hey, it's a sound investment, is this? Oh, ah, yeah, of course it is. What did you pay for it? Well, two thousand quid. Not each, that's between us, like. Oh, aye, and you get some horse for two grand, eh, Sean? Well, it would be the first classic winner to be picked up for a song. How old is he? Four. Right. Well, he's got it all ahead of him, hasn't he? That's a flaming hope, so. You could have another red rum on your hands there. Yeah? Well, he was eight before he won his first national. And if my memory serves me right, his first race in England was a selling plate. Well, there you are, you see? He'll need the right hand of course. Who's the trainer? Hilary Forrest. Yeah. Would you believe it? Do you know her, then? Listen, if she can't do it for you... Hey, yeah, lads, we've got it all oh, going for us. <laughs> One thing's for sure, you won't find out keeping it in the stable. Dom! Tom Brennan and Josie! Why do you want the place beats me? Um, I'll see you in the Rovers. Yeah, right. see you, Tony. See you in a bit. Well, they want it because it's a good investment. Oh, it does all right. Oh, it does more than all right, as you well know. And who's that down to? That's down to you and Tony. If they can see a way of making something out of it, just think what you could have done. Oh, Sal. I'm not going through all that again. We decided against it. Yeah, you decided against it. Yeah, because I would never have been happy putting all that cash into it. Putting us in up for years. They've got something we've not got. Yeah, you're dead right. They've got ambition. They've got cash. And they've no one else to think about but themselves. What are you playing at? You know as much about that horse as I do about the life cycle of a termite. So? So, you've not only got them chucking more good money down the drain, you put a smile on their faces while they're doing it. it was our job, innit? Keep the punters happy. And what was all that stuff about running it as often as they can? Makes sense. Sean, if they run that horse three times a day, it's not going to get any better. And what are they going to bet on? When I said they could have a nice little meal ticket there, you didn't think I'm up for them, did you? Liz! Um, Ed, you got a new job? Yeah, I have. Manager of a wine bar in town. Well, I'm glad. Let's hope it's a turning point for you, eh? I'm touched by your concern, Des. So am I. What? Touched by your concern. Except in the asshole she's caused you. There we are, love. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I'll just uh, take these to be going on with. You don't fancy making me an offer for the entire stock while you're at it, do you? Look, I know you find this highly amusing, but to Derek and me, this allotment's just opening a new window in our life. Well, let's hope you feel the same way in six months' oh, time. Yes, I'm sure we will. I mean, doing Derek a world of good, all this fresh air and exercise. Oh, I know, I could see this morning. He could hardly walk. Oh, well, that wasn't from physical exertion, I can tell you, because if he'd spent a bit more time working and a bit less taking videos of other people doing... Don't you think you're going a bit mad, the pair of you? I mean, turning over an allotment, I mean, that, that takes some doing. There's no prizes, you know, for getting it done in record time. Are you saying we're not fit? Well, neither of you are in Mr Motivator's class, are you? Have I been tired this morning? Have I been yawning my head off no. since I came in? And do you know why? I'm about to find out, aren't I? Because last night, mm. Derek and I experienced something we haven't enjoyed for a very long time. Ooh. We had the best sleep we've had in months. Oh, Rita, this allotment, it's, it's just going to change our lives. Ooh. Derek, I thought you said you weren't coming back for lunch. I know. I wanted to show you what I've got. I've been to the library. I have here a positive mine of information. But I, I've got all those magazines. The more, the better. There is so much to learn. If a job is worth doing, it's worth doing well. That's always been our maxim. When are you going to find time to read all these? Oh, not just me. Us. Us? It's a question of self-discipline. If we go to bed half an hour earlier, we can read for at least an hour every night. What were you saying about this allotment? Going to change your lives? Well, what's the point? He went yesterday. Because it's awful for him in there. You can't just turn your back on him. But look, I'm not. Have you thought what he might feel about this? He might not want to see me. Well, he was pleased enough to see me. Yeah, but it's hard for him, though, isn't it? How do you mean? Well, I mean, how would you feel if your kids had to see you in prison, eh? Are you saying you'll be embarrassed about his family going to visit him? <laughs> well, he's bound to be. Oh. I don't believe I'm hearing this. Look, he's expecting you. What sort of messages are going to get when you don't turn up? He needs your support. You've got to support him. 
But you don't fancy going down, do you, when you're finished, do you? Well, it's just the thought of that place gives me the creeps. No. Well, come on, you've got more time on your hands than I have. Yes, pal. Look, I really don't think I should go. I've got loads of calls I can be making. Nothing that I can't handle. I mean, why can't you just see things as they really are? When I close that door and go home, that's it, the garage is somebody else's problem. And that suits me down to the ground. Well, let's just hope it lasts. Eh? Don and Josie. I mean, we know they're buying it, but we don't know what plans they've got for it, do we? Oh, come on. What Don knows about cars, you can write on the back of the second class stamp. Mm. <laughs> and she, she's hardly like let Jack a cushy number in at Baldwin's factory, is she, eh? Roll her sleeves up. She doesn't strike me as the sort to do oil changes. <laughs> <laughs> you want another? Mm. Hey, Kev, you missed out yesterday, didn't you? Right. What? If you would have been with us, you two could have been the proud owner of a race Nah, no, don't be silly. Gus Webster's got better things to do with our brass than throw it down the drain. Not the way your dad looks at it. My dad? He knows a good investment when he sees it. She's putting on a brave face, of course, but it's obvious she's been deeply hurt. Oh, well, she'll get over it. I mean, all of us have to at one time or another. I'm not sure her mother's the best company for her. You know, I can't think of anybody better. I mean, I know they fight like cat and dog, but when they're up against it, I mean, them two are closer than jam on cracker. Well, certainly puts one's life in perspective when something like this happens. Oh? Makes you appreciate just how insignificant your own problems are. <laughs> I, I just have a pot of tea, please. There speaks a woman who hasn't just acquired the back end of a horse. The back end? You should count yourself lucky. At least you've got something to sell. <laughs> hey, what's the rush? Baldwin's gone to Leeds. Yeah, well, he's not the one we've got to worry about anymore, is he? Come on. Mm -hmm. Kev. Here you go, Cross. I'll be there in a minute. Right. Take it, you've heard. <laughs> right, Mugger, feel now. Yeah, well, that makes two of us, doesn't it? I believed you, you know, when you kept apologising for not being able to peel back as quick as you like. You know, when you said how bad you felt? Look, I wasn't thinking, Kev. I got tanked up, I let myself get talked into it. I mean, what the heck do I want with half the back leg of a flaming racer? Yeah, well, if it was your money you were spending, you could have bought shares in the Loch Ness Monster for all I care. But it wasn't. It was mine, Sally's and the kids. I know how you feel, Kev. Yeah, and what about the upkeep? Suppose you want that as well, eh? Tag it on to the rest of what you owe us. Look, I wasn't thinking. I got smashed, Kev. Well, I'll tell Sally. I'm sure it'd make her feel a lot better. What a bother, Squire. Oh, note that turning uh, the clock back 24 hours won't put right, Fred. Really? Jack? Fight for our friend, dear. Right, Fred. Hiya. Hiya. I'm not stopping, I just wanted a quick word. I've been useless all morning. Yeah, me too. Look, about last night... Uh, maybe I came on a bit heavy. I had hoped by now you knew how I felt about you. Yeah, well... Put it down to my insecurity or my paranoia. I and mean, you can't blame me with a family like I've got. What time do you finish tonight? Uh, I reckon I could get away about nine o'clock. Right, fancy takeaway. Well, if you don't want to take a chance on my cooking. Hey. You said you had the house to yourself for a bit. Two fifty? Perhaps I'm being a bit over generous. Oh, come on, Fred. I'll get three hundred quid for my share. Now you want to be rid. It's a buyer's market, William. Go on then, two fifty it is. I'll give you a check later. <laughs> See you, Jacko. Come on, Fred lad. Hey Martin. Right then. <sighs> now then, Martin, what are you having? Oh, you can let me in on the joke for a start. I could do with some cheering up. Hey, it's no joke. Fred Elliot has just made me a very happy fellow. Best thing out for your allotment, and that's straight from the horse's mouth. Well, hardly. <laughs> no, perhaps not. You'll have to bag it yourself, mind. Oh, well, if you think I'm going to let Derry go filling bags in a stable yard. Well, get that boss of him to do it for him. According to your Derrick, he's no stranger to shoveling. Ah, 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 Fred. I think we've got the message. And how are we supposed to get it home? In the back of a car? Well, if you're going to put obstacles in the way... Thank you very much for the offer, but no thank you. Yeah, and I was prepared to offer you a good price and all on a regular order. You weren't thinking of charging for it. Certainly. 
We have to fork out to get him to produce it. But you can get it free at the riding stables in Bolton Road. But what quality is it? Does it come from the digestive system of a thoroughbred, a potential national winner? By egg, Fred, this racehorse owned in Lark has certainly improved your small talk. Going to do a lot more than that, Rita. And not only for me. True. From what I hear, it's going to bankrupt the lot of you. You don't have to tell me which faint art that's come from. Bill Webster. Martin Platt, actually. Really? If anybody else says how sorry they are for me today, I'll scream. Look, I'm sorry, Maury. Oh. I didn't mean to upset you. Of course you didn't, and neither did anybody else. <sighs> they've been very understanding and very supportive. That's why they've treated me like a peep show, is it? Let's go and see that woman who can't keep a husband, that woman who's been ditched for somebody else. That's not the way it's been at all, and you know it. Oh, it's kept people flocking in, hasn't it? It's been great for business. And you reckon folk have nothing better to do than think about you, eh? It's exactly what I've been telling her. Look, Reg has flown the coop. It's hurtful, and it's going to leave a deep scar. There's no use pretending it's going to be any other way. Look, Bill, I know you mean well, but if you are going to tell me that I've got to get out there and start my life over again, I just might clock you on, because I've been told it a hundred times today already. It's a bit different coming from me, though, isn't it? I've been there. Right, lads, come on, off you go. Sup up, home to your loved ones. If you don't want to look, your wife will have to do. Jack. Yeah? Phone cut. Who is it, kid? Uh, I don't know, I didn't catch her name. Sounded like she was uh, sucking on a pound of plums. Right. So now, lads, see you tonight. <sighs> Hello, Jack Dutworth. Hilary. How are you, love? How's he doing? Ah, oh, great. <laughs> now then, what can I do for you? Well, where did he get £300 from? He won it. Oh, didn't even cross his mind to pay us back what he owes us. Ah, well, he'd had a drink at the time, hadn't he? Oh, that makes everything all right, does it? Well, where's the hey, point in causing a little more aggro? Oh, do you know, you're too soft for your own good, you are. You were right, you'd never have run a business in a million years. The first person who came to you with a sob story, you'd be fixing the car for nothing. You're probably giving him a handout into the bargain. Looks so. All I want to do is go to work in the morning. Well, pick up your pay packet and let someone else do the worrying. I know, Kevin. Well, let's hope it all works out like that, shall we? Hey. Well, for all we know, you could be out of a job by the end of the month. Oh, yes. How, how was Daft getting into it in the first place? I've had nothing but earache from Gail. <laughs> Just wish I'd never set eyes on the animal. I can't understand it. I say, I can't understand it. Chance to go up in the world, get yourself a bit of status, have a bit of fun in the bargain. But if you're not happy... So you'll buy it, then? Huh? I don't need it. I'll be straight with you. But if it lets you off the hook with your missus... Fred, you're a saint. <laughs> uh, check, all right. Yeah, 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 anything. <laughs> 200, right? I'm gone. I paid 300 pounds. It's not like putting money in a building society. You don't get interest. It's more like uh, buying stocks and shares. Prices fluctuate. It's not fluctuated that much since yesterday. Suit yourself. Hang on. 250. Look, lad. 200's on the table. Uh, same again, Jack. Aye, right. 225. You say something? I said I'll settle for 225. And I'm sure you'll get it. Will you join me, Jack? Aye, Fred. I need some Right, 200 it is, and I hope you're very happy. 200 pounds. Eh? Eh, eh, eh. Pleasure to do business with yes, you. Yes, wish I could say the same. Let me buy you a drink. Same again. Uh, no thanks, Fred. <laughs> Probably end up paying for that and all. <laughs> See ya. I'm beginning to enjoy this race, Lark. Glad well, somebody is. Hey, you're not going to pull out at all. What? An advert to our Vera? What a plunker I've been. You've got no chance. So what's the problem? The problem is our trainer's been on. Hilary? Aye. There's no wrong with the horse, is there? Oh, no, he's grand. Couldn't be better chomping his way through enough food to keep half the flaming population going, according to her. She wants summit on account. She's going to get it. We've told her. Tomorrow morning. 640 quid. How much? Which, to my reckoning, is 80 quid a share, Fred. Yep. Fred Elliott. Got the cheque here. Oh, 
Well, I mean, he can't lose, can he? Because he can always sell it in his shop. <laughs> Look, I got the money back. You should be happy now. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Not particularly because you got the money back. I mean, you won most of that anyway. So what are you going on about? Going on about the prospect of blowing all the housekeeping on hay. You know, it's not like Fred Elliot to do anybody a favour, is it? Yeah, well, he did for me. <clears throat> so, come on. You're right, then. How much did he give you? What, I paid? 300 quid. Well, that's very generous of him. I must remember to thank him next time I see him. Mm, all right, near enough. <laughs> Look, I got shut of it, so can we drop it? How much is near enough? Well, I'm happy, all right. 275? 250? Look, it's between me and Fred. 225? He took it off me 200? hands. 200? Yes, 200. <laughs> Well, he was doing me a favour. Oh, he was doing himself a bigger favour. Well done, Martin. You played a blinder. Still, long as you're happy. Mm -hmm. Of course your dad was depressed. The whole point in going was for you to try and lift his spirits. Yeah, and how was I supposed to do that? By trying to be positive. Positive? What's he got to be positive about? The future. He's not going to be stuck in there forever. <laughs> and that's positive, is it? Look, Vicky, what's he going to do when he does come out? What's he going to do for the rest of his life? I don't know. But he will have a life. Whatever he's done, we have to stand by him. <laughs> Look, Vicky, you're wasting your time. He's not interested in the future. I mean, he doesn't even know where he's going to live. Well, he could go back with Bill Webster, couldn't he? At least till he gets on his feet. Oh, yeah, and that's a great idea. Seeing me mum every day. How long do you think he's going to be before he blows his top again? And how long's Bill Webster going to want him around for? A manic depressive with no aim in life. So we just abandon him, do we? Just wash our hands of him? I'm sorry, Steve, but I can't do that. And I'm appalled that you could even think of it. Are you expecting anybody? No. Steve. Good to see you. Vicky, all right, I take it? Who is it? Grandad? My word, you do look well. I have to admit, married life certainly seems to agree with you. <laughs> you, uh, you wouldn't be making coffee by any chance. I could murder a cup. You knew he was coming, didn't you? No, I didn't. Well, you seem quite pleased to see him. Well, of course I did. He's family. He's the only family I've got now. Keep your voice down here, wake up. Oh, I don't care if I do. I want to know what he's doing here. He's on business, he said. Uh, well, why come to us? Well, if he can't ask us a favour, then... But, Vicky, look, the last time I saw him, the only favour he would have asked me was to stand still while he got a better aim. Look, no, something has changed and it's not going to be to our benefit. Say that. Oh, look at us. He's only been here 12 hours and we're arguing already. OK, OK, we'll wait until he wakes up and then we'll ask him what his plans uh, no, are. No, you'll ask him because I don't want to talk to the guy. You can't just let him stay here and ignore it. But he's not going to be staying here, though, is he? Why not? Because you're going to get rid of him today. <sighs> Mrs Sullivan. Morning, Fred. Now, don't be cross. I know I promised there'd be no more offerings, but I just couldn't resist this. Best time quarter allowed, mind. It's opposite number last night. You'll not regret it. By hey, Fred. You certainly know the way to a girl's heart, don't you? You have it. I meant what I said the other day. But you'll not find this quality in jobs. Then I'll just have to do without you. <clears throat> Is that going back in? You know what? You'll not get much change out of a tenner for that. Pay me papers. Tell them. Give me two quid, take it off your hands. Surprised you don't take me off at me offer if you're that short of brass. What offer? To buy you out the horse. Not likely. You're not turning my share of Betty's hot shot into no flaming horse meat. Uh, ready cash, Jack. No monthly trainer's bills. You'll not budge me. Two pound fifty for the lamp. Final bid. I can't sell it for that. Neither can I. At any price. Well, <coughs> if my services are no longer required, I will bid you both good day. Ta da, Fred. Ta da. It's really turning Betty's hot shot into horse meat. Well, it's a butcher, isn't it, love? 
Won't put Nelt past that fella. Oh. Oh, thank you, love. Hey, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to spring myself on you like this. It's always all been a, a bit last minute. It's all right. Yeah, it's very good of you both to put me up. Mm. Only it, it's Sunline, as you see. They've, uh, they've, uh, they've given me promotion. Yes, from now on I shall be coordinating their international operations. Mm. Well, for the Northwest at any rate. It's a very big empire they've got, you know. I mean, they don't just do cruises. Whereabouts will you? Oh, be? I shall be land-based, of course. Mm. Yeah. I shall miss the sea, I expect. Mind you, it's like the Navy, isn't it? You can only get so far up the ladder on boats. Your admirals and such like, I mean, they operate from Whitehall. Sounds very interesting. Um, do you, uh, do you hear from Bet? No. No. I had a Christmas card. There's been nothing since. Did you know that she asked me to lend her the money for the Rovers? Uh, yes, I did hear, and uh, you were quite right to refuse. I mean, she'd no business putting pressure on you like that. Oh, I'm glad you don't hold it against me. Well, it's nothing to do with me, but anyway, I'm not one to hold grudges. I trust you or not, either. There was no way you were going to stop me from marrying him. I know. I know. I, mean, I was foolish to try. I just hope it hasn't spoilt our friendship. No. You're still my granddad, no matter what. You know, you don't know what that means to me. Anyway, let's put that behind us, I think. Look to the future. Mm -hmm. I'm more than happy to do that. Good. Whether Steve will be or not, that's a different matter. Well, you told me it would all be tied up this morning. Look, th th this isn't going to carry on till next week, is it? Yeah, all right. All right, well, you, you get it sorted out and phone me when you've done it, eh? All right. Oh, I don't know. Solicitors. Well, what's up now? Oh, some documents got held up that he needs. Well, he can't help that, can he? Yeah, probably hasn't opened his mail this morning. Or too busy chatting up the secretary and doing the crossword. I sometimes wonder why I'm paying him. Hiya. 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 All right. Uh, look, I'm just going to better buy to do some shopping. So, uh, well, I just wonder if uh, Sarah wants to come or if she's OK. No, she can stay with me. Well, that is, unless you want to go with Martin, do you? I'll go if I can go and see the horse. Well, you won't be able to do that for a bit, sweetheart. Why? Well, it's a long way away. You haven't sold him, have you? No, why do you ask? I uh, just wanted to know. You haven't, have you? Uh, I think we'd better have a little bit of a chat about this. This isn't doing any good. I'm going to go and see Don Brennan, see if he can speed it up his end. Two whips are better than one when you're flogging a dead horse. See you later. I wouldn't have thought two whips made any difference if the horse was dead, but, well, there you go. Is he dead? Who? Bet his hot shot. No, no. It's just an expression, uh, flogging a dead horse. Oh, this, this love, we were just talking about something else. So if you have sold him... No, no, no. I've just sold my share in him because we couldn't afford it. What's that big fat butcher? Yeah, as a matter of fact. Why? Because Mr. Duckworth said he's turning him into horse meat. So he's dead and you've killed him. Thank you, Jack. Okay. I've, uh, I've got something for you. I sold my share in the horse to Fred Elliot. Go on, take it. Well, thanks. I won't say no. And I won't let you either. I know it's a bit late, having lost a garage and all Look, that. Look, it was me who decided not to go for that. I was out of order blaming you. Yeah, but it can't have helped, can it? Having no money because you'd lent it to me. Yeah, well, whatever. It's in the past now, let's forget it, eh? Yeah. I'll pay you back as soon as I can. I keep saying that, don't I? Yeah, well, when you're ready, OK? Yeah. Cheers, Kev. Right, what's happening about tonight? Oh, well, can we talk about that later, love? We have a lot to get through today. Yes. Look, I'll see you in the rovers after work and we'll sort it out. Now, you've got that number in case you need to reach me. Yeah, I'll... Right, um... I'll love you and leave you then.
Bruce, are we out? I don't know. I just come over all queer. I felt as if somebody had walked over me grave or something. Look, any more stunts like that or so you know all about graves, cos you'll be in one. Come on, shift. Get serving. Ah, See you, Stan. Jack. Yes. Uh, pint, please. Right. Well, I've, and I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh, what have I done now? You telling Sarah Louise Fred's turning Betty's up shot into horse meat. <laughs> I, I was just teasing the kid. Yeah, oh, I never, wish I'd never been to the flaming races. I know how you feel. Oh, they won't be saying that when they've got a couple of wins with the belt, eh, Hell, hey. No, no, it's not just the winning, though. It, it's the pride in knowing that you hold it. That's it, innit? Watching it walk round the paddock knowing it's yours. Money well spent in my view. Who says it can't buy happiness, eh? <laughs> Why are you looking a bit more scared? Well, I had a good night last night, for a change. Well, that's nice, because it can't be easy for you just at the moment, what with your dad and... Well, no, you're right. It's not a bundle of laughs. You know, I still can't believe it's happened. I mean, they carry on for years and years, bickering like any other couple. And as soon as one of them goes a bit too far, all of a sudden it's prison. You see, it could happen to anybody when you put it like that. And I read a magazine once that some psychologist niece said, apparently. You've a good chance of turning out just like your Bergens. You know, even if you don't want to. Do you think that's what they mean when they say like father, like son? Probably, Raquel, yeah. Mm. And thanks, you really cheered me up. Ah, the syndicate. <laughs> What's left of it? <laughs> well, investing in bloodstock is not for the faint-hearted. Best get out if you can't make the commitments. Jack, double scotch and a threat. Ah, oh, the winners will pay for all that, you know. You hope. <laughs> There'll be no problem. He's got good bloodlines, you can tell. Oh, will you stop going on about blood? I've got a little girl at home in tears because she thinks you want him down the knacker's yard. Who's told her that? Well, no, I didn't... Gentlemen, mean... I thought I might find you in here. Ah, if, if, if it's about the money... Yes, £640, I think we said. Here, what's this? She's our trainer, love. 640 quid! Know, it'll be all be sorted. You said that on Wednesday. I mean, either you have the money or you don't. Well, he hasn't, that's for sure. Well, you will understand my position. I have to be certain that new clients are serious. I'm left with all the costs otherwise. So until I know you can meet your payments, I'll leave him with you. How do you mean? The Betty's hot shot. I've got him outside. No money. No stables, I'm afraid. William, <laughs> this we must see. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you can't leave it here. Uh, what's that you said about money well spent, Jack? Oh. Hey? Yeah, you're not giving her 640. We don't even think about it. No, 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 that's between eight and uh, six. Now me and Martin have dropped. Yeah, yeah, listen, I must go and get Sarah, excuse me. <laughs> now, if you'll just tell me where you want him, he's all yours. <laughs> I can't explain. No need, Mr thing. Duckworth. I've seen it all before. People buying before they've thought it through. Hey, investing in bloodstock, <laughs> it's not for the faint-hearted. No. <laughs> yeah, you have to be able to honour your investment. Look, you never said this on Monday when, when, when you talked into buying him. I was merely singing his praises, yeah. which I still stand by. But look, it's coming up to his feed time. I hope you've got something for him. I've got a leg of lamb in the car. Will that be any good? So don't eat meat. Have you got a better oh, idea? Yeah. Look, 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 we've got nowhere to keep him, you Ooh, see. Then you'd better find somewhere, hadn't you? Hey, Derek, you're looking for somewhere to keep this horse. Any room on your allotment? Certainly not. What about the uh, back garden, then? We could graze him in there. <laughs> <laughs> see, there you go. He's all in one piece, so you can forget those stories about horse meat. All right. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> you couldn't get it neck heel for this, yeah. You stupid fool. <laughs> Look, I can't stand around here all day. Have you got the money or not? We just can't fork out 600 quid like that. Fine. No, no, hang on, hang on, lads. Look, look, we're, we're going to have to come to an arrangement. But we're not all here. No, no. Billy's missing. Gary, Tom. Don't. Don't. Look, you've had since Monday to organise all this. Will you take half now? We'll pay the rest later. Do you know the price of hay, sir? It's no use, lads. We're going to have to shell out. What, just like that? Well, think about it, Fred. Can you think of an alternative? 
Steve, I can't just kick him out. He's my grandfather. <sighs> Vicky, this is the guy who offered me five grand to stay away from you. And who asked your Uncle Nick to lie about your will. I know. Well, then why's he suddenly come crawling back asking to sleep on our sofa? I mean, if he's got such a, a flash job, then why isn't he staying in a flash hotel? Cos it's all lies, that's why. I won't hear this, Steve. He's my grandfather. I don't care what he's done. He's the only close family I've got left. And right now, that's important to me. Well, what about me? Am I not family? Does it not matter how I feel? He said he'd give you a number. Yes. Well, I suggest you give it a ring. It's probably a phone box in a job centre. Don't be ridiculous. Well, go on, then. Make the call. Make me look small. All right. Hello, um, I'd like to speak to Alec Gilroy, please. Right. No, that's OK. Um, whereabouts is your office? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. That was Sunliners on Rosamond Street. He'll be there any minute. Right, this is where his international operations are coordinated, is it? Rosamond Street. You just can't handle being wrong, can you? What? Well, who says I am? Uh, we go 50-50 then, right? All right. Although you own in three-eighths of it now, Fred, shouldn't you pay more? Hey, that's a point. Right, right. I'll pay half. We'll settle the rest later. Mm. And the others have better cough up and all. Oh, we will, Fred. Hey, yeah, what's mm. that? I was just saying, pay the bill, Fred. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And I'm sorry I had to do that to you. You look after him, I hope. Oh, pop over any time. He's going like the wind on the gallops. We do encourage active involvement. We're involved, all right. Up to us next. Well, gentlemen, I'd better be making tracks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye, lovely. Bye, Mrs. Forrest. Yeah, I got no one to call it the sport of kings. You need the crown jewels to pay for it. Certainly lightens the pocket. I think I'll take you for that offer, Jack. For lamb, two fifty, you said. Well, after he's put in your flaming car all day, one seven five. Two. Done. This calls up your index of tour operators, huh? and this calls up your index of places. So, if you want a week in uh, Greece, for example, uh, just just excuse me a minute, will you, Harry? Vicky, love, what are you doing here? I was uh, just passing, actually. Oh. There's no problem, is it? No, no. Uh, what time will you be finished? Oh, I should be through about six. Hello, some Linus Travel Agency. Can You're I not going to be working here, are you? Uh, well, this is this, this is just one of some Linus and many outlets. <laughs> Got a very big travel agency arm, you know. <laughs> yes, I mean they're looking at ways to improve things. They need to. Alec, sorry to interrupt, but this is a case in point. Chap here wants a weekend in Torquay. I'm having it haul up Torquay. Yeah. Devon? Yeah. West Country. I'll, I'll be with you in a minute then, Harry. I'm having a bit of a problem with the software. No, but all I wanted to say was for next uh, week. Yes, I think I get the overview. Thank you. Look, we're a, we're a bit pushed here, love. Uh, I, I'll see you in the Rovers, eh? After work. OK. It's not the end of the world if it has to wait till Monday, is it? It is if they go out for a drive on Sunday afternoon and see something else they want to spend their money on. Another half now. I'm going to go around and see him myself. I hold a gun to his head if I have to. I want this tied up today. So, I'm forgiven then. Only if we can go to the house sometimes. Well, we can probably afford that now I'm not paying for the stabling costs. Where will they find the money? I don't know. Good jobs. Good pensions. And no kids either, come to think of it. If I can't have a horse, can I have a guinea pig? Um, we'll think about it. Hmm? Hello? Well, thank God for that. Why did it take so long? Yeah, well, OK, you've done it now, anyway, yeah. Thanks. Uh, talk to you later. Bye. See ya. <laughs> I've just stirred. I came straight over. I thought they'd never get round. Eh? So did I. 
So, what does it feel like to be an entrepreneur? Uh, <laughs> well, is that what I am? <laughs> You've got a bargain there, you know, 43 grand. Yeah, I'm not complaining. I wish you all the luck in the world. Ah, thanks. And, uh, if ever you need the car doing, I know where to come. <laughs> <laughs> it does get easier, you know. What does? Coming out in public, facing the world after you've, you've lost somebody. You know, I should be grateful I'm not having to go through what you did. Well, it depends how you look at it. I mean, in some ways, it's it's worse when they walk out on you. I mean, oh. they've chosen that. You can't blame somebody for dying. 240, please, Maureen. Oh, thanks, Rock. Thanks, love. What I want to know is when do they stop giving you sympathetic stares? Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> when they find somewhere else to talk about. So, it's true. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm like you, Vera, going up in the world. Oh. <laughs> I'll have a large Irish and toast to your future. Hey, great, I'll, I'll have one with you, boss. It's a lovely surprise. Oh, you look well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How's married life? Oh, it's great. Oh, you got over the honeymoon then, did you? <laughs> <laughs> are you up here long? Well, we'll see. Later. There you are. There you are, boss. Alec. <laughs> On the house. Yes. It's very generous of you, Jack, to the future. I bet you never thought you'd see this, did you? Well. Oh, you mean you running this place? I never underestimate a Duckworth. Oh, I think I always had the measure of you, Jack. <laughs> I see you uh, let your wife get her name over the front door. I think that's par for the course, isn't it? Hiya. Oh, hello. Uh, what, what can I get you? Um, white wine, please. Uh, and uh, I'll have a brandy. That bottle at the back with us don't looks quite nice. So I call a man with taste. I'll get you a large one. So how's it all shaping up? Oh, uh, satisfactorily. You get done when you had to? I've uh, made a good start. I'll grab a table. You can tell us all about it. We've got a lot of catching up to do, I think. Sal not in, then? I uh, know. Taking the girls to a party. So, this is about the garage, you take it? Yep. All went through this afternoon, didn't it? Yeah. So I heard. Congratulations. We just want you to know that as far as we're concerned, your job's safe. <laughs> Thanks very much. What about Tony? Well, you run the place. It's up to you who you employ. Seems all right to us. Yeah, fair dues. As long as that garage works, we've got no intention of interfering. Same rates of pay, everything. <laughs> Well, that's a relief from us, tell you. I mean, it's always a bit tricky, isn't it, when you get a new boss? We, uh, we thought you might make a move for it yourself. Uh, well, he offered me first refusal. Really? Yeah, so I had my chance. I just couldn't bring myself to raise 40,000 quid. Well, no, uh, that's, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. Still, looks like it's turned out all right in the end, doesn't it? I get to keep my job, work for decent human beings, and, well... You get what you want, so we've all got something to celebrate, haven't we, eh? Do you know, there's something I don't get about this. I mean, you're happy, Don's happy. So what's wrong with that? Well, that's not normally how it works with you, either. Either you've done the dirty or you've had it done on you. Mm, the former, mainly. Well, what makes it different this time? Well, I'm happy cos I've got a good deal. Don's happy cos he thinks he has. Meaning what? Wrote to my solicitor a couple of weeks ago. I told him I thought the garage was worth 50,000. <laughs> Bit of an exaggeration, I know, but anyway, I didn't post it straight away, and uh, I think Josie may have seen it, because it was soon after that they started the bidding. You mean you left it lying around? That is a swine's trick, is that, Mike? Well, teaching a mind around business. But you offered it to Kevin for 40. Well, he worked for me. Caveat emptor if Don's not happy. Oh, what's that one is it all? Well, any court in the land to tell him. Buyer, beware. Oh. So, how's the print shop, Steve? Flourishing, I hope. I think I must have missed something here, in between you mm. trying to buy me off last summer and this long-lost summer. Oh, you, you, mustn't, uh, you mustn't take that too personally. I was just testing you. I mean, any father would have done the same. <laughs> Did you never see room at the top? No, it was before my turn. Oh, great picture. Lawrence Harvey in his prime. Yes. Wanted to marry the local bigwig's daughter, but they gave him brass to stop away. He turned it down, and then, of course, the father knew his intentions were honourable. 
they shook hands and lived happily ever after. Yeah, well, there's only one problem with that, Alec. I don't remember shaking hands. Fred. Yeah. Oh, There's dumping up a lot of money for this horse, Sean. It's going to be worth it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Bread in the purple, that one. I reckon you bought it at the right time. It's just running into form. Well, it's like she said. We're like the wind through the gallops. Well, I'll tell you what she didn't say. Any horse looks fast running past trees. You see, I'm still not clear about this job. I've told you. I've come up to streamline their operations up here. Yeah, but where exactly? The northwest. Oh, Cheshire, Liverpool, Cumbria. I shall be based in Weatherfield. Oh, now we're getting it. For how long? Oh, well. A week, a month, a year? For the time being. And where are you going to be staying? Well, I've still got to sort that out. Well, you better sort it out fast, pal, because you're not staying with us. He can stay with us until he finds somewhere else. He can stay until Monday, and then either he goes or I do. I'll tell you one thing that's going to change. Uh, what's that? The name. It's not going to stop MVB Motors, that's for sure. Oh. Yeah, I better get over there later. Show the lads that I'm keeping an eye on the place, eh? Yeah, well, don't go falling for any sob stories from our Kevin, you know, about how our Dunbar has been and how long it's been since he's had a pay rise. No danger. That's our pension, that place. Hey, it's a grand feeling, that way. <laughs> eh? eh? Being bosses, eh? <laughs> Come on, give you a lift. Oh, too good for the bike now, am I? Eh? Now I'm a boss, eh? <laughs> <laughs> understand. Of course I understand. It's very good of you to put up with me for a couple of days. I know it's not been easy. Well, it's just that it's hardly been an ideal situation for, for any of us, really. I'm glad you came, though. Aye. So, my love. Where will you go, then? Oh, where some miners wanted me to go in the first place, a hotel. It was all fixed up. I mean, it was me who told them to put it on hold. You know, making up with you has meant far more to me than any five-star hotel treatment. Even if it has played havoc with me back. Oh, he even took flaming paper with him. Well, there's no need to panic. We've got plenty. Well, well he can thank his lucky stars he's fit enough to go to work after the stunt he's pulled. He's lucky he didn't go to work singing soprano. You're, you're not the only one who wasn't very pleased with what happened yesterday. You speak for yourself. It livened our lives up, didn't it? No, all that shouting and carrying on. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that horse box blocking up the street, holding up the traffic. And as for that awful woman with the horse, how anyone could get mixed up with her. Actually, she reminded me a bit of Angela. Angela? She was nothing like Angela. Uh, Rita might not have been talking about the woman, Derek. Well, it's not the sort of behaviour we're prepared to tolerate on this street. You were quite right to chastise your husband. Come again? Well, there is part in bringing it all about as a member of the syndicate. What has that got to do with Oak? If my galley wants to share in a racehorse, that's his own business. I don't give a toss what he does with his own brass. Daft Barnpot's gone and paid for it with our holiday money. That's the obvious line, anyway, to me. Yeah. Hey, Jude. Hi. Right. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Hiya. Hi. What are you doing here? On my way to work. I sometimes go this way for a change. Didn't expect to see you, though. Isn't the quickest way for you? There's not much in it. So what time are you finishing tonight? Me? I'm just asking, like. When Mr Barlow gets home. And what time's that? I'm not sure. It won't be late, though. Not tonight. Come back this way, dear. Why? I just thought, if you happen to be passing, about six. I will be. I am. I do. Not every night, but I will be tonight. I could meet you if you like. Great. Where? Rovers? Right. About six? I'll be there. I'll see you later. I'm getting close to you, woman. Put some... <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not checking up on you. Yeah. I'll have to I just start okay. taking a look at the Empire, give it a quick once over. Yeah. yeah. you got plenty to get on with then, have you? Enough. Ah, well, let's hope he stays that way then, eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, not in particular you wanted to have a look at? No, 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 no. I don't want to get in your way, you carry on. <laughs> but I do intend to take this business seriously. Yeah. I want to see it working a lot better than when Bowen had it. I mean, I won't be splashing out profits on big cars like he had. No, that's not my style. I prefer to see that kind of money invested in this place. That way, we'll all be happy, eh? Yeah. Right, carry on. Right. Can't see him being much of a problem. 
Early days yet, mate. We'll give him benefit of the doubt for now. Here, I'll see to Mrs. Roberts. You go and put the kettle on. Why don't you go and put the kettle on? I just thought it'd give you a break. You've hardly stopped to draw breath since you've come in this morning. Well, am I complaining? That's £7.42, please. Oh, right. But if you ask me, you're doing the right thing, Maureen. Love, keep your mind occupied. Stop you thinking about... Weapon. About Reg. Reg, you can say it. I won't collapse into a flood of tears, Audrey. Oh. So you come into terms with it, are you? She might give you that impression, but she can't fool me. Mother, I'm trying to get on with the rest of my life. Well, there's more to it than standing behind this counter all day, going home and coming back again. It's what I want. What you want is to get out of an evening. I'm all right. Now about me. How do you think I feel when I want to go out? Nobody's stopping you going out. But I don't enjoy myself, do I? Knowing that you're at home on your own, I feel I'm letting you down. Well, you're not. I even feel guilty when I want to go to my whist drive. Well, that's nobody's fault but your own, is it? Perhaps you can make a sea sense. Perhaps she'll listen to you. Your mother's right, you know, love. I mean, it do you good to get out a bit more, see some more of your friends. Audrey, I know you mean well, but I'm quite happy the way I am. And the last thing I need is somebody trying to organise my life. Excuse me, what? Are we going there or what? Where? Racing, Friday. Of course we're going. We're owners, aren't we? We'll be there to lead it into the winner's enclosure. <laughs> you better come good. The money has cost me. It nearly cost me my life when Jude found out where I got the money from to pay the trainers, Bill. My offer still stands. If anybody wants to buy right, it out... Right, you out. Hey? Your dinner's on table. If you're not back in two minutes, it'll be on your head. I just ordered the toaster. Well, you can just unorder it, can't you? There'll be no more eating out for you till you pay back that holiday money. Every penny. Oh, Jude. Now, come on, you two. I hate to see folks fratching. Especially when I might be in a position to do something about it. Oh, well, the way I see it, your share in this horse is what lies at the root of the problem. So I thought, if I could make you an offer to buy you out... No, thank you, no. Well, you may have cash in your hand, no bills. How much? No, Jude, no. Come on, Fred, you can't pull a stunt like that. Uh, you stop out of it. See, this is between the young lady and myself. Don't I get a say in this? No. no. Don't do it. Come Friday, you'll get your money back and the rest. I know. Nothing is certain in this world, Jack. You were just saying it were a dead cert. Look, what are you going on about? It's running again on Friday. If it wins, we'll be quids in. What do you mean if? There's no if about it. It won well, before, didn't it? It, it walked it. Well, yeah. It does have a chance, but if you take my advice... You slimy toad. Do you know what you can do with your money? <laughs> That's my girl. Um, now. Now, as I was saying... Gary's toasty. Not paid for. Yeah, he doesn't want it. He's gone. God, well, what am I supposed to do with this? You'll have to chuck it, won't you? No, just wait your sweat. There's no point in letting good food go to waste. One pound eighty. You were going to throw it away. Jack? Pound. Fifty pence. Come on, Fred, I've got to earn a living. Oh, ah, you're right. Ah. Which reminds me, when was the last time we had a price review on the pies? Give it him. Jack, you're a gent. I'll have a pint to yeah. spill it down when you're ready. How are you right. fixed for an extra couple of hours tonight? Well, I thought Andy were coming in. Yeah, well, he's not. He's studying for his exams or summer, so we won't be able to rely on him for a bit. I'm sorry, Vera. I see you all right for money. Yeah. It's not the money. What is it then? Oh, Curly. Oh, you can soon get round him. You've done it before. Well, yes, I have, but that don't mean to say you can take advantage of me. Well, no. Well, no, you're not, because I'm not going to let you take advantage of my good nature, because Andy's let you down. I don't want to work tonight, so I'm not doing. You and Jack, you'll just have to manage. Oh. oh, it's you. Looks like it. What do you think you're playing at? Nothing. There's a proper place for rubbish like this, you know. So why do you leave it lying about, then? Are you not going to pick it up? No, you can have it if you want it. You cheeky little monkey, you ought to think yourself very lucky you're not my grandson. I do. Hey, get off that bike. So what's it like working for an amateur then? Haven't noticed any difference. You will. <laughs> No, no. He seems a decent enough fella. Yeah, he's happy enough just to let us get on with the job. Well, he would do. He's not a mechanic, is he? Well, neither are you, but it didn't stop you having your say. Because businesses don't run themselves, Sonny. Mr. Brennan is good lady. I've yet to find out. So enjoy the honeymoon. 
Well, at last. So, uh, how you how you get into this race meeting then? I mean, you'll be wanting a bevy or two, so you'll not want to be driving. We'll work that out for ourselves. Mm, Friday, I think you said. That's right. Yeah, well, you're in luck. Just so happens I've got an executive minibus available on Friday. I could put it through at a good price. For you or for us? Well, for you, Jack. Just get it in the picture if the press want a photograph of you and Dobbin. Dobbin? Dobbin. You wouldn't flaming credit it. Someone's just gone and nicked Josie's bike from our backyard. No! It was there half an hour ago. I went out to bin just now and it's gone. That's terrible. Do you know you can't turn you back for five minutes these days? No, they'll nick anything that's not nailed down. I'll nail them down if I get my hands on them. Anyway, keep your eyes skinned, lads. Yeah. Well, Mr Sugden may have seen something, don't miss much. What's that? Josie, she's had a bike pinch from Dom's yard. When did that happen? Well, about half an hour ago. Hey, you haven't seen anyone hanging around that backyard, have you? Yes, as it happens, I have. Young Jamie. Jamie Armstrong. <laughs> In for half an hour. Don't want to go to the rovers, Sally. Oh, suit yourself. I've no intention of starving myself to oh. death. Oh, come on, Maud, I'll help you with the door. There you are. Hey, it'd do you good to get out. It'd do me good to get shut of my mother. She's very worried about you. Well, worrying isn't going to help either of us. She never stops going on from the moment I get up in the morning to the moment I go to bed at night. Well, mothers are like that. My mother would be just the Oh, same. Sally, your mother doesn't live with you. Yeah, it doesn't stop her caring, does it? If I had a problem, she'd be over on the next train. Look, I am coming to terms with it, but it won't happen overnight, will it? I won't wake up in the morning and go, oh, Eureka, I've wiped out the past. Of course not, and nobody expects you to. Don't be too hard on your mother. Her heart is in the right place. I just grin and bear it, shall I? Well, why not? I can't remember a time when she didn't organise my life, so what's different about this time? You're still there for each other, aren't you? And you always have been. And the before round here would be very glad to say that. Hello, Jamie. What are you doing with that? I'm bringing it back. Where from? Well, this dinner time, this girl nicked it from my backyard. My bike? Yeah, I chased her and made her dump it. Well, I don't know what to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I thought it might be worth something. Oh, what do you mean? Well, you're not offering a reward. A reward? Ooh, well, now, uh, what were you thinking of? I don't know. It's up to you, but it would have cost you a bit for a new bike. Well, that's very true. Um, how does ten pounds sound? Oh, yeah. Yeah? What's going on there, eh? Hey, did you know that my bike had been stolen? Yes, I did. I've been looking everywhere for you. No, it was Jamie brought it back. I was just wondering what to give him. Give him? Well, you know, as a reward. I thought £10. Oh, did you? Well, I think a thick ear might be nearer the mark. Eh? Hey? Yeah, since it was him who took it in the first place, so they could bring it back and get a few quid. I never. Oh, no, no. Like, you never pulled that puncture scam either, did you? I never stole it. Honest. Yeah, honest. That's a bit rich coming from you. You haven't got much of a track record in that department, have you? Well, you've blown it this time, sunshine. Oh. Tomorrow morning. You can take time off, can't you? Oh, come on, Fred. I've got the brewery coming at 11. We'll be back well before then. Mind you, it'll mean an early rise. Well, you're all right with that, eh? But don't say nothing to be here until I've had a chance to have a word with it. Oh. What's tickling you? No, oh, I was just relishing the moment when we lead our baby into the winner's enclosure. Yeah, well, I hope you're all right. It's a pity your Jack isn't as enthusiastic as I am. Ah, Jack, it's awesome, isn't it? He'd crawl over burning coals to see that run. About making sure he's in big condition for race. Take tomorrow morning. Well, what about it? Well, I'm going to see it in training. Make sure it's looking good, being treated right, protecting my investment. Eight and hours. Exactly. Yeah. Can I get Jack interested? Can I, Eckers? Like he'd sooner stay in his pit for another half hour. 
What's the matter, man, you said? That's right. It will only be for a couple of hours. Me, I'd have said you were more than capable of carrying on without him. I know, says I aren't. <laughs> hey, yo, mm. no arguments, you're going. You are. Tomorrow morning to see that horse run. You bought it. Least you can do is take interest. I'm sorry, Jack. She did ask. Right, I'm off. Mm. Hey, right, Fred. <laughs> now keep it under your hat. Hey, what? Well, tomorrow morning. We don't want the others getting wind of it, especially not Gary. Aye. We've had enough here, eh, from his wife without him skiving off work at all. Correct, correct. See you, Fred, lad. See ya. But you've got a job. Yeah, part time in a shop. I need to feel I'm doing something with my life. I need to get out and about a bit more, meet different people. Yeah, well, I suppose Tempin will do that for you. And it'll give me a chance to see if there's anything I fancy. <laughs> and what I'm capable of. I mean, I'm not getting any younger. It's years since I did any office work. I just feel as if there's a wider world out there and it's passing me by. Well, I get that feeling at least three times a day. Nothing changes. Go on, you wouldn't have it any different. Well, if you're expecting me to admit to that, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and who do you think you are? Barging in here, calling my lad a thief. He stole me bike. I never. You took it from our backyard this dinner time. He were in school. Oh, so Percy Sugden's a liar, is he? Percy Sugden's always had it in for Jamie. Well, go on, ask him. Go on, tell her. Well, go on. Well, I came back to get my skateboard. Oh, what were you doing down our back ginnel then? A shortcut. From school? Oh. Well, now we're getting somewhere. I didn't take your rotten bike. I saw who did. And I chased him. I thought he'd be grateful. What, just like I was when you mended me puncture, you mean? I didn't steal it. Puncture? What are you talking about? Ask him. I did take that bike. Why are you trying to blame me for something I never did? Because you were seen. In the ginnel, yeah. But did anybody actually see him take your rotten bike? No, because I didn't. So there's your answer. I came round here because I thought it would be better if you dealt with him rather than the police. Police? You've not been to the police. No, because I thought you might be a responsible parent, but obviously you're not. She didn't go to the police because she couldn't prove nothing except that she's a liar. And you're a thief! Get out! Coming round here accusing my lad of something he never did just because you're too mean to pay a reward. If I ever see you anywhere near our backyard again, I'll have the police round so quick! Out! I could have been hurt getting that bite, you know. Could have been killed, even. Anyway, thanks, Mum. What's for tea? There is no tea for you until you tell me the truth. I have told you the truth. Look, Jamie, this is your mum you're talking to. Now, come on. Out with it. <laughs> Jessie Wilcox. Aye. I have bumped into her just coming out of the bank. And what's she got to do with anything? Oh, me and Jessie go back years. She used to be on my books at one time, a dancer. Never got further than the chorus, mind you, but she did all right for work, though. Pantos and summer seasons. Her husband was in the business, too. Charlie. Charlie. He used to have a dog act. Charlie Wilcox and his canine capers. <laughs> Taught one of them to walk the tightrope, you know. Of course, it wouldn't be allowed to be. Uh, Grandad, I'm not really interested in Jesse Wilcox. Or Charlie Wilcox, or his canine capers. I just want to know where you're staying. Yeah, well, I'm coming to that, aren't I? Jessie and Charlie are running a private hotel now, back at the fire station. Just so happens they have a free room. But I thought Sunliners were putting you up in a five-star. Well, they were. I mean, they still would, of course, if I wanted, but... Uh, no, I'll be, I'll be much happier with old friends, you know. Uh, so much to catch up on. I'm really looking forward to it. Come on. I'm waiting. What punctures? Some I did for her. She didn't sound very grateful. Well, what do you expect coming from her? Jamie, I'm not playing games. Now, I'm going to find out what you've been up to. If I have to stand here all night, I'll starve. And then you'll only have yourself to blame. Now, come on. The truth. I mended a puncher for her. And I mended a puncher for Wilton. Mr. Wilton to you. Dozy Derrick, you mean? And they both had punctures. And how come you mended them? Because they paid me. 
And you wouldn't have had a hand in causing him in the first place by any chance. What are you trying to do, Jamie? Get yourself taken off me. Get yourself put in care, because you are going the right way about it, believe me. OK. I did the punches, but I did not steal that bike. I wish my dad were here, he'd believe me. I want to believe you. But what if somebody saw you? And that cow goes to the police, you're in deep trouble. Me and all. Whatever anybody says, I didn't steal that bike. And if I did, don't you think I'd tell you? Because I'm starving and I want my tea. Why won't you believe me, ma'am? I believe you. Go on, get chip pan on then. We should let you out then, eh? I don't have to ask Judy's permission every time I come out. Not every time. <laughs> Just as long as she doesn't come through that door like an Exocet missile, eh? She won't. <laughs> She's at work. <laughs> Cheers, Jack. Are we still on for Friday? No danger. Let's hope he does us proud, eh? Oh, he will. He'd better. My life depends on it. So what are we going to do? When? Oh, we don't want to stay here all night. Who said anything about all night? I just said a drink after work. Oh, well, if you've something else on. I haven't, as it happens. Neither have I. Have you eaten yet? No, I don't eat before I get home. Not usually. I won't want my tea, then. Oh, well, if you're expecting. Oh, I'm not. I told my mum I didn't know what time I'd be home. Do you want me to see what they've got? Don't fancy stopping here. Me neither. Uncle Fred could come in. So? Well, I don't want him to see me, do I? Not with you. He's bound to say something. I make him feel a right fool. Cos you with me? Yeah. Well, no, whoever I was with. Do you fancy a pizza? Yeah, do you? I think I've got it off. Don't worry about it. Come on. Thanks. What? what? For being so understanding about me, Uncle Fred. Your Uncle Fred has nothing to do with it, Ashley. I'm famished. What? Yeah. Yeah. I've just had a thought. What? About tomorrow morning. Now, you haven't forgotten the brewery's coming. No, I haven't forgotten, Vera, no. Yeah, well, just you make sure you're back in town. Cos I know what you're like with race horses. It'll be dinner time before you know it. Hey, what's this, then? He's going to watch his horse in training. Hey, what a good day. What time are we going? <laughs> where? Oh, it seems it's run by a friend of his. Anyway, that's where he's gone. Well, as long as he's not living under our roof. Keep me living in a tent on the Red Rep for me. Steve? He's changed. Oh, look, if you think he ever fooled me for one minute with this old pal, Zach... And... He's sorry for what he's done. I know he is. Oh, yeah, and that makes everything all right, does it? We just forget it ever happened. Look, we have two options here. Either we put the past behind us and just accept him for what he is now... <laughs> says he is. ...or we cut him out of our lives altogether. Which is not what I want to do. Look, I think he's made a really big effort and I would like us to do the same. Please, for me. Well, if he's going to make you... It will. Well, let's go out then. Make a night of it. What, we've got the place to ourselves? <laughs> you don't think the lad could be telling the truth for once, do you? I mean, nobody actually saw him tip the bike, did they? No, nobody actually saw him do them punctures either, did they? True. Oh, okay, come right. on. Oh, hiya. Hiya. You all right? Uh, no, up was there? Uh, afraid so, yeah. Compressor's packed in. Compressor? The air compressor. What do you mean, packed in? Oh, gave up the ghost. Kaput. Well, he did well to last that long. I mean, it was knackered when we got it. What are you saying? What I'm saying is we need to find a replacement and quick. There's not much we can do without a compressor. What? How much is that going to cost? Me? Yeah, probably looking at about five grand. How much? <laughs> Might be able to pick a second-hand one up if we're lucky. Oh, well, that's a great start, isn't it? Mm. Let's hope nothing else packs up for a while then, eh? Well, it's not likely to, is it? I wouldn't bet on it. I mean, most of the stuff over there was on its last legs when we got it. You see, Baldwin wasn't as keen to invest in the place as you two are. Well, no point worrying about that till it happens, is it? Hey, this is the life. How a ball for this, you know. Do you know, with that weird a bit time I locked up last night, I couldn't be bothered taking my mascara off, let alone start clearing this lot up. What about the others? What others? There were only us, and his nibs went up early, so he could be up at crack of dawn to go and watch his horse. Oh, don't talk to me about that thing. <sighs> I mean, I meant to get up early and make a start, but 
I fell off back to sleep again. Well, you want to be careful you're going to wear yourself out. You want to get some more bar staffing? What? Some light-fingered trollops with morals lower than the, the necklines? No, I can do without them. They're not all like that. Raquel's not. Our Judy's not. She's got no experience. She did six months at Royal George a year or so back. Only got the push because landlord uh, wanted to give his fancy piece the job. Yeah, well, I'll think about it. Not quite breakfast in bed, but thanks anyway. Well, I was just about to do the red rose on a tray bit, but you're dressed. Mm, tomorrow, then. Mm -hmm. And don't you think I'll forget? Mm. <laughs> right, I'm off into town early. I need to do some shopping. Right. And before you say, aha, uh -huh, it's domestic. We need some more towels. The racket that you get through them. Yeah, well, I'm a very clean boy. I like to shower a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's because you're leaving soaking wet on the bathroom floor. My mother brought you up very badly, you know. <laughs> My mother actually used to go mad about it, to mm. be honest with you. Why do you think I got married? <laughs> I have wondered. <laughs> well, that and one or two other things. I mean, we couldn't do this if old Turniped was here, could we? Mm, don't you talk about my granddad like that? Well, it's probably better off in his new digs, isn't he, with the rest of the fading stars. I bet he cops off with some lady snake charmer or something. She'd be used to slippery customers, wouldn't she? How would you like it if I insulted your relatives like this? Well, feel free. I do it all the time. Seems better, though, doesn't he? Hmm. And so are we, aren't we? Yeah. It's going to be clear blue water ahead from now on, babe. Actually, that's not a bad idea. We could go on a cruise. <laughs> I didn't mean literally. Yeah, well, I did. Grandad might be able to fix us up with a good deal, like he did with Curly and Raquel. Oh, I think I prefer dry land, to be honest with you. You know, what do you think about something about maybe go to the Seychelles or Mystique? Oh, what about Devon or Cornwall? Well, anyway, where there's some sea sand in you, babe. Mm. Be nice, wouldn't it? Sort of like a second honeymoon. Fresh start. I'll tell you what, I'll pick up some brochures at lunchtime. I'll meet you here at one, and we'll have a snack lunch and look through them. Well, I couldn't wait till tonight. Yeah, well, lunchtime's sooner. Mm -hmm. I might as well put my new bikini in. Bin, I told him, for all use, I'll get out of it now. Three pounds, please. Be bad enough you keep another woman, I said, but I resent having to compete with a flaming horse. Fellas, you can't trust none of them, can you? No. Excuse me. Oh, heck, Jude. Footing gob as usual. I'm sorry. She's a bit touchy at the minute. You want to watch her? Next stop's Funny Farm. And I'll not be long joining her, where that waste of space I'm married is shaping. Hi. Maud, I need to go into Manchester. Is it all right if I do a couple of hours later on instead? Oh, whatever suits. I'm in no rush to get home. Here. How are you fixed for this evening? Socially, I mean. Have you any plans? The usual non-stop world, you know, tray in front of the telly. Why don't you and our Maureen take yourselves off somewhere nice? Have a meal, a chat, a bottle of wine on me. I don't need babysitting, thank you very much. Anyway, um, I'll see you this afternoon. You no need to be offensive. She was only offering... She wasn't offering. You were pestering, so stop interfering, will you? That mallet girl thinks you're heading for a breakdown. And I'm not sure she's far wrong. Hi. Hi. I just thought, well, that is. Can I come in like? He's not keen on me having mates round. All right then. But I'll be taking Daniel to the park later and I could meet you there if you like. Make it dinner time. I'll fetch a picnic. What does he eat? Mush? <laughs> Daft thing. I'll bring Danny's, you bring ours. How about a kiss to be going on with? What? Here? Nobody's looking. Poetry and mush. No other words What's for it. Sheer... See back door. Oh, 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 oh. I vote we go to your hostelry and drink a toast to a magnificent male animal, and I don't mean me. It's a bit early, isn't it? Never too early to drink a success. I say, never too early to drink a success. Am I right, Jack? Right. Yes. Well, you have to have clean glasses to suck out of first. Am I right, Jack? So I saved last night's washing up for you. And now and your mates would like to help you do it. The like. And second thoughts, I'd best get back to the shop. Yeah, and I've got to get off to work, Jack. And I've got a thumb on the jam. Hi, it's me. Uh, I can't do much. Well, Jordan wants me to go to Coventry with him to check out some merchandise for a new club he's in, so he could be a nice little learner for us, actually. Uh, I shouldn't be back late, so uh, put some bubbly on ice, is it all? <laughs> Bye, Vicky. I love you. 
Is our transport sorted out for Friday, Alec? Yes, all sorted. I hope it's something befitting our status. Well, as owners, you're expected to arrive in style. We are, I. I Stretch I, limo with a cocktail bar. Hey, what a good idea. <laughs> don't get carried away, Jack. All you need's a little minibus. Oh, I don't know so much. His firm do all the top end of the market, you know. I mean, they run all them, them big luxury liners, don't they, Alec? Not up the East Lanks Road, we don't know. On this morning, showing he'll walk it, or should I say jumping. Come Friday, we'll clean up. I say, we'll clean up. Ah, some more than others. Some are prepared to fork out more than others. Some have inside information. Ah. Some ah. were prepared to take greater risks. Oh, I see. So, to the devil the spoils, eh? I think you'll find it's to the victor the spoils. Yeah, well, I rather think I got it right first time. <laughs> so, where do we stand now? Same as we are now, making do. Look, uh, is it all right if I bring it in about half two? I'm a bit pushed today. Bring what in? A car for the service. Sorry, Jack. You'll have to book it in first. Well, I did with Don. He said if I bring it in sometime today, I can have it back about half past six. Oh, we did, did he? Ah. Uh, usual and a large and Right. Jack. Your new boss giving you aggro already, is he? Ignore him. On the contrary, he's keen to get us some decent equipment. I might some. If you're talking about me, my son, I've got more sense to put all my eggs into one leaky basket. Can you say that with a straight face when you put every stick and stone we own into Quebec? Because, my sweet, unlike the taxi driver, I know what I'm doing. Hi. Hi. My uh, wife tells me that you're staying with your lovely grandson-in-law. But you like that, eh? <laughs> it's just a temporary arrangement. I'm in a private hotel now. Small but very exclusive. Ah, Jesse Wilcox is gaff. I Megan Morgan said I saw you moving in. Huh? Uh, Megan, uh, that name rings a bell. <laughs> Miss Morgan is a highly acclaimed exotic artist. Oh, yeah, so acclaimed she did a stint behind his bar, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the big busted Welsh piece, pushing thoughts, it wrong side. I have a partiality for large ladies myself. Here, yeah, you never told me you'd seen her. Did I not, Robbie? No, I, I met her coming out of the, the job centre. Well, I didn't think there were a call for belly dancers with flabby bellies. It's theatrical, then, these digs. Full of nubile young chorus girls. Well, no, it's it's mainly your top of the bills what stay with Jesse, you know, your Brucey Forsyth, your Frankie Vaughan. Yeah, Vaughan, when did they stop there? Sometime in around the 60s, as I recall. She's got the signed photographs. Well, you've landed on your feet, Martin. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't mind a job serving champagne to thrusting young business executives. <laughs> well, I can offer you one serving chips to hairy young lorry drivers. Hardly the same, Al. <laughs> uh, no, you're right. Lorry drivers have got more manners. <laughs> right, what we have him. No more, uh, I've got oh, one. I hoped I'd find you here. Do you remember that time when you and Maureen had a night out? Oh, remember, there's a certain Greek waiter who'll never forget. Mm. I only asked him if his Dalmadis were hot. It wasn't my fault he didn't understand English. <laughs> I was thinking you might ask her again. Only there's no guarantee she'll say yes. Yeah, well, you can't expect her to be in the mood to get all dolled up right now. Hey, hang on, it's my day off. Why don't you all come round to mine? She might be a bit more inclined if it's casual. Don't let her know I had out to do with it, mind. Oh, no, we won't, Mum. Do you know, it's very good of you to care so much. I'm a mother. That's what mothers do. <laughs> uh, Detective Constable Cannon, we have met. I remember. This is uh, Detective Constable Willis. We'd um, like a word. Well, my husband isn't in at the moment. Oh, that's OK. It's you we've come to see, Mrs MacDonald. Well, a light lunch and then I'm skiving off. Where to? One of them strip clubs. Oh, you're a wicked woman, Mrs Grimes. No, no, I'm putting some time in on the allotment. By midsummer, Mavis and I will be eating our own homegrown organic salads and veg. That'll cheer you up, our Maureen. We always like to know when we're losing business. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a bit tactless of me. Think now, of it, lad. <laughs> We've enough to threat over without worrying where you buy your tomatoes. Not that I hold with this sort of therapy rubbish. But I did read somewhere that it helps to get shut of your anger if you scream at a tree. Do you more good if you screamed at Reg Oldsworth, man? Though you'd have to find him first. I'm not angry, Mother. Hi. Just to let you know, it's the inaugural meeting of the DW Club at my house tonight. What's the DW Club? Disillusioned wives. Bring yourself in a bottle, we'll expect you about seven. Have you got anything to do with this? Me? How could I have? 
I've been a widow for 20 years. I've told you, I've never met Malcolm Fox. Why on earth should I? We were hoping you could tell us. Well, I, I can't see why. What about his wife, Mrs Fox? Brenda? I've told you, I've never met either of them. Well, not even at court. Oh, well, yes, I, I saw them there. They were both there, weren't they? But we didn't speak. We had no reason to. No, of course not. I don't know why you keep asking all these questions. I thought this was all over and done with. Oh, still a few loose ends to tie up. We don't like loose ends in our business. Yes, well, Steve was cleared of these charges. They let him go. You've got no right to harass us oh, like this. No, we've every right if we're not satisfied about certain things. What sort of things? Well, and I mean, this is a, for instance, if we thought uh, witnesses have been interfered with, uh, offered inducements, Conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Yes, before. I know what it is. I'm not stupid. Oh, no, I don't think you are, Mrs. MacDonald. I think you're a very bright, very loyal young woman. Well, the thing is, I don't see how I could help you. Me and Steve have told you everything we know about this whole wretched business, and now we'd just like to forget it and get on with our lives. So I see. You're planning a holiday? We're thinking about it. Mm. I like Greece myself. Right, thanks for your time. We have to check these things. Public are always complaining about the breakdown in law and order. You wouldn't want us to sit on our backsides while the villains get away with it, would you? A nice, law-abiding young lady like you? <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, hey, keep it away, lump. I'm covered in oil. <laughs> I'm a goose gun. Oh, aye. And who sold you that then, old you posy? Hey, we were all <laughs> goosebys, weren't we? We were in the park. Oh, they were dead shy when they saw us. It was so sweet. Oh, not Phyllis and Percy again, eh? The shameless them too. <laughs> no, Claus. It was Kelly and that butcher's lad, wasn't they it? They were kissing. Oh, they oh, wasn't. Oh. Uh, what's this then? You got a new apprentice? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're only here for a minute. Aye, so that load don't bite. Even if I do draw the line at spending thousands on fancy new equipment. Come on, Rosie, let's leave you, Daddy, to work. See you later. Yeah, see ya. Not fancy new equipment. Essentially, if we can't use the air tools, we do. Yeah, everything takes twice as long. Yeah, all right, all right, you may be all right. Look, uh, have a scout around. See if you can find a compressor that won't break the bank. Fair enough. There is one other thing done. All right. What's that going to cost me? Jack's car, you told him he could bring it in for a service. Yeah, I did, yeah. Is it done? No, it's not done. It won't be done till Friday. We've got a queue before him. Well, I'll give him my word. Well, due respect, Don, I think you should check with us before you go making promises you don't know you can keep. Excuse me, but I was under the impression I was the boss round here. Yeah, and we're the ones at the shop. Yeah, and I'm the one paying the wages. Fix it. Are you good at dealing with people? Yes. Yes. Can you work on your own initiative? Yes. Yes. Can you spell? Yes. Can you make a decent cuppa? Yes. Yes. Well, all that sounds encouraging. Oh, well, it would, if them were the questions they asked, but it's... Can you use PowerPoint, Word for Window, Amipro, Lotus, one, two, three, whatever that is? Oh, it sounds like something out of the Kama Sutra. Oh, there's <laughs> spreadsheet packages, graphic packages, charts packages, send a rocket to the flaming moon packages. <laughs> Honestly, I felt like a dinosaur in there. Oh. I'll get that. Thanks. Sixteen-year-old kids know more than I do. Hi, look, Hello. come in. Steve's not here, is he? Steve? No, no, he's not. Hiya, Vicky. Hello. What's up? Um, Steve went to Coventry on business earlier and he's not back yet. He, he just must have been delayed. Sorry to disturb you. No, you're not disturbing us. The girls are coming round. You're welcome to stay and join us. No, no, it's all right. He's probably back there now, actually, complaining that his supper's not ready. I'll see you later. See ya. Oh, good timing. I was just serving up. What's the matter? That flaming garage. I'm beginning to think we've made the mother of all mistakes. Oh, come on, don't talk daft. On top of the extra expense, the lads are getting bolshy now. They just need to settle in, that's all. They're getting used to new management. Come on, Mike Baldwin did all right out of it, didn't he? So why did he flog it? We know why he flogged it, because he needed the cash. Now, don't be such a pessimist. Go wash your hands. Go on, chop, chop. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, the mood she was in this afternoon, I doubt if she'll come. Oh, I hope she does. Mm. Well, I mean, when you've been dumped like she has, all you want to do is sit at home and lick your wounds. Mm. Well, if we carry on down that road, we'll all end up on flipping tranquilizers. Mm. Or worse. I mean, you don't just curl up and die, do you? No. Hi. Come on in. Am I late? No, no, you're not late at all. Oh. Go on in. We're just about to drink a toast. Oh. Oh. Here we are. Oh. Oh. Right. To the survivors. <laughs> to, to the, the survivors. survivors. <laughs> Please don't tell anyone you saw us. It's Mr. Barlow. Why should he mind? I don't want him to think I'm a flirt. Oh, Kelly, entitled to have a boyfriend. I've told her. She should stick up for herself more. Yeah, you should. I wouldn't worry about Greetings it. Greetings, all. Oh, Nick. You want to stick up for yourself more. <laughs> the semi up rotten, I know him. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Ashley, you little devil. Who's this then? Kelly Thompson. Ah, has anybody here seen Kelly? K E double L Y. You better watch this one, love. I say you better watch this one. He's a right little Romeo. Text after his uncle. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, taking a naughty of him. Oh, for Pete's sake, Kevin! If you're going to be this miserable, I might as well go home and let Emily get off. Look, it's Brennan, isn't it? Talk about out the frying pan into the flaming fire. Well, it's your own fault. You could have been running that garage if you'd got your finger out, so don't look at me for sympathy. Get us half a lager. And a pint and half a lager, Vera. Oh! Whatever Bonnie and Clyde are having, and a double Scottish and threat, poor moi. You can both wait a minute, cos it's me next. Hang on! You can all wait when you think I am a flaming octopus. Mm. Where's his lordship then? Oh, skiving out back as fur. I said you needed more out. <laughs> I suggested you. Oh, ma'am, Vera Duck would have a trained chimp behind that bar before she'd have me. What did she say? Uh, that, more or less. Hey, excuse me, Mrs. Smedley. Oh, uh, do you need a hand, Mrs. Duckworth? Yes, uh, get yourself round this bar, get some glasses washed. Same rates as mornings. Why don't I pop over to your place one day, Squire? Help you spot a new Marilyn Monroe. Have an eye for spotting talent, me. Oh, uh, oh Vicky. Vicky, sweetheart. <laughs> nice to see you. What can I get you? I'm just looking for Steve, actually, but I think I must have missed him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody likes growing up, but once you stop fancying people. Mm. Oh, they stop fancying you. That's <laughs> even worse. You might as well hang up your clogs. Yeah, but I mean, it's not all real life, is it? That, all that tingle when he touches your stuff. <laughs> That's real life. No, I mean, it's nature's gone trick, isn't it? Just to get you going. Yeah, but the film's never as good as the trailer. No. <laughs> hey, when I first met Jim, I thought, oh, I fancy him. He was quite a hunt then. He still is. Oh. Well, it can still happen to people of our age, you know, that instant lust. Or so I'm told. Mm. The only difference is we know the pitfalls, so uh, <laughs> that doesn't always stop us. Yeah, you see, you're always more susceptible when your marriage is going through oh. a bad patch. Is that a dig at me, madam? No, I mean, come on, we've all been in that boat at one time or another, haven't we? Well, I didn't have that excuse when I got pregnant. It was lust, pure and simple. I mean, come on, two one-night stands and two kids, lousy look at oh. Yeah, but I mean, you were your kid yourself. No, I don't regret having them. It's just that I learnt my lesson early on, even if it did take me two goes. <laughs> well, what lesson was that, then? Well, if anything starts tingling, run like hell. <laughs> <laughs> but you just said when you stop fancying people, you're a strength. Yes, so it's all right, so long as it stops in your head. I mean, no nether region. Oh, <laughs> I can't build a superior. Now, I'm a, I mean, now, take Brian. Brian Bowes, you know, I'll be sure for when uh, he were mayor. Well, we had an icicle flirt, and it did my morale the world ago, but that's as far as I'd let it go. But what about Stevens and Dr. Dell? I thought you had a bit of a fling with him. Yeah, well, that was more of a fling at, really. I mean, he was smitten, I was flattered, but uh, when he wanted more, I said, no, sorry, no go. So are you saying you've never been unfaithful to Al? Oh, I know he may not make me pulse beat faster, bless him, but, do you know, he's my rock. Without him, I'd drown. Well, maybe that's the best way. I mean, I know Mike can still turn me on, but, I mean, if I'm brutally honest, I mean, I can't rely on him like you can on Alf. No, I can't with you. Well, 
Why does it always have to be one or the other? Why can't we have both? Oh. You can, if you're very lucky. <clears throat> Chop up. Yes, come hey, on. It's like group therapy. Yeah, it's 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 Has anybody else got any sordid <laughs> confessions <laughs> to make? I couldn't bear my first husband to touch me. I knew on our wedding night I'd made a terrible mistake. Oh. Was he repulsive? Oh, no, he was quite good looking, really. I was just unfair to Frank, you see, cos I shouldn't have married him. Because, you see, I was really still in love with Reg. Well, I hurt Frank and Reg hurt me. So, you see, it's poetic justice and it serves me right. Oh, no. what oh. utter garbage, no. Maureen. Now, come on. Nobody deserves what that little swine did to you. Oh, where the hell have you been? You know where I've been? Visiting Lady Godiva. Here yeah, for you from your pal. I felt all right, Wally, taking it. Look, you don't go insulting a chap who's just given you a nice fat contract, do you? Told you we'd have something to celebrate. How's that bubbly? Steve, the police have been round. That horrible man, Cannon. Oh, aye. Right. What's he want now? Try to fix me up for the great bullying robbery. He knows about the bribe! Are you flaming what? Did he say... Well, not in so many words, but... Vicky, don't do that. Don't ever give me a heart attack like that again. He knows, Steve! He knows nothing. He does! He has me all sorts of questions about money! Oh, well, he's just trying it on. You didn't tell him anything, did you? No, of course I didn't. Oh, good girl. Steve, don't patronise me. I'm your wife, not your stooge. Although sometimes I wonder. Oh, right, right, right. Look, sit down. Tell me exactly what happened. <sighs> he asked me all sorts of questions about whether I'd ever met Malcolm Fox or his wife. And, and you said no? Well, I said I'd seen them in court. <sighs> Well, of course I did. We were all there, weren't we? And then I said that they got no right harassing us like this. You've been cleared. Well, they're flaming, haven't they? Idiots. What else? He said he had every right if he thought there was a conspiracy to pervert the cause of justice. And he's right, isn't he? Uncle Nick warned me that this could happen. Oh, you haven't gone running to him, have you? No, of course I didn't. I was tempted, though. Oh, Uncle Nick suspected all along, he said, after that day in court. He's right. There was a conspiracy. We, we paid Malcolm Fox to change his statement. Well, actually, you did, sweetheart. Steve! No, I'm only kidding. We're in this together, don't we? <sighs> Maybe I should ring Uncle Nick. No, no, you don't. I'm not having him stick in his nebbing. You chuck me to the walls and enjoy every minute of it. Well, what do we do then? We do nothing. We sit tight and keep our traps shut until it all blows over. Yeah, but... No buts. Look, they've got no evidence and they're not going to get any. And Fox and his wife aren't going to admit to taking a payoff, are they? They'd be up on a flaming conspiracy charge themselves if they did. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, well, that's why you need me to think for the both of us, didn't you? Look, don't worry. I promise you, everything's going to be all right. Right. Let's crack open this shampoo, eh? There's a button missing off here. Do you put this on for my benefit or is it real? What? This act, this Mr. Cool. Oh, calm down, will you? Oh! Oi, calm down. Are you going to be Mr. Cool in strange ways as well then when you're eating off your tin plate or whatever it is they do? Well, I've no idea what they do and I've no intention of finding out. Look, why don't you go and have a bath with that stuff? Catch up on your sleep. Take the day off. Relax. Don't do this to me! You've got me involved in a really serious crime! All right, because I was stupid enough, but I am not so stupid that I'm going to let you patronise me! One day off. One day. I don't know. You buy yourself a business. You put every last penny into it that you've got and you're off to the races. Yeah, and I'm going to enjoy myself, I know. Get some fresh air. Think about something else for a change. It's been no else for days. I can't think straight. Oh, and you were thinking straight when you bought yourself a racehorse, were you? I bought, roughly, one leg. I couldn't even tell you which leg. Uh, I uh, just thought I'd check before I make a start. Uh, what about? The compressor. Mm. I suppose Bowie knew that it was knackered, didn't he? Well... When they go, they go. Yeah, well, I tell you what, look. Get on the blouse, see what you can find, see? 
I've got an idea that will pay for all this. I didn't tell you about it. Huh? What? I'm calling the minicamp lads. Josie's doing a sort of uh, leaflet like to put around them. Yeah, saying what? Well, bring your cabin. Pre-test. You see, we have to be tested every six months, you see. Yeah. Yeah, well, give them a decent rate. Get your car fettled. Breeze through test. Hey, you see, they all know me, you see. So, it's good business. Look, Don, you don't want to go around saying rates for mates. Well, get the work in. <laughs> getting working ain't a problem, it's getting it out again. We need a compressor and a decent wheel-free lift for starters. Now, shall we start phoning round? Yeah, do that, yeah. Well, that went down a bomb, didn't it? Well, you know why, don't you? Whatever he says, he thinks he ought to have bought it. But he didn't have the brass. Obvious. Yeah. yeah. All right! All right! No, Steve, it's not all right. So it's all right, you don't mind? Yes, it's okay. If you can get temping work, I'm sure they can pay you better money than I can. If? I mean, I'm very rusty. And it's all word processors these days, and I don't even know what you process them into. Same old nonsense, I wouldn't wonder. <laughs> anyway, wish us luck. I hope it goes no. all right. Thanks. Good luck. I'll be in the back. Hey, Percy. Uh oh I see they've got a new sign up, then. Where's that? Over the road. And what kind of sign? You know, the usual type. What are you talking about? Estate agent, the queer fella's flat for sale. It's been for sale for ages. Ah, well, quite right. Get a new agent on the job. You know what I mean? Not before time. A new sign? Yes, it's just been putting it up now. Maureen? I'm here. Do you know about this new sign on Reggie's flat? What new sign? Oh, I don't want to go to all that lot again. I don't. Oh. But I'm sorry I started this. Well, I'll show you. Jacko's car, has it done yet? Waiting for bits. Well, what's the problem? Well, it's chewed the ring gear up, hasn't it? It's all good just putting a new starter motor in because it just chewed that up as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll just have to tell him. Well, I don't need it anymore. Yeah. OK. About this compressor, how much can I go up to? I'm not looking to spend a lot of money, Kev. I mean, we could watch for an auction. Somebody being liquidated. Yeah, but we need it like this morning. Yeah, but this firm's going under the hammer all the time. Yeah, I know there is. We'll see what you can do. And make sure he's earning his keep and all. According to my watch, it's Friday. See, Josie. You know where he's going, don't you? The gang of them. They've got horse running at Thirsk. And you don't want to spend money on a new compressor? Well, Call priorities, innit? Well, he better not be going to Thirsk blowing my wages. Let's hope he's not blowing your job, son. Oh, stop going on at me! I want you to stand up for your rights. I don't appear to have any rights. I stood there like a fool with Mr Sugden telling me what's going on. Now? Oh, let him do what he likes. I don't care. It's his flat. I hope he never sells it. What do you mean? You want money off that man as and when he sells that flat. I don't want anything out of that man. Matrimonial home. We never lived in it. Well, that doesn't matter. You want to watch that he doesn't sell it too cheap and all. You've got an interest there. Do you think that he's dropped the price because of these new people selling it? How should I know? Ring them up. Now, 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 look, that, that is all wrong. That's a previous owner. That should have been changed. Yeah, oh, but Jockey Club will have been notified. Well, you know we well, are. have been disqualified else. Yeah, well, I did all that when we bought it. Joe's name should be down there, then. Well, I own most of Megan. Oh, yeah, but it was me that signed for it, weren't it? Anyway, next out, and it'll be there. Brackets, J. Duckworth. Oh, hey, we could enter it by a different name each race, yeah. and then we'd all get a go. Oh, One hey, race at a time. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Oh, no. oh, yeah. go. It's all right for some. Oh, it's all mad. Party for thirst. Oh, right, right, with you now, son. Come okay, on, let's go. Come on, let's get moving now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Don't you be coming back key, lad, because it's Friday now. Right, my love. You're going to wish his luck. Nice. Here we go. Here we go. Do you know, I could swing for that Billy Williams. Till he came, she were married to this bug with Betty. How do you mean? Well, she won't come now. She picks and chooses. Well, if he's stuck, I'll give you a couple of hours. I don't mind. Here, well, you don't have to ask twice. Sling the bucket. Well, I'll ring them then. No. I won't say who I am. It could be anybody. Just interested. Well, I'm not interested. Of course you are. Yes, Mother! Of course I'm interested! I'm interested in everything. Every last little detail. I want to know who she is. What she's like. What the colour of her hair is. What they do together. What she's got that I haven't got. What she does that I don't do. What he says to her. Every little thing he's ever said to her. Of course I'm interested, but I don't want to be. You don't know how bad that makes me feel. I haven't even started to say what I want to know. And I'm not going to start with that damn flood. And what he's asking for. Well, it's half yours. In my view, it's half yours. <laughs> he was supposed to be half mine. And what difference did that make? <laughs> No, I'm afraid he isn't here at the moment. Well, can I get him to call you back? Yes. Does he know what this is about? Right. OK, this afternoon. Yes. What do you want? I want you to get your coat, love. Got a warrant here for your arrest. Do you know I'm going to have to go to the doctors with these feet? They're bothering you. Shocking. If they get any worse, I won't be able to do old. Oh, I get that. All swelling up. And you know what's good? Cold tea. Do you know, my mother used to swear by that. Especially around eyes. You know, if they went all puffy like. Same thing. You want to get them in a bowl. Yeah, well, I don't know where my feet would have been if you want to stop, Tom. Well, I'm saying note. But if you want somebody regular, you'd not do better than our Judy. Yeah, but she don't need money, does she? <sighs> I can depend on them more if they do. That's just our Judy. That's the impression she gives. Sam Fairy Anne. She's a damn good grafter, I'll tell you. And they're laying folk off on Gary's line all the time. Yeah. And in Barn Horse, eh? They're all the same. Well, that's why she needs a few coppers in her own mug. Well, I tell her you'll see her. Sorry, if it's a conspiracy charge, can I ask who else you've arrested? You can ask, but as I've not so far interviewed Mrs. MacDonald, it might be a bit premature. Have you arrested the husband? You can tell me that. Yes, no, not at this time. Is anybody else named in the charge? With others at the moment. Okay. Try not to worry. I don't think I'll be keeping you long. I hope not. I've got a squash court booked. to say anything to me before we start? Do you want me to represent you as your solicitor? Fine. There's no getting around the fact it's a serious charge. Don't be under any illusions. I'm not. 
It's conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And I've never known a case where they didn't hand down a jail sentence. At the same time, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, well, it feels like it is. Well, I'm, I'm glad it does. Because now the thing is to make sure it's the end of this particular road, the road you're on. Hmm? Are you willing to make a statement to the police? I suppose, I mean, should I? Certainly should, but I don't think you should do it now. My advice is that we tell them that you're willing to come back and make a full statement at a later date. And we will discuss it very calmly before you do. The sergeant will want to ask you some questions now. I'll explain that you're willing to make a statement but need time to consider your position. You need answer no questions relating to the charge here today. So, do you understand what we're going to do? But when we get out of here, I want you... I expect you to be completely frank with me, all right? Will they let me out? They should be willing to bail you, for now. Unless they've got something really, really bad on you. Whenever the detective asks you a question, look at me. If it's all right to answer, I'll nod. If not, I'll answer on your behalf. You won't see me nodding much. All right? Ready? I'll tell you, they'll be right sorry they dropped out. Did you see him? Oh. Get on Brandy, I think he's the drink. What a good idea. He not like this. Yeah, hey, I've never seen him like boys, it. Boys, call for men, Brandy Vero. Who said that, Fred? Napoleon, were it? I think he might have been drunk. Come on, then. Hey, where's Gary? Hey, give him the drive of a gratuity. All right. Right. Yeah. Right, uh, drive. What can I get you? I was on there. Hang on a minute, lads. I think we're in the wrong pub here. I, I'm up there. She just took me on. She took any more on? Just me. You don't worry about me. I wasn't consulted. You don't no, worry about me. Good. Anyway, what I'm going, what I'm going to do, I am, I'm going to consult the customers. Right, right. Do you think she looks right. like a barmaid? She right. looks alright to me, and I fancy my chances at closing. Don't take out for granted. That's right, one, one. Then, do you think she looks like a barmaid? She look even more like a barmaid when she mentions them brandies. Hey, it's true. Ain't for me, lads. Yeah. 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 I must say, lass, as a barmaid, you're not first class. Oh. But in the lightweight division, <laughs> do. Oh. Right. <laughs> right. Six brandies. Now. Right. Six. Pick well, mine's a big one. <laughs> so come on then, how did you go on? Best day of my life oh, here. No, I tell, I tell a lie. Second best. Oh. <laughs> the best day when it is when it wins on a lead it in, I'm telling you. Do you mean you're coming here like Champagne Charlie and it didn't win? No, no, I mean if you'd have seen him there going oh, like and a jumping. Oh, oh, like it's a, a good ice, oh, isn't that? Oh, like it's a, a cracker. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I mean, next time, think you've got to come with us. We've got to get a relief in it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think you've watched it. racing, oh. but if the, you're not because of the feeling you get. You've it got is got a bit of it. It's in it. It's in it. He will go in balmy, this fella. Yes. Up and down all yeah. over the place. Yeah. That, yeah. that was yeah. only while they were parading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He gave us an outing, didn't he? Yeah, give us an outing. Was, he was up with the yeah. best yeah. of them, I know. Then what? Jockey pulled him up. Pulled him up? Yeah. yeah. Well, stop him, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. What for? Well, at first, we thought a plate had come loose. Yeah, yeah, plate. Flipping, eh? Yeah. What were it trying to do, eh? Chew a carrot or eat a, eat a piece of steak? No, 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 bit of bit of plate, no, no. To you, or shoe. Yeah. To gentlemen of the fraternity, a plate. Oh, and here's me thinking you'd bought horse with false teeth. No. Mind you, I wouldn't put it past you. No, no. You see, we think, we think, we think he took a knock on the offside floor. Yeah, offside floor. Yeah. When the jockey felt a change in his action and pulled him up quite right. Quite right. Quite right. But the horse is all right, though. No worries. So it got nowhere? No. No, no, no. no. But it didn't win any money? No. 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 But where's the difference? It didn't lose. 
it it pulled up. It didn't, it fall. didn't fall. There's a lot of difference. Yeah. 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 Hey, I'll tell, ask, ask the last to, to bring the tables. The, the, the drinks round to the uh, the, the owners. Oh, they oh, you owners in cool. Oh, <laughs> Vera, Vera, you, you, you should have been there. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, you yeah. should have jumped yeah, to one. Ah, oh, the yeah. feeling, eh? Good, yeah. 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 good little dog. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. He's having a lovely little dog. Get sat down, will you? Yeah, I found a compressor. A guy in field with some good. He might have to be there. You've got to be there to appreciate it. You'll get it for under 2-2. 2 2 Yeah, but it'll be a good one for that. You don't want any rubbish, do you, Oh, knock him down. He's looking for two. No, no, he was looking for two five. When he said two two, I said we'll have it. Have a good day at the races then. Aye. I've got the feeling it might be one of them once in a lifetime things, Kev. So we'll go and look at it tomorrow, won't Aye. And I'll go see Bank. Aye, champion. Getting to be a regular customer in here, aren't you? Well, <laughs> nobody looks after me like you do. In fact, nobody looks after me at all. Uh, would you uh, Would you like a sweet? <laughs> not at all. I shall finish off with a liqueur. Well, not in here, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> no. I shall see you tomorrow. Like as not. Bye. Bye, Alex. Well, to the room. Oh, Audrey. Do you remember? <laughs> Dimler, very dimmer. You'll have to tell him. Right, I'll phone the pair of you. Come on, we're closing. I thought you were the old romantic. It depends what my varicous veins are telling me, love. It'd be all right, though, wouldn't it, about you having friends round? Friends like? Like me. I think it's because of him being a teacher. He'd sort of be in lumber if it got out that anybody were, like, doing anything in his house. And doing what? Anything? Well, I weren't thinking like a major raver out. Just. Just. Just, you know. Come on, the pair of you. See what I mean? No. <laughs> hey, 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 though. I, I loved it when he ripped his slip up, though. Did you copy that? <laughs> eh? He turned to that big fella and said, you know him? His eyes went through a cave third. Oh, yeah. Three, oh, oh, yes. Him yeah. turns to him and he says, that's racing for you. I <laughs> ripped his slip up. Yeah. Hold it to own her, you know. Here, yeah. yeah. tell the sheik of Arabic to get behind this bounds, yeah. that bull in pine. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Duckworth, message for you. Aye, I yeah, know, I know. I, that, I, I'm going to have to leave you to it, lads. Oh, look, look. I, I know, I mean, I know we've got to be realistic. But it was a good day, wasn't oh, it? Oh, if we have a few more days like that, Jack, I'll be welcome. Right. Yeah. 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 I'll have to excuse myself. Oh, right. oh. Hey, can you yeah. make? Can I just yeah. step yeah. up there? I'll come on. Right. Right. He's dead yeah. head on yeah. 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 Hey, remind me. He went to the show and he got over there. Oh, Alec, it's lovely to see you. What can I get you? Uh, I'll have a large Irish, Vera. And yourself? Oh, well, we're not together. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, well, no, if you're looking for a bit of company, shout up. Oh, tell very much. I'll have a lager and lime and a long moan, please. So that's a large Irish and a lager and lime. And how did you know I was going to give you a long moan? <laughs> no, I was going to give you the long moan. Do you know anything about word processes? Because I don't, and it means I'm unemployable. Oh, don't. I've been battling with a computer all day. <sighs> I'm going to have to take a course. Oh, no. Once you reach a certain age, it's, it's no good. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> no, I mean, if your brain's not been brought up with computers, I mean, you need a transplant. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I did hear that. I'm, so, I'm, I'm just not thinking what I'm saying. How, how, how is she? Uh, oh. How is Dressy? She's uh, she's okay, you know. She uh, she keeps a distance. And uh, how's your granddaughter? Oh, they start off fine. It's the company they start keeping, isn't it? Hey, hello. Thanks. Thank you. You've told your Uncle Nick? How much? Everything. What for? Because they arrested me! Well, then you keep stunned. They haven't got anything. They have! What? They've been and got my account! Oh, have they? Steve, they've got to have something really serious to do that. Uncle Nick says they know when I drew the money out and everything. Well, so you, you spend money 
so what? Steve, they know something. Look, you keep blabbing and they're going to know everything. You haven't told the police anything, have you? No, Uncle Nick said not to. Oh, at least he's got some sense. All right, so you've told your Uncle Nick right, OK, but you don't tell anybody else. Steve, I think the best thing to do is to go to the police oh. and plead guilty. That's what Uncle Nick says, and I think he's right. We're not going to do that. Steve, I can see the way we're going. We're just getting worse and worse and deeper and deeper. Can you see what's happening? Look, nothing is going to happen so long as you just... He's right, Steve! He's right! Anyway, uh, I've told the police I'm going to go and make a full statement. Oh, great. And where do you think that leaves me? I'm sorry, Steve. I can see the way we're going. It's not a wonderful adventure. I just want it to stop. You know, the first thing they do when you go to the knickers is that they make you take all your clothes off. And then they put them in a box with all your little belongings. And then they walk around you in the big sensible shoes, jangling the keys, weighing you up and down, just so you know how it's going to be. And you stood there with nothing on. Is that what you want? No. Well, that's just for starters. So how did we get where, where it could happen? How? Because you keep going round telling everybody. It might not be prison. <sighs> Uncle Nick. Oh, a... Uncle Nick. Well, they'll look at your age and it being a first offence. Oh, well, it may be your first offence. So thanks very much. You don't tell them anything, you idiot. You're not going to tell them anything. I am. Oh, look, you <laughs> shit. Cal! Do you want some breakfast? I'll get me home. Steve, you've sulked all weekend. Don't you think that's long enough? I wasn't sulking. I was wondering how long it'll be before you fall apart and drop us both in the muck. You do enough talking for the both of us, Vicky. Your problem is you don't know when to keep your mouth shut. I simply told Uncle Nick the truth. Well, simple is good. It was simple, all right. He's our solicitor. He's on our side. <laughs> well, he may be on your side, Vicky, cos he's sure as hell not on mine. He never has been. He's here to represent both of us, not just me. He's just as much your solicitor as he is mine. You don't tell solicitors everything. They don't want you to do that. And what is it they want you to do, then? They want you to lie to them, do they? What they want is something to help them get you off. Telling them you're guilty is the last thing they want to hear. I can't lie to Uncle Nick. He's practically my family. He was my dad's best friend. <laughs> yeah, well, like I say, he isn't my friend. He hates me guts. Steve, I had to tell somebody. I was so worried. <sighs> well, shall I tell you what I was worried about, shall I? What else did you tell them? What did you say to the police, eh? What did you tell them when they had you I've in? I've already told you nothing! You were panicking like mad. You fell apart like a little kid. You can't talk to me like this, Steve. I am just trying to get through to you. Look, the police have got you figured out. They're using you to get to me. They put the wind up you and you start crying and start telling them things. It was an awful experience. <laughs> well, you think that was bad, do you? You want to try prison? Look, the police are bluffing. They've got nothing on us. But they will have if you can't learn to keep your mouth shut. You'll let him walk all over you, same as you always have done. Just let this drop, Mother. I'm sure Bill doesn't want to be hearing all this. I bet Bill thinks the same as I do. <sighs> have you seen that for sale notice out there? Uh, the flat across the road, yes, yes, I've noticed it. Red Dolesworth, he's put it in new hands. And he'll do the same with this shop and all. No, he won't, Mother, cos half of this shop is mine. And so should half of that flat be. Tell her. What Mother doesn't understand is, I do not want to get into a sordid wrangle about money with Reg. Yeah, I felt a bit the same when Elaine left me, like. Now, you see, Mother. The upshot was, though, I ended up with nothing. I was a fool to myself. There you are. I mean, I wouldn't have minded, but uh, who gets the benefit? The fellow that she left me for. You take notice, lady. What Reg Olswas steals off you, he'll spend on his floozy. 
I mean, when you get married, you are supposed to pull your resources, aren't you? And I think when you split up, you should share them out, right? Yes, but you see, that flat was always Reggie's. It was never our home. No. My home was your home, where Reg Olsworth lived rent free. Oh, mother! Oh, don't you mother me. <sighs> You've got to protect yourself. You get across to that agent and find out what Reg is up to. I think your mother's right. Thanks, Tommy lad. We'll have it ready for you about half twelve. All right. Yeah. You don't even know what one's doing yet. Ah, this won't be much. All the cabbies have a regular service. Anyhow, look, I want you to colour all the stops on this. You want him to go away and say, tell his mates that he's had a good job, cheap. Well, doing a special prize for him. Him and then the other cabbie. Won't be much profit to show for it then, will there? If it pays for your time, it'll serve its purpose. Uh, where's Tony? Brewing up. Oh, well, I'd like to see less brewing and more doing, eh? Hey, blimey, could have been Baldwin talking then. It's one sugar, isn't it? That's right. Is he here? Steve. No, he had some business to do. I don't suppose he's too keen on meeting me. Now that I know what he's actually up to when I defended him. Guilty as charged and bribing a witness. And I keep remembering the way he opened his eyes wide in amazement that anybody could accuse him of receiving stolen goods. Still, you've talked about this business with him, I hope. We've talked about nothing else. Good. Because absolutely the first essential is that you both appreciate the gravity of the trouble you're in. Steve says the police are just trying to frighten me into saying things. Oh, certainly they are, yes. Well, he says if we just if we just keep our heads, then the police have nothing to go on and they're just bluffing. Oh, Steve says that, does he? With all the confidence of a man who's actually already been convicted twice on criminal charges? Well, I don't think they're bluffing. I don't know what it is, but they've got something. Anyway, they'll have to disclose what their evidence is once they've charged you, which they will certainly do, Vicky. Nothing so sure. Well, Steve says... Will you start thinking for yourself, Vicky? Good God, you've got a brain? You've had an education? Stop taking your opinions from that petty thief you married. Perhaps I shouldn't have said that. But I urge you to use your head. If the police have evidence, then it's against you. It was your money, and you handed it over. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You can truthfully say that you were acting on your husband's instructions. It's not a defence, but it's an excuse, and it might get you leniency, if Steve admits it. But if Steve insists on playing the innocent, well, I fear for you, Vicky. I think you're heading for prison. Scotch us, right, landlord. Pint for our billy here, and oh, whatever you're having. Fine, fine, thanks. Have you told him? Nay, no, no, let, let, let the fellow have a sup first. I mean, he's, he's just come in. Well, as long as you tell him, love. <laughs> well, what are you supposed to tell me? <clears throat> well, you see, it's like this here, Fred. Oh, uh, cheers, cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's good, is that? <clears throat> well, well, it's like this here, Fred. Oh, give over. I tell him myself. It's this horse. Me and Billy, we can't afford it. I mean, twenty pounds for its keep week in and week out. What about me? Well, I own three shares in the damn thing. I'm forking out sixty quid week in and week out. Hey, we're pensioners. You've got your own business. Here, yeah, we'll come to that. We've got our own business, and oh, mm. I'm not happy about twenty quid a week oh, going down the drain. Do you know, it's, it's typical, isn't it? Typical. The horse loses the all start morning. What happened to the thrill of ownership? Oh eh? yes. The thrill of watching your own yes, horse yes. rump home, mate. Eh? Look, you might as well go out there once a week and stuff two ten-pound notes down the grid. The Queen doesn't start moaning when her horse goes down, you know. Yeah, but she's got more money than us. And apart from that, you're putting bets on that useless lump of a thing. Useless lump of that thing is God's noblest animal. Well, I say get rid of the useless lump. Oh, you keep saying useless lump's not stood where you are because the horse has nice legs. Jack, Jack, lad, easy, easy. They have a point, the ladies. I say the ladies have a point. I think we should call... The meeting of the syndicate tonight. Hey, old Jim. Hey, Wally, how are you? You're out, one, eh? I am out, and I'm not going back, let me tell you. <laughs> what happened then in there? Did he find you? No, it was all uh, in view of the time you spent in custody, blah, blah, blah. So that's the end of it. Well, not quite as simple as that, no. Oh, well, no. They awarded me mum costs of, uh, what yeah. was it? Yeah, 140 quid, five pound a week. Oh. For what I did to her. 
Uh -huh. I'll tell you what, I did not feel ashamed when they dragged all that up again, honestly, girl. Anyway, look, you're out now and it's all I... behind you. Uh, do you feel like celebrating? What's to celebrate, Willie? Honest to God, there's nothing at all. Look, I've been right down the bottom, rock bottom. The only place I can go from there is up, let me tell you. Yeah, you can stick with that thought. So, no sign of young Stephen, then? No. I think he's uh, got his own problems. <laughs> well, when hasn't he? Mm. No sign of Liz. Still, I didn't really expect her to show. Anyway, look, if you don't want a few jars, what do you want to do? Well, I'll tell you what, Willie, I could murder some decent trough. And I'd kill for a bath. You've just missed Uncle Nick. Yeah, I know, yeah. I saw his car outside. I hung about a bit till he went. You can't keep avoiding him, Steve. You're going to have to sit down and talk to him and take his advice. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm already getting that through you, aren't I? And he keeps coming back to one thing. He wants me to go to the police station, make a statement and admit everything. I suppose that's what he said to you this morning, right? Something like that. Well, why'd you keep listening to him then, eh? He thinks he knows the police. He hasn't got a clue for all his little briefcase and his suit. I know him. And they're trying to put the frighteners on you, hoping you'll crack. And with Nick coming on to you, well, they're not far wrong, are they? He thinks they've got evidence. But what evidence? Well, he doesn't know that, but... Well, of course he doesn't. That's because there isn't any. I'll tell you something about your nice Uncle Nick, shall I? He hates me. I know it. You know it. So he wants me inside, away from you, hoping that'll break us up. And I tell you something, it will. Please don't say that. Look, you tell the police about us and Markham Fox and that's what will happen. I will go to prison. So if that's what you want, do as your Uncle Nick tells you. Do his dirty work for him. Andy was here earlier to let me know what happened in court. They let him out, seeing as he'd spent three weeks in custody. Except the magistrate said he's got to pay me £140 compensation. That's the price of the bashing he gave me. Wonder how they work it out. I don't want his compensation. I don't want anything from him. And you're bound to keep seeing him, Liz. You're going to be bumping into each other all the time. Well, Andy says he's calm enough now, but... With Jim, you never know. You always get that feeling he might do something. I'm not going to let myself be frightened, though, Deirdre. I'm not going to run away. I wish I could just talk to him. You'd think we'd be able to do that, wouldn't you? So much of our lives together. I never could talk to him without something going wrong. So, where do you go from here? Try and begin again. Work everything. Just try and start it all over again. I felt like that. I want to do something, not just fade away, getting older and bitter and living in the past. We won't. If you egg me on, I'll egg you on. It's a deal. if this is the right place, actually. Does Alec Gilroy live here? Well, it all depends who's asking, dear. Vicky? Vicky, what, what are you doing here? Is, is something wrong? I, I really need to speak to you. Oh, well, well come in. Come in. It's, it's all right, Jessie. This is Mrs Wilcox, my landlady. Well, I always knew you liked them young, Alec, but really, it's unseemly. Not at your age. Careful. Ver, this is my granddaughter. Oh, Sandra's lass. Oh! Oh, come in! Oh, I am sorry. You should have said. Oh, I've got to be careful. It's your granddad, dear. He's a terror for the ladies. There we go. Oh, what a mess. Take my notice, she's living in the distant past. Mm. Make yourself at home, dear. You'll excuse me being a bit doubtful about you, dear, won't you? But you can't be too careful. 
I never knew that he had a granddaughter, see. Well, men are shit up, don't they? In years gone by, I have met several of his nieces. Well, he said they were his nieces. Get over. <laughs> you can usually believe about a quarter, even then she's generally got the names mixed up. Oh, she's got a look of Julie, hasn't she? Ooh, it's uncanny. Has she, Eckersley? Oh, she has. A distinct look of Julie. I worked with her, dear, when she was only a child. Well, I was myself, <laughs> barely a toddler. I've seen The Sound of Music 55 times, and I would have seen it more, only Charlie. That's my husband. Well, he, ca he can't be left on his own anymore, bless him. Oh, I got me rattling on. <laughs> you talk to Alec, and I'll make a pot of tea. Sit, sit down, love. Now, is uh, something bothering you? Well, and can you manage a vanilla slice? Of course you can. She's, she's a good sort. <laughs> like I said, she used to be a chorus girl. Now I'm 50 years ago. <laughs> Pantos and so on. <laughs> but whatever you do, don't mention dancing. Because she'll show you how she can get a leg up above her head. Rather horrible. Next thing you know, she'll be hoofing away on the piano. <laughs> Come on, Vicky. Someone's up. We're in such trouble, Grandad. Steve and I. I just don't know what we're going to do. No, no, we haven't got a choice. All it comes to, we've just got to sell that oil. Right. Who so? Nobody wants to buy a dud racehorse. Well, we bought it. Ah, we were mugs. Gentlemen, come to order, please. Hey, who said you could be chairman of this meeting? Yeah. See, as I have the misfortune to own three-eighths of the animal in question, mm. natural justice seemed to indicate that I should take the chair. Now, if you want to take oh, the chair... Get on, hang, on, hang on, hang on now, fellas. Now, we all know that the women want us to get shut of this horse now. Right? Are we going to give in to these women? Are they going to... Are we going to do everything they tell us? Well, yes. Yes. Pathetic. They're under the thumb, Jack, except you and me. Oh, well, I'm for keeping the horse and trying to improve it. Oh. Well, we could geld it, couldn't we? Get rid of its what's it's, you know. It? Now, I've heard it makes them run faster. It won't make me run faster. It would if they're trying to catch you. Uh. No, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. How much is this going to cost? No, we do it ourselves. So it is a pair of bricks. Oh, oh I bet that hurts. Well, if you keep your thumbs out of the road, it doesn't. <laughs> Look, it's already been gelded. I'm surprised you haven't noticed well, it. Billy, I don't make habit of crawling underneath horses. Gentlemen, can we make some progress? Now. We're all agreed it won't be easy to sell this horse as a racehorse. No. You reckon we could sell it for little kids to ride? No. I see only one possibility for this horse, gentlemen. Export. We could sell it to Belgium. We like slow horse races there, then, do they, in Belgium? <laughs> <laughs> no, they like horse meat. So all we can do now is wait for the police to come round. It's just dreadful. Have you told me the lot? Because if you've kept anything back, I'd rather know it now. Oh, well, that's everything. Well, it's enough. By hell, Vicky, this is a right mess. I know, you always warn me that Steve was trouble. And I suppose now you're going to tell me I should have listened to you and it's my own fault. Well, there'd not be much point, would there? Anyway, it's not all down to Steve, this mess. He didn't have to fall in with his schemes. No. Anyway, let's just concentrate on getting you out of trouble before we sit back and have inquests about how you got into it. I don't know how we can get out of this. Well, I'll do whatever I can. I'm on your side, love, now you know that. <laughs> Thank you, Grandad. And if you want my advice, you'll do exactly what your Uncle Nick tells you to do. Because as far as the law's concerned, he's the pro. The rest of us are just amateurs. And in my experience, amateurs get your notebook brief. That's very true, Alec, as well I know. Amateurs, they've been the ruin of more than one profession. I always say if a thing's worth doing, it's worth doing for money. Thank you. Bye, love. 
Hey, you've been long enough. I've just about given you up. Yes, well, I went to see the solicitor, you know, after I'd seen the estate agent. And he's told the estate agent that he wants a quick sale, that he's the sole owner, and that he's got vacant possession. I knew it. What did the solicitor say? Well, he thinks that Reg is going to sell the shop, claim half the proceeds, but that that flat is entirely his and I get nothing. I just makes me so angry thinking about it. And about time, too. For years you've made excuses for that man. You even made excuses for him when he got himself a girlfriend. Said it must be partly your fault. You're too soft now, Maureen. Yes, well, not anymore. I'm going to stick up for myself. I'll give him vacant possession. What are you going to do? I'm going to ring Bill Webster. I'm going to ask him to take you home in a taxi and see you into the house. And then I'm going to move into that flat. And from now on, that's going to be my marital home. And if Reg wants me out, he can damn well pay for it. Oh, I couldn't fancy eating house made myself. Oh, they're beautiful creatures, aren't they, Isis? <laughs> Little lambs are beautiful, come to that, but they make cracking dinners. It's chacun à son goût. I dare yeah. say it is. What does that mean? Friends, for you be right with me and I'll be right with you. I'll tell you what, Betty is not going to like this. It was Betty's blooming fault we bought the horse in the first place. I mean, but Betty's hot shot. It put us all in mind of Betty's hot pot. Right, right. Well, now we're talking about Belgian hot pot. It's all part of nature's recycling chain. We've been paying out for Thor's to eat, now Thor's is paying us back. Ipso facto. I once set octopus in Spain with our Vera. Didn't know till after. What's that got to do with it? No, I was just, I'm just oh, saying. Oh, come on, gentlemen. Now, please, stick to the point. Come on, there's money at stake. Now, this way, we can stop the outflow and at the same time have a little bit of inflow. You're right. I'm for Belgium. Hey, hang on. Dinner time you were saying that the horse was God's noblest creature. We're all God creatures, Billy. We've all got to go one time or another. See, they use horses for pet food. They use horses for glue. Better still, in my opinion, and I am an expert mind, if they end up giving some honest Belgian citizen a tasty hot dinner. Yeah, well, my order is waiting on with a tasty hot dinner for me, I hope. Why don't we just take a vote? I have a motion for a vote. Right. My three say Belgium. And me. And, and me. me. Can we have it unanimous, gentlemen? I go on. No, I vote against it. Sorry, you're outvoted, Billy. Ten to one. I'd like to say something here. I'd like to say that we keep this between ourselves. Just say we've decided to sell. Because they can be funny beggars women, you know. Right. Hey, good thinking, landlord. I say, Alf, I think we might have a recruit for the rectangle in Jack, eh? Ah, uh, likely. Anyway, I'm off and I'll tell you something and all. I'm not going to say anything about this to Audrey because I want to sleep in a bed tonight. Hey, what about you, Billy? <sighs> say no to Betty, eh? Well, all right. I'll keep it to myself for a bit. But there'll be eruptions later. Ah, but by then it'll be too late. We'll have a bit of cash, won't we? Yeah. Anyway, it's their own fault. It was them that said we had to get shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. This is very good of you, this, Bill. Uh, my pleasure, love. Thank you, Bill. You're a gentleman. Will you be all right tonight, then, Mother? Of course I will. Get yourself some food, won't you? Am I doing the right thing? I mean, it does seem a bit childish, this, in a way. Reg Holdsworth has forced you to it. He's childish. You've got to play him at his own game. Well, I'm certainly not going to let him sell this shop from under my feet, not after all the hard work I've put in. And you as well. That's the spirit, love. Mm. Ask yourself, why should Reggie's floozy get the benefit? Are we ready, then? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bye-bye. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. Now, make yourself comfortable in the flat. Yeah. Look upon it as your own. The old me should have made for you. All right. Bye. Bye, Bill. Bye, love. Do these again, Mrs. Duckworth, will you, love? OK. Now, listen, uh, is our chap telling me truth? You've got somebody to buy that horse. That's right, love. Dear two, it won't be our problem. Somebody else can get their teeth into it. Oh, good. Uh, hey, listen, I don't want any moaning. That horse has got to go, and that's right. Right, love. <sighs> Tell you what, Jack, all that talking's made me feel hungry. I reckon I could tackle a pie. Coming up forever. Oh, cheer up, Billy. 
I bet you had some strange stuff in war. I say, I bet you had some strange stuff in war. Ah, oh, well, some of that meat you didn't know whether to harpoon it or back it into a pair of shovels. <laughs> there you are, then. Hey, uh, Fred, Fred, um, um, when, when you were saying uh, about the rectangle... Pardon? Uh, when you were saying about the rectangle, the square dealers, could you, could, you, could you get me in, Mike? Yeah? Everything's possible for the right kind of man. Pies on the house. I tell you, you are the right kind of man. Ah! <laughs> Oh, now then, now, Ashley. Oh, I see you've got the girlfriend with you, you little monkey. Now, be good, and if you can't be good, be careful. <laughs> Bye, Ecky Why doesn't he drop dead? You work for him, don't you? Yeah, he's my uncle. Has he really got someone lined up to buy this horse, or is it all big talk? No, it's right enough. He's got a pulling trader who's got connections with Belgium. What's it got to do with Belgium? Well, they eat horses over there, don't they? That's what he's selling it for. Horse meat. <laughs> yeah, OK. Oh, look, another member of the Butchers' Union. Morning, Don. Morning. I hope you're proud of yourself, sending a poor defenceless horse to be slaughtered. Shut up, will you? I didn't tell her. It would have big mouth assistant uh, of Fred Elliott. Never mind who told me. You can't deny it, can you? Neither of you. Look, we'd like to have kept it, to race it and everything. We just couldn't afford to. So why did you buy it? Because we were drunk. Cos we didn't know the ins and outs of keeping a racehorse. We it all add up. Oh, so because you lot were daft and drunk, the poor thing has to die. Well, I think it's disgusting. Oh, it is. It is. Now, will you get on this bike? Right, then, I'm off. Oh, morning. Good morning. Oh, and I bet he hadn't told you, has oh, it? Oh, leave it alone, no, will you? No, I won't. Tell me what. Betty's hot shot. You know they're selling it to someone in Belgium? Yeah. Well, the fellow that they're selling it to happens to be a mate of Fred Elliott's, and he wears a striped apron. So work rest out for yourself. Now, will you come on? I was going to tell him. I don't think I'm going into work today. I won't be able to concentrate. Yes. Are you listening to me, Steve? You're not going into work well, don't then? I'm not either. Not now I've got this. What is it? It's a piece of paper that gets me into Strange Ways prison. But don't worry, it gets me out again as well. What for? It's a visiting order. I'm going to go and see Malcolm Fox. Find out what's going on. Do you think he'll know? Well, if he doesn't, then the police have just been making it all up and they've got nothing to go on. Either way, it's worth having a word with him. Well, supposing... supposing he confessed, supposing he told the police everything? Well, why would he? What's in that for him? I don't know. But, well, if he did, he's not going to tell you, is he? Quite honestly, Steve, I think going to see Malcolm Fox is going to do us absolutely no good whatsoever. Well, according to you, your Uncle Nick's been going on about how I've been doing nothing. How I've been leaving you to face all this by yourself. Now I am doing something, all I'm getting is a load of abuse. It was just that it was Malcolm Fox who got us into this mess in the first place. Yeah, so he can get us out of it. Or would you prefer me to throw this in the bin? I mean, tell me, I'll do whatever you want. I don't I just want it all to end and things to be like they were. And so say all of us. I'm going to phone him. See what's the earliest I can see him. Oh, that's the key for the front door. Yeah. Now that's for the alarm once you get inside. Grand. Right. I'll give you a shout when I've done it. If anyone says what you're doing is illegal, tell them what he did to her was a hundred times worse. Hey, hey, don't mention anything illegal. I don't want to know about that. Thanks, Bill. Right. She's following your example. My example? Having the locks changed to stop her husband getting in. Yes, well, it's not the same situation. I hope not. All my husband did was come through a window. Is he still in prison or is he out yet? <coughs> He's out. Yes, that's 170, please. That'll happen. He'll have learned his lesson. Hey, this is Jim we're talking about. Hiya. Oh, hi. Are you not working? No, nah, nobody wants me. Oh, well, come round. I'm in all morning. Oh, right, I will. Um. Any sightings yet? No, but I shouldn't think it'll be long. This Reg was never violent towards me. I suppose I should be grateful for that. Supposing this is Malcolm Fox trying to get another 6,000 out of us? Come again. Well, supposing he did tell the police everything? Yeah. So that he can ask us for more money, for which in return he can say to the police he's sorry but he's made another mistake? You mean, would we pay him? Well, would we? Well, like you keep telling me, it's your money. It's blackmail. This could just go on and on. 
Well, we don't know yet, do we? Let's just wait and see what he says first. I'll see you this afternoon. I think I might invite Grandad round. What? Just for some company. Oh, no, please. I've had enough of him. I don't stop me you seeing your family. You can't stop me seeing mine. Vicky, I can't stand him and he can't stand me. Well, you're not going to be here, are you? I said no. There's no need to look so worried, Deirdre. I'm staying here as a guest of Mr. William Webster, flat I'm... number three. I'm not worried. I'm just a bit surprised, that's all. How's my wife? She's all right. Mm. Heard she's hit the jackpot then, has she, eh? I got a pair of 140 quid compensation. Really? Mm. Still not to worry. I'm sure I'll bump into her one of these days. That is, of course, unless she wants me to move away completely. That way she won't even have the sight of me to offend I'm her. sure all Liz wants is that there shouldn't be any more unpleasantness. Unpleasantness? Oh, God, no, we have to avoid that. Oh, yeah. oh, unpleasantness, certainly not. I mean, lying, deception, driving a man nearly out of his mind. No, no, we're used to that, aren't we? After all, that's been the basis of my marriage from the start, hasn't it? Unpleasantness? Oh, it's to be avoided at all costs, I would say, eh? Hey? Oh, morning, Betsy Love. Morning, Vera. Morning, Betsy Love. Don't you good morning me. Not after what you've been up to. What's the matter, Betsy? Sending that lovely little horse to its death. Should be ashamed, no, the lot no, of you. No, you know, you don't, you don't know all the facts. Oh, you yes, see. I do. I heard them from my husband, who I am very glad to say still has a conscience <coughs> and wants to tell his wife the truth and not tell her lies. Oh, does he? I wish he warned the rest of us about that. You never should have bought that lovely little horse if you didn't intend looking after no, it. Look, Betty, do us a favour. I mean, have a go at your Billy if you want. You're entitled to. You're married to him. But don't say now when our Vera's about, will you? You're not telling any lies, not if I'm asked. No, not if you ask. You'll be, 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 because she, she's keen on mm. animal welfare, mm. you see, and I'm just trying to avoid upsetting her. We all know what you're trying to avoid. <laughs> hey, Betty, I thought you were coming through. I've got kettle on. Yes, I'm coming through just now. I'm just having a word with your Jack, you know, all right. about the hot pot. Now, that's the security lock, is that? That'll even keep estate agents out. All right, thanks. Listen, could I just ask you one more really big favour? Could you lend me a ladder and a hammer so I can knock that sign down? Don't need knocking down, does it? Hmm? It blew down, didn't it? Without anybody laying a finger on it. Do you remember that, uh, do you remember that high wind we had last night? Well, it reached gale force in parts of Weatherfield. Especially just round this corner. <laughs> so, what did we find when we came in this morning? The wind had blown it down for us. <laughs> well, at least it will have in a minute. <laughs> How did he look? Usual Jim. And did he say anything about prison? What it was like? Well, we didn't get much chance for a conversation, you know. He was coming out as I was going in. But he looked all right. <sighs> well, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I'm not wanting to see him. It's just... Well, after 20-odd years, you can't help wondering how somebody is. Crazy, though, isn't it? I'm the one who put him in prison, and now I'm worrying what it might have done to him. He seemed, um... spirited. You mean he was rude to you? Yeah. Huh. Must be all right, then. The cops have had Vicky in. Asking her all sorts of questions. And you want to know why? I do, yeah. You haven't told them about, you know, uh, our little arrangement, have you? No. Nope. Because if you have, I'll kill you. No, you won't, Stevie. Don't come all over Matthew. It really doesn't suit you. No, it wasn't me. I haven't said a dicky bird. Well, who else, then? Brenda. Brenda? Yeah, the missus. You can go and kill her if you like. In fact, you'd be doing me a favour. You mean... she told him about the money and everything? Everything. Which I concede is a little unfortunate for you. 
she did it to get at me on account she found out I was uh, seeing this other lady. You are joking. No. You mean to say we're going to get stitched up? Me and Vicky might get done for conspiracy all because you've been having a bit on the side. Afraid so. But I'm going to get done as well. You're not the only one that's going to be suffering. Well, you've got to stop her. Have you been listening? She's already done it. She's told the cops. They know about the money, everything. Well, they can't prove I had anything to do with it. Yeah, well, you tell them that and the best of luck to you. Because according to my learned colleagues in here, if they make this stick, we're looking at two years minimum. <laughs> Steve's gone to strange ways to visit Malcolm Fox. He's the man that he bought the stolen whiskey from. Yes, yes, I understand who he is. What I don't understand is why Steve's gone round to see him. I think he's hoping that Malcolm may know what's going on. Well, could it be Malcolm who told the police about the money? Suppose it, suppose it was. Do you think he's going to tell Steve that? You know, the more I hear about this husband of yours, the more convinced I am I've got him wrong. I had him down as a smart operator. No oh, deceitful, a liar, not to be trusted, but I did think smart enough to keep out of trouble. From what you've told me, I don't think he is all that smart. I think he's just frightened. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. Well, at least by going to see Malcolm Fox, he's doing something. Yeah, and you know what he's doing? What? Trying to find the easy way out. Whereas what I want to know is, supposing he can't find it, supposing he has to take the hard way out. What hard way? Well, admit that it were all he's doing. Tell the police that whatever you did, you did under his instruction. Because that's the truth of it, yes? Yeah. And will he stand up and say that, do you think? To save me? Yeah, I think he will. <laughs> is he here? Can you see him? No. And if it worries you, we can go somewhere else. Well, then he'll have won, won't he? No, no, I'm coming in here as often as I like. I'm glad to hear it, love. Thanks, Betty. <laughs> Two pints, please, Jack. Pints coming up, son. By the way, Jack, does Vera know? Will you leave it alone? I'm only asking. Does Vera know what? That you're part of a gang plotting to smuggle fresh horse meat into Belgium. Oh, don't look at me. I didn't tell her. Judy, love, it's not like that, is it? Oh, well, what is it like, then? So, well, the horse isn't cut out to be a racer. It, it's got a disability. Yeah, it, yeah. It likes watching other horses win. Mm, yes, so rather than have the jockeys flogging it with the whips, the humane thing to do would be having it put to sleep and get rid of all its troubles. Ah, uh, yeah, well, he still hasn't said whether Vera knows. No, she doesn't. Are you going to tell her? No, she isn't. Oh, I don't know why you're all so rotten. Have you got no feelings for this poor horse? Oh, yes, I've got a lot of feelings. Oh. I've got a feeling he's going to bankrupt the lot of us if we don't do something about it. There you are, Doug. Thank you, Thank Betty. You. OK. So what do I say to him when I do finally bump into him? Oh, yeah. Now, was it inside, then? Good to see you out. <laughs> I don't know. Just... Just say whatever it is you want to say. Don't you ever come near me again. If you do, I shall phone the police. Ah, uh, yeah, perhaps it's best if you say nothing. Just wait and see what he says. Enemy! We're not expecting him, were we? <laughs> okay. Hey, Daniel. You behaving yourself? Of course he is. Barring one or two little accidents. <laughs> I see, yeah, yeah. Right, well, uh, the reason I've come back is there's something I meant to talk about this morning. I completely forgot. Next week. Yeah. Um, Supposed to be going away on a course three days at Keele University, which means two nights. And you want me to stay here? If you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I'll pay you, of course. Great, I'd love to. Really? Yeah, it'd make a nice change. Oh, that's marvellous. Thanks, Kelly. It's a great way to have my mind. We'll get up to all sorts, won't we? Might even stay up as late as seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, well, we'll sort out the details later, just as long as I can tell them I'm OK for the course. The place of English and the core curriculum. <laughs> Should be a laugh a minute. <laughs> right, well, I'll be off then. Bye-bye, Daniel. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye-bye. <laughs> right, bye. Bye. Just got to make a quick phone call. <coughs> tell... Perhaps I shouldn't have got Bill to knock that sign down. I hope you're not going soft now, Maureen. Well, it's vandalism, isn't it? My husband leaves me, I turn into a vandal. You'd be within your rights if you turned into a murderer. 
Never mind a vandal. Anyway, nobody's going to know that you've done it. Where have you put it? It's out in the yard. Oh, the bin men will take it. Emily? Oh, hello. <laughs> Percy said you were here, and he, uh, I want to ask you a favour. Oh, the answer's yes, whatever it is. Oh, right. Well, I'm uh, going away for a few days on a course, so Kelly's staying over a couple of nights to look after Daniel. Oh, well, as long as you're not asking me to... Oh, no, 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 it's just that, uh, well, in case Kelly should need someone to call on, you know, if, uh, well, if, if, for instance... The lights fuse. Exactly. Can't you call on you? Well, it wouldn't do any good, because I don't understand fuses. But Mr Sugden does. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> so I could send him round. In fact, if you could arrange for the lights to fuse, it'd probably be the highlight of his year. <laughs> well, I've eaten horse meat before in Spain. It weren't that bad, either. Yeah, but you're an oldie then, aren't you? You do hope when you're an oldie, don't you? He won't say ten hard-boiled eggs. Yeah, I did. <laughs> for a bet, like. Well, I still think it's a mean trick. I mean, all right, you've accepted the fact that you can't afford upkeep, but I, I would have thought you would have sorted that out right yeah. from the start. Well, it would have been, except they're all drunk. Well, I mean, why does it have to die? Why can't you just sell it to someone else to raise? Yeah. Look, it's not as easy as that. It could take months, even if we could find somebody. We're just trying to find the best solution all round. Well, I still think it's a mean trick. Otherwise, why'd you keep it such a secret from us? I don't know. Because we didn't want to get nagged. Yeah, well, you're going to get nagged now. You're going to get nagged and nagged until he turned your mind. Oh, Betty, darling. Hello, love. I'll be with you in a minute, love. Uh, yeah, I'll get that, Betty. Uh, OK, love. Fine, is it? Please. OK. Billy, Billy, a word, please. Elvira doesn't know about the horse, and I don't want to tell him. All right? Yeah, right. Is he trying to flog you somewhere? Oh, no, 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 no. It's men's talk. <laughs> And uh, do you want another drink? Say it again, please. Right. Joe Parks, Jacko. See you, lad. How's it going? It's good to be back, Jacko. Nice to see you, V. Hey, bet you fancy a drink, eh? Yeah, I was, uh, I was forever waiting for the bar to open in that place, you know, but it never, never quite did, you know. <laughs> Some of your hello horses, Liz. I just want a quick word. You know? Don't worry, dear, yeah. Just want a word, OK? Hello. Hello. Look, uh, I've got to pay you uh, some compensation, Elizabeth. Uh, 140 quid. Yeah, I uh, don't want it, thank you. <laughs> well, you should try telling the court that. Yeah, uh, listen, uh, we shouldn't make this a big thing every time we... every time we bump into each other. Um, so I'm sure we can both be civil. I don't think I've ever been anything else. No. Well, you'll find me the same from now on. And uh, there's all this financial stuff we ought to be sorting out, you know, but if it's all the same to you, I'd rather wait a wee while, you know, let the dust settle. I agree, yeah. Right. Well, there you are now. Uh, see you, right? You're here, are you? I am, yes. I told you I was inviting Grandad round. Well, I'll take it you've told him, then. Told him what? Oh, come on. If you mean has she told me about your sordid little conspiracy, then she has, yes, told me all about it. I'm sorry, Vicky, I'm not sitting here watching him bully you. Hey, 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 you're in my house now. Yeah, paid for by whose well, money? not yours. You just couldn't keep your mouth shut, could you? I had to tell somebody. Of course you did. And in all that she's said, there's not been one word against you. Not one, right? You may not know it, but you've got the most loyal, trusting wife there's ever been. I think she's proved that by the lengths she's gone to to save your miserable skin. Grandad. I'm sorry, I know you think I'm speaking out of turn. But I'm not having him pointing the finger at you. He's not. Oh, well, I hope not. Well, I take it you want to know what he said. I mean, I presume you know... know who he is? Yes, I do. So, come on, what did he say? Well, uh, the trouble is with Malcolm is that he's not like me. He's not faithful to his wife. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you see, he's had a bit on the side. His wife's found out, so by way of revenge, she's told the police about the money that Vicky gave to him. The police know everything. Everything, yeah. And what do you propose to do about that? Well, I don't know. Do you have any ideas? Oh, yes, I have one. 
And that's you go to the police and you make a clean breast of it. Oh, yeah. In particular, making it clear that whatever Vicky did, she did because you told her. So I can go inside, then? And won't you just like that? It's not a question of what I would or wouldn't like. Me? Inside? So you can spend as much time as you like coming round here and working on Vicky, turning her against My me. only interest is on saving my granddaughter. <laughs> yeah, from me. From serving a prison sentence on your behalf. Would you stop it, the pair of you? I would rather go to prison than listen to the pair of you attacking each other all the time. OK. So the police know that we bribed Malcolm Fox? Yeah. Well, isn't the next move down to them? He's going away for three days and two nights, so I'm moving in here to look after Daniel. Do you want to? I don't mind. It'd be nice to get away from my mum and dad for a bit. Though I won't be able to go out on them nights. No, no. Though it wouldn't stop somebody coming round here, would it? Well, do you want to or not? Yeah. Will you be able to? What will you tell your mum and dad? I don't know, but I know I'll think of something. <laughs> Right, come on, Wally, let's make a start on this new job. By heck, you're keen on, aren't you? You lost your taste for beer while you were inside. Yeah, it's not the problem with the beer I've got. It's the company I could do without. Come on. All right, hang on a minute. We looked at me. Like I was somebody you used to know, but didn't know any longer. I didn't want to know any longer. There's a lot happened. Yeah, but when I left him before, that time I lived at the Queen's. Yeah. Well, I always got the feeling it were never over between me and Jim. You know, I always felt that we had unfinished business. And now? Now I don't know. Right, then. You fit, Willie? Yeah. Go on ahead. I'll fit. Hi, Billy. Are you ready for another? I am, as a matter of fact. Oh, two pints, then, please, landlord. Do you realise the kind of fella you're buying ale for? How do you mean? The kind of fellow that tells his wife all about the horse. Well, I couldn't help it. Look, I'm not like you two, you know. I'm a newlywed. So? I lied to my missus second day after the honeymoon. Well, you know. Well, let's see how well you can allow to her after all these years, shall we? No, yeah. no, better, better, what? you promised. I know, until I heard all them rotten things you said about my husband. Here yeah, what? It is false alarm, false alarm. I think Jack wants to tell you something about that little horse. You know, Betty's hot shot. <laughs> He's already told me, Betty. They're sending it over to Belgium to race. Uh, Apparently on continent, you know. The race is a lot slower, so it'll have a better chance. <laughs> Blimey, even I couldn't have thought of that one. Why? What's the matter? Nothing. That horse will never run the length of your backyard. Many it lands, it's good if it's through. Good. Courtesy of a friend of Fred Elliott's. No. Is this true? No, no, it's true. It is going to Belgium, but which is a very nice, very civilised country. Yeah, well, they've got a taste for horse flesh. Jack! Well, I don't know what's going to happen to it once it gets there, do I? Yes, you do. Because you're one of them that signed its death warrant. You <laughs> rotten... We are, we are. I mean, at least we could own up to that. You... Thanks a bunch, pal. You rotten lying toad, you! you... It was Fred Elliott's idea, weren't, weren't it? Definitely, weren't it? Yeah. And, and he owns most of it. Yeah. Yes, well, I'm not wed to Fred Elliott, am I? I'm wed to this big lump of meat. I don't know why they don't you cart you over to Belgium. See how they like some scrag ends for a change. <clears throat> I won't rest until I know this is sorted out. It will be. It will. And you know what I expect from you, don't you, if it comes to it? I expect you to step forward and tell the police that it was all your doing. Nothing to do with Vicky. I want you to make that quite clear. Your doing. And so any consequences, you're the one that's going to face them. Well, I think that's between me and Vicky, don't you? You've got a cheek, you well, have. Ladies. I'm not just going to stand by and watch, you know. If I find you're hiding behind her, if I find out you're letting her take the blame... He won't do, Grandad. He won't. I want to know what happens. And you will do, I promise. Look after yourself. Yeah, you too. Can't be good for him, you know, getting worked up like that at his age. Never mind, Grandad. What about everything else? What are you going to do? Well, it's not down to me, is it? Well, yes, I think it is! Vicky, it's you the police are interested in. It was your money. And they can prove that. It was your money that you gave to Brenda. So, you see, I don't come into it, do I? Hey, I've uh, just made some toast. Do you want some? I uh, thought we could go to work today. 
Business as usual. Yeah, just brush everything under the carpet. Sorry, Steve, I can't do that. I've got far too much on my mind. Yeah, you didn't sleep very well, did you? I was thinking of the other way out, actually. I flee the country, somewhere where they haven't got an extradition order. You are. And then I thought, would you come with me? But that's an unfair question, isn't it? Because you've done nothing wrong, have you? It's me the police are after. Yeah, I laid it on a bit thick, didn't I? I'm, I'm sorry. I just, when I get desperate, I say stupid things. What, are you saying you didn't mean it? Yeah. No, no well, um, I'm just not very good with words, am I? It just all comes out wrong. I was just trying to make you see sense, I suppose. See sense? Oh, how many times have I heard that? Only the thing is, Steve, your sense just seems to differ from everybody else's. Yeah, well, maybe it comes down to a matter of loyalty. Have you ever thought of that? What I mean is, who do you choose? Me or your family? And before you say you haven't got any, let me just correct you. Your Uncle Nick, Grandad, a damn sight more family than I've got. Don't twist things. It's me that's in trouble here. Yeah, and wouldn't you just love it to be me? Well, wouldn't you? No. Why? Why, Vicky? Because you'd go to prison. Oh, and what's wrong with that? Useless Steve, the man they all told you not to marry. Be a relief, wouldn't it? You'd be happy. Your family... Oh, shut up! Oh, Vicky, please. Don't let them turn you against me. If, if I haven't got you, I haven't got anybody. Yeah, it's a, it's a sort of whistling noise when I turn the blower on. I wouldn't bother normally, but I'm going away for a few days. Yeah, it's probably your boat what needs sighting. Uh, how far are you going? Keele University, of course. It's uh, not too far, I suppose, but far enough for a non-mechanical like me. Yeah, well, how does this afternoon sound? A bit busy at the moment. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Um, couldn't give it a quick once over while you're at it, could you? Make sure nothing in danger of dropping off. Uh, go on. I'll do my best. Thanks, Kevin. See you later. Yeah, see you now. Bye. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Uh, where's Ken, Mom? I won't let to do this for him. Said I'll uh, do it this afternoon. Uh, he'll be lucky. Hey, yeah, three cabs. Two full service and one the time is up the shoot. When for? Soon as boss. Cab driver's cab. Time is money. <laughs> Sorry, Don. They're going to have to wait the turn like everyone else has to. Whoa. Barlow's getting his. He's not waiting, is he? He's getting his this afternoon. Yeah, well, that's two minutes of a job, isn't it? I mean, the full service takes hours. If you knew anything about cars, you'd know that. I know about cars, Kevin. Yeah, driving them. What do you know about fixing them? Huh. Every man to his trade, eh? Yeah, well, like you said, there's no money in taxes. Why do you think Baldwin never touched it? Well, he hasn't got my influence, has he? Look, Kev, I've got the lads interested. If you give them a, a swift turnaround and a fair rate, you can forget about these tin pot jobs. Excuse me, Don, it's the tin pot jobs what's kept this place going. Oh, Kev, look, I've promised I'm supposed to be the boss round here. Yeah, well, when Baldwin was in charge, you know. Oh, I'm sick of hearing about Baldwin. Look, I'm sorry if I trod on your chores, but I want them cabs done. Okay. As soon as the gear arrives, I'll get stuck in. How's that sound, boss? What would they say if I went and admitted everything? They'd say I was lying just to save you. I can't win either way, can I? But it would be the truth, wouldn't it? Yeah, but it would be my truth. Steve McDonald's. Who's going to believe Steve McDonald? They'd left me out at the police station, Vicky. But you, what could they do to you? A girl in love with a husband, willing to do anything for him. Slap wrists, yeah, maybe, but but that's all. I don't know that. Well, you wouldn't bet against it, I'm telling you. See, you did it for love. To save me from going down. You see what sense I'm making? Or oh, there's the alternative. Your granddad's alternative. Well, that doesn't even bear thinking about, does it? See, you just got to keep reminding yourself of what's important, Vicky. Me and you, staying together. I'll see you later.
You were keeping me in the dark again, weren't you, old flaming street you before I did? You didn't want the arse, fair. It was you that gave me a rollicking for getting it, remember? Sneaking about like a flaming assassin. Shame on you. Yeah, well, I was saving your feelings because I know how sensitive you are. Anyway, there's no cut and dried, is there? Yeah, well, that arse will be cut and dried when the Senate's to Belgium, won't it? Murdering a race horse. Do you know you let me sick Jack Duckworth? Just a couple of contradictions there, Vera. Number one, we are not murdering it. Number two, it's not a race horse. It's more like a flaming cart horse. Well, let it pull carts then. Why kill it? Morning. Is it tea still hot? I should make a fresh pot. Vera, you can't get sentimental over blood stock. If the horse can't perform, it's got to go. Well, you can't perform, but I'm not killing you. Billy's killing that now. If you think he's part of this, you're wrong. He's not. No. Did you hear that, Jack? It's you and Billy against that Fred Elliot. Fred has got the majority share, right? He's got three eights. Me and Billy have only got two eights. Well, Don Brennan, then, and that Gary Mallet. How many eights is that, Betty? Oh, for search me. Right, what are we going to do if we keep it, eh? Donkey rides in the park. Have it stuffed and put on the fireplace. You're not thinking, woman. <laughs> What's wrong with your present, exactly? Full of tatty theatricals? No, oh, only meant to be temporary till I get my own place, you know, Rita. <laughs> hey, talking of places, I believe next door's up for sale. Reggie's flat, yet? Yeah. You're not thinking of buying that. Mm, reconnoitering, Rita, just reconnoitering. But why round here? It's not as pretty as Southampton, I'll bet. Ah, well, that's where you've got it wrong. You see, it's not what you take in with your eyes. It's what you feel in here. Back among me own. Folk I love and respect. I've travelled the world and I tell you, Rita, there's no warmer spot than Weatherfield. Did a lot of Arctic cruises, didn't you? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yes, love. Pack your drawing pins, please, Rita. Drawing pins, eh? And then to prick your conscience. That's 55. Bye, Alec. Uh, 55, love. You upsetting your relatives again? I haven't said a word. You don't mind if I browse a bit, do you? Give me relative a chance to fall under a bus or something. Do you know, Alec, we're just saying how nice it is to be back amongst his own. Oh, flat, I'm glad I found you. I'd like a little word with you about our four-legged friend. Oh, I'm not interested. I have enough trouble with Audrey already. Why do you think I'm buying frozen dinners? No, no, I've come round to your way of thinking. Maybe there is a solution. Yeah. The flogging it for us, mate, you mean? Oh, Fred Elliott's already suggested that, Maud, love. I've not said yes, I've not said no. Now, he is the majority shareholder and I'm a Democrat. Yes, but he's only the majority shareholder for now, isn't it? If we put all our eights together, our eights are going to be more worth more than his eights, aren't they? To do what? One ninety-nine. Please. Well, I don't know. I was hoping you might come up with an idea. Well, I haven't. Ask the horse. He might think of something. Now, look, Jack, don't you repeat this because I shall deny it. Now, I bought into that horse because I wanted a business venture. And I'd be a liar if I said I didn't want some sort of return, right? Thank you, love. Well, was about an horse, you for over your flaming door, then. Oh, Maud, that old neck is giving me some hassle, love. More fool you for buying it. Talking about Vera, not the horse, love. <laughs> hey, don't you dare quote me on that. Nick. Hello, Ricky. What are you doing here? I wish you could say it was a social call, but it isn't. Is your husband about? No, he's at work. Why did you want him? No. Why didn't you tell me he visited Malcolm Fox? He's just trying to sort things out. How do you know? Your grandfather rang me. If there's any sorting out to be done, Vicky, then I do it with your help. Look, me and Steve have had a long talk. I did wrong, and I'm prepared to accept what's coming to me. Then you don't need me anymore. Not with Steve representing you. I married Steve, for better or for worse. That include lying for him? Oh, people have killed for love before now. True. But did they live happily ever after? Life goes on, Vicky. What kind of life will you and Steve have when this is all over? And what kind of life would I have if I sent him to prison? He doesn't seem to have any qualms about sending you there. The police are building a case against you, a strong one. A custodial sentence is a high probability. I don't know that for sure. No. I was forgetting. Steve's advising you now, isn't he? You did it for love, without his knowledge. That's what he wants you to say? The young, innocent wife, 
who can't bear the thought of her husband doing time? I don't doubt you love him. How much do you think he loves you? The same. No man would do this to the woman he loves, believe me. Have I to lie upon lie to save his guilty neck? You once said you'd come with me and make a statement. My last piece of advice, do it. I can't! Before it's too late. Before the police acquire their star witness and add perjury to the list of charges. What star witness? Your husband. Swearing his innocence and claiming that you acted completely off your own bat. If he loves you enough to drag you in this deep, he loves you enough to do that. For all we know, he could be doing it already. Come on, I'll let you can tell me. What's the real reason you left Southampton? <laughs> Told you. Oh, aye. Home is where the heart is and all that. Didn't believe a word. It'll do for starters, though, won't it? The official version's none too pretty. Give it me anyway. Just between us. Difference of opinion, Rita. I thought I was doing a good job. Sunliners thought otherwise. Promoted a chap above me barely out of nappies. They dumped you, then? Oh, I was still with the company. But why Weatherfield? Got bad memories for you, surely. It was the best of two alternatives on offer. The other was something they called facilities coordinator. Counting ping-pong balls and checking jigsaws and any pieces missing. Alec Gilroy, travel agent. Bye, Eck. I'll cope. Mm. Who's looking out at shop while you're uh, swanning round Coronation Street? Oh, it's in safe hands. Time out to view properties. Mm. Saw a flat this morning, an anorexic ferret come to lived in. They wanted 30 grand. Have you thought of renting? I mean, Mike Baldwin's got some flats on uh, Crimea Street. <sighs> Couldn't give me money to him, but be like opening a main vein for Dracula. Look at that collection there. And to think Walt Disney died without drawing any of them. You know Fred Elliott, do you? Oh, uh, there's lads we used to go to the Levin's Zoom Palais together. Mm. Fancies himself as a dancer. Yeah, we all did in them days. Trouble was, every time Fred opened his trap, you couldn't hear the band. <laughs> so it's square one, isn't it? Can't run, you can't jump. Keep it as a pet, that's what you want, because it is. You can buy me out, I see. You can buy me out. Oh, give over, Fred. I'll give you an hypothetical. You lot are in a swamp, sinking slowly up to your necks. I'm on dry land and I chuck you a rope. Do you grab the rope and save yourselves, or do you invite me into the swamp to join you? Right. Now, where is your good lady, Jack? I feel she is in need of some verbal persuasion. She's out shopping. Mm. Then it's crunch time. Do I go ahead with the necessary arrangements in Belgium? Or do you two hypocrites buy me out? Yeah, well, all the, all the, all the owners aren't here, are they? No, that Jack's right, Fred, but we can't speak for everything. Probably is when they do speak, they say out. Right, I want a gathering of the owners, Jack. A decision has got to be made, and quick. Well, are you still killing it? In abeyance, Betsy, in abeyance. Yes, can I help you? We're here to see Detective Constable Cannon. On his dinner. Anything I can do? Nicholas Wilding, solicitor. And this is my client, Victoria MacDonald. She's here to make a voluntary statement regarding charges pending against her. Right, uh, well, if you'll like to take a seat, I'll try and raise the DC. Listen to me without losing your temper. Fred's been in. Now then, me and Don... Oh, well, that's we, I said, listen. Me and Don have racked our brains and we can't see no other way out. It, it's Belgium and now. You see, we are all in a swamp and Fred's the only one with a rope. Look, Jack, it's called Betty's Hot Shot. How do you think Betty's going to feel if you kill her namesake? Will you give over? It's that kind of talk that is making me look an idiot. Look, if it can't run, you teach it, don't you? Oh, what are we going to do? Tie it to Bacalinford Christie? 
Well, I know you could borrow a rope from that Fred Elliot. Oh, yes, very, very funny. Yes, very funny. You are determined to show me up in front of my mates, aren't you? If it means saving that racehorse, yes. Right, well, we've uh, stopped the whistling anyway, but that's about all we could do, Ken. I've been pulled out trying to keep the boss man happy. Oh, yeah? Don't crack in the whip, is he? Hey, you may chuckle, you know, but we decided to do exactly as he tells us. Yes, sir. No, sir. Three bags full, <laughs> sir. Right, well, how much do I owe you? Eh, uh, nothing. It's on the house, that. But don't sell Don Brennan, will you, eh? He'll have me guts for garters. Just sorry I couldn't do a bit more for you. Oh, wow. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. See you then, anyway. Yeah, bye. The key doesn't fit. It doesn't fit? Well, you brought the wrong key. What, what kind of an estate did you die? Don't blame me. I just tell Pout, show folk round properties. Well, how the hell do you do that when you can't get in? <laughs> Give it to me. Let's have a go. It's no use. It's supposed to be the right keys. It says so on the tag. I'm saying it's not fair on the girl. Having her brought in, well, he trips off on his own. Oh, Kelly's looking forward to it. She said so this morning. Well, mine a kid is one thing. Mine in somebody else's home is another. She's not old enough. I bet nobody ever said that to you. Eh? When you were fighting the war. Go on, Percy. You're only a slip of a lad. But I helped, didn't I? I wasn't on my own. I always thought you were, Mr. Subden. Oh, very funny. I wish you a good day. <laughs> uh, do you know anything about this? What? Locks at number 12. They've been changed. Signs gone and all. And what's it got to do with you? Herbert uh, Townsend. Uh, I do part time. Uh, the, the agents, you know. They ring me up, yes, whenever anybody yeah, yes, wants to. Yes, all right, do... all right. Yeah, the point is, I can't get in. It's not for sale. Not for sale. Your lot said it was. A picture still at window. We'll sell the picture. Yeah, what? That flat is not for sale. My estranged husband put it on the market without consulting me. Well, I've decided to take it off the market and use it as a family home. Have you both got that? I'd best uh, check at the office, Mr Gilroy. Office? It's a flabbing chip shop, more like. Complete waste of time. Bayek, I'm proud of you, our Maureen. And there was me thinking you were getting cold feet. Hm. And when you get back, tell them my time's valuable. I will, Mr Gilroy. I don't like being messed about. I will, wasting my time and all with this palaver. I mean, if they give you keys, you expect shut them to... Shut up, fit. Herbert. Just shut up. Hey, Steve, what's the problem, eh? Stitching me up again, Dad. I haven't done it. Oh, come on. Don't you think it's time you left this wee lad alone, eh? Where are you taking him now? He's under arrest and you're getting in the way. Well, just you hold your horses a minute now here, eh? Dad, leave him. On the other hand, Mr Gilroy, it might help if you came back with me. Sort it out quicker with the manager. No. Forget it. Well, well, well. We'll have to talk about this, Kelly. Don't have you doing the domestics as well as looking after Daniel. I did them while he was asleep this afternoon. I can't be going on your car scruffy, can I? Well, I'm grateful, really. It's no trouble. Um, I was going to ask if it... Um, it don't matter. What? Well, I was going to ask if it would be all right if I went early. Say no if you like. Yes, it's the least I could do after you've done all my ironing. I didn't do it for that. I did it because it needed doing. I know, and it's wonderful. I'll just take him upstairs. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. <coughs> I'll get it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're ready. I'm sorry I'm late. I'll get my coat. Oh, hello, Mr. Barlow. Actually. You should be gratefully anti Emily. It's hard work looking after youngsters, you know. Well, I'm not complaining. It's Mr Sugden who thinks I should be more involved. Is he trying to get you a job or what? <laughs> well, he thinks I'm hurt because Ken doesn't rely on me like he used to. I'm not, of course. Though, uh, still, it'd be nice to be asked more often. <laughs> Give over, Emily. You and Ken are like family. Well, that's not quite true, Rita. Whether it's me that's changed or him, uh, I have no idea, but uh, you know, we're not as close as we were. Shouldn't you be over there at that meeting? Oh, spare me that. I've had my say. Yeah. <sighs> just like you had your say to Kevin, hmm? Oh, we didn't fall out or anything. I just went over there to check that he was doing the cabs and he was, so... Oh, no. No, no, I think that... Uh, I 
think young Kevin's coming round to my way of thinking. Well, if you're that persuasive, shouldn't you be over there trying to save that horse? Uh, Kevin, I can handle. Fred and Vera are somewhere else. <laughs> no, look, all I'm saying is our Jack owns an eighth. Well, I'm his wife, aren't I? So I own half an eighth. Sixteenth. Don't you tell your line, Mrs Duckworth, we're still out of pocket. Look, Fred, Billy and Don are against it, and so am I. Alf will do out for a couple of bob, that leaves Gary. Well, I... Fred says right out of pocket. Look, I'll cause a stink if you kill it. I will, I'll go to the papers. And I'm not on my own either, cos Rita Sullivan over there, she were up in arms when she got to know. Go over and ask her, she's there. Right, I'm off. Early papers in the morning. All, All right. right. Night, Rita. Good night, Rita. Night. Night. Night, Rita Lowe. Night. 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 Night, Fred. Good night, Rita Lowe. Right. I am willing to concede. I suggest we postpone Belgium if Mrs Duckworth gives an undertaking to stay on board, become involved like. Well, I am involved. Where are you going with this, Fred? Being involved comes at a price, Mrs Duckworth. Yeah, well, I'll dip in every month, you know, like you do. Uh, one, what were it? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, but we're still no better off. Exactly. Well, we've got a stay of execution until Mrs Duckworth decides the correct course to take. Am I being fair? Me? Well, you are our one stumbling block, Mrs Duckworth. Uh, may I call you Vera? Yeah? <laughs> now, you were willing to take a more involved part in this, weren't you? Well, yeah, I am. Good. Now then, <laughs> while you're deliberating, perhaps you'd be good enough to pay these. Oh, well, that's... Trainers, stables and food bills. £873.62p and counting. Welcome on board, Vera. Nice one, Fred. I'd best be off. See you. Hello. You and your big trap. Ah. <clears throat> Don't worry. I've just come to deliver a message. Uh, your son has been arrested again. Steve? Mm -hmm. What for? I don't know, Elizabeth. They wouldn't tell me. Now, make sure you've got everything you want. I don't want you coming back here. I'll have to come back. There's things I need. Yes, well, anything you want, we'll buy fresh. What's this? I'm going with Grandad. How come they let you go? Dustbin's full, were they? Well, paid me on bail, actually, if you must know. You've done it, haven't you? Steve! You've finally done it! Steve, don't. Go on, man. Be predictable. Take a poke. That's what everyone expects. You shouldn't have done it, Vicky. You shouldn't have let this loser talk you into it. I didn't. Don't to wait in the car. Two minutes, and then I'm coming back up. Why, Vicky? Why'd you drop me in it? I've told enough lies. I feel much better now. Oh, well, great for you, yeah. I think I can finally live with myself. What I can't live with anymore is you. Oh, come on, Vicky. Steve, don't touch me! Vicky! Hi, morning. All set. Well, uh, yeah, he seems happy enough this morning. I don't think he's worked out what's going on. Do you want to say goodbye or just slip out? Oh, no, 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 I say goodbye. I don't want him thinking anyone who packs a bag in this house isn't coming back. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Hello. Oh, let me drop that. Right, now, uh, Daddy's going away for a couple of days for work, but um, Kelly's going to be here all the time to look after you till I come back. Oh, we don't mind, do you? In fact, he's got half a dozen local tots lined up for a rave soon as you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> I've written the number down where I'll be. Uh, you only have to phone if I anything. will, and it won't. And just keep reassuring him that I'll be back soon. Why don't you phone tonight? Let him hear your voice. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Now, you're quite sure you're happy about being here on your own? I won't be on my own. Oh. Right, well, bye-bye, Daniel. Bye-bye. Now, it'll be good for Kelly, won't you? Bye-bye, Daddy. Have a good conference. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Right, OK. Well, uh, bye-bye, then. Bye. Bye. What do you reckon? Later on this morning, we go see if Sophie Webster wants to party. Yay! 
Hey! <laughs> I wasn't even very interested in boys until I met Steve. I had plenty of friends at boarding school at the stables. I used to go and ride my horse Saracen every weekend. But it all changed when I moved to Weatherfield. It had to. I lost my parents, you see. Bet and Grandad became my family. Bet was his wife. She died? No, no. She she left. Not Grandad. They split up a while ago, and uh, then she had some financial problems. Fairly big. And one day she just went. I wanted to help her. Steve convinced me not to. Well, how could you be expected to help her? I'm rich. Everybody expects me to help. Everybody. Couples fall out. More often than not, over money. You'll probably make it up with this husband of yours. <laughs> then again, you're young. There's plenty of time to meet someone else. I'm 19 and I feel about 90. Ah. Well, any more tea in that pot? I'll make some more. It's a nice woman, Jessie. <laughs> Runs a decent place. Des in. Uh, I don't know. I think I heard him go out. Des! No, he's gone. Do you want a brew? Yeah, I love one, yeah. And there's uh, some toast if there's any in. Nothing <laughs> in at the flat. Never heard of this thing called shopping? You go out and you do it yourself. Yeah, well, we're a traditional family. The wife does it. Only she prefers doing ours at the police station. Take it she didn't come back over the weekend, then. Well, she wouldn't have got past the front door if she had. I also take it that she pays for this flat you won't let her back into. Well, she pays for everything. Well, wasn't that the idea, Steve, when you married her? I mean, you were up to your eyeballs in debt then. It's the reason why you're not too keen to come face to face with Des, innit? You got to bail you out that time, only this time it's backfired on Vicky. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry to have troubled you. So you don't even ask who's guilty of what here, do you? You just presume it was me. Do you want me to get you her address, maybe? Eh? Maybe you can pop in. That's what you do with most of me girlfriends, innit? Oh, girlfriend? I've got a girlfriend of my own, thanks, Steve, and one's usually enough for me, you know what I mean? Well, what'd you do? Win a raffle. Look, Steve, all this stuff that you are mixed up with is well out of my league, pal, and I don't want to help. I'm your brother, for God's sake. But I'm really struggling here, man. Yeah, well, believe you me, it would have been a start. You can try me on an easier one than that. So this is your idea of sorting out your own breakfast, is it? It is, yeah. What's your excuse? I'm here on business. Mm. Gail advanced warning for the uh, lunch at the factory. Oh, great! When do you want them ready for? Bothered. Yeah, fine. You know, I was thinking of making this a regular arrangement. I mean, it'd save us all time. Smart move. One family business supporting another. What's the point? Does he want it through the cafe or Alma will order in catering? Oh, I don't think he'll want to know. I mean, I said this was my idea. He'll accept whatever I say. Well, yes, he's very good like that. He respects initiative. He does. Is this Mike Bond we're talking about? Here? Apparently. Of course. You were his bookkeeper for several years. Yes. He's not as bad as everyone makes out, is he? No. No, he'd always pass through for his morning and afternoon growl, but <laughs> the rest of the time... He'd leave you up to yourself, eh? Yes, yes. And if it's not ready in ten minutes, you get it absolutely... Uh, uh... Morning, Dom. Morning. Two more seconds, Tony. <laughs> What's, uh, what's bookings like today, then? Oh, you know, taxis and taxis and more taxis. I thought you said the boys had come round to your way of thinking. Look, I've made my point. Now I'm leaving them to get home with it. Yeah, but... Yeah, but what? I thought you said it was the only way forward in business. Not for a novice. Well, I can't go over there and sit watching them all day, can I? Best sort of experience, I would have thought. See you at 12.30, Gail. Yeah, OK. Uh, Charlie, I was thinking, uh, might be worth me sitting in for a few hours, you know, just to observe. You never know. I might learn something. Yeah, yeah. 
You, you could do. Um, when you got time, eh? Well, I'll make time. How would your day suit you and Kevin? It's as good as any other. Right. We'll do that then, eh? Yeah. If you could just clarify a couple of these direct debits for me. That one's a nightclub membership, and that one's a gym. Seventy pounds a month? It was for two. It was cheaper if you joined as a couple. It's funny, we never actually went together. I think he used it a couple of times. And who put the initial deposit down on the flat? I did. And the rent comes out of? Our joint account. In other words, I paid for it. If you don't intend to continue living there, I suggest you cancel that standing order immediately. You'll need to terminate your lease in writing. Your statements show a number of cash withdrawals, largest sums. Some of them would be mine. Probably very few. And what about these credits? Are they Steve's contributions? Transfers from my investments. Oh. Look, do we really have to go through my stupidity penny for penny? Look, your Uncle Nick's only trying to help, love. I mean, it's all part of the evidence. When it gets to court, you see, he needs to prove that... What, that Steve married me for my money? Yes, well, you two are probably enjoying looking at it all in black and white, but I'm not. He's put a whacking great dent in her inheritance, Alex. You've done well in getting her away from him. For now. Is there anything we can do to stop him causing further damage? We can cut him off dead, but only with Vicky's cooperation. <sighs> yeah, uh, can you tell me the current balance on that account? Good. Uh, how much can I actually withdraw without closing that, then? Oh, uh, I'll get that. Uh, uh, Steve! Oh, I'm just on my way into town. Oh. Suit yourself, then. I'll get that, shall I? Uh, yeah, that'll be a big help, thanks. My stomach thinks my throat's been cut. I'm always letting those bacon sarnies go cold. Yeah, well, we couldn't really stop for 11s, is it? After you strolled back at half past eight with him, could we? <laughs> Did they have a choice? Uh, have yeah, I told you what a nice guy Mike Baldwin is? Yeah. He's on me again. Just hang on, I'll just have a word with my lads. Peter Jordan says he's a regular. Yeah, he is. What's up? His milk is backfiring. Sounds like the car he needs looking at. Uh, he says you usually pick up and return. Uh, we do for him. Might be able to squeeze him in at dinner time, but, well, neither of us can go and collect it. <laughs> Cab drivers, eh? Who says there's never one around when you need them, eh? Got him out of our hair for a while. Ah, nice one. <sighs> Honestly, I don't know what got into her. I mean, I know she loves me. Well, I know she loved me, but can you believe it? I mean, we were all there at the court. Did you see her meet this this Brenda Fox woman? Anyone? No, I didn't. I mean, they must have had it well worked out between them. She must have been mental. No, Steve. You were right the first time. Vicky loves you. I think you could persuade her to do just about anything for you. Oh, look, no one was more surprised than me when that Malcolm came clean and said he'd lied about my involvement. And had he? Had he what? Oh, for God's sake, Steve. I felt rotten for thinking you'd stolen that whiskey. Malcolm stole it. Received it then, whatever the terminology is, knowing it were nicked. I apologise to you. Oh, and you were so good about it. Of course you were. But I felt dreadful ever since. Well, they dropped the charges, didn't they? Vicky paid for that. Yeah, well, I didn't ask you to. Rubbish! Look, if this is what you've asked me round here for, I've had it off Andy first thing this morning, now you! Whatever happened to family loyalty? Maybe we've all had a bit longer to wise up to you than poor little Vicky. What next, Steve? You've gone and got your wife arrested, turned her into a criminal! No, you haven't been 
listening. She got me arrested. Her own husband. I mean, what does she do? Phone you for a few tips on how to go about it, hey? Oh! Look, I am not going to go down for this. But I am going to come out of my marriage a damn sight better than my dad did with you. Get out! <laughs> Thought a young Vicky McDonald. I mean, she's one of them horsey types. Might be in the market. Have you heard the size of the bills as women have been landed with? It's feed, it's grooming. Mm, it'd be cheaper to take it out to dinner. <laughs> 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 so what are you having done? Oh, I'm waiting on a sunbed. I told our Garrett if he's going to blow our holiday money, I at least want to look like I've been somewhere. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, the stress of all that money they're throwing away on that thing. I just had to come and have a massage. I thought, if it's having a regular rub down, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it, I'm on. If anybody wants me, tell them upstairs doing my bit. Making hay while the sunbed shines. <laughs> all right, love. Have fun. Oh, I will. Now, what can we do for you, Alec? Well, provide me with a set of keys that fit. I'm here to buy a flat, not groceries. Ah. I mean, is she wanting to sell number 12 or not? It is rather urgent to find somewhere. Yes, you've got your granddaughter to think about now. Oh, yeah, how is she? How do you? Word gets about fast round here. Oh, good. Well, keep spreading it, because I want this separation to be as permanent as possible. Have a restraining order put on him. That seems to be the in thing. I should have had Red restrained from doing a lot of things years ago. Mm. Well... Are new keys available or am I wasting my time? Well, that's the thing with marriage breakups these days. It's all down to possessions. Who gets what, who put what in to start with. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. And it's not our Maureen's fault. It's him that's been the swine and she's the one that stands to lose. Yeah, that's the frightening part. Is it too much to ask you to leave it for a few days? I'm just concerned that while she's feeling vulnerable and while she's still in shock, she just doesn't go and hand the lot over to him, or worse still... Run after him. Well, I, I can wait, but not too long. I'll contact you. You'll have the first refusal, and that's a promise. Oh, right. Well, I shall expect to hear from you then. Oh, and uh, give your daughter my highest personal regards. Has he gone? Oh, he's another one who'd sell his own mother, you know. You can see that by looking at him. No. We'll get a good price out of him. When we're ready to sell. And not a moment before. Oh, and uh, one for your dad and Owen. Oh, did you see him, Dad? Bill said you went looking for him. No, I couldn't find him on him. I was in area, thought I'd save you trouble. Oh, in area, well, yeah. Hey, is it serious with us? Can I? Hmm? Well, I hope so, because why are you delivering to where you can deliver to me? <laughs> yes, I have got to. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, I've just embarrassed poor mm -hmm. kid. You're not teasing him about his girlfriend. Oh. You know, when I were a girl, local butcher took a shine to me. Oh. Oh, I said he knew a good bit of rump when he saw one. Are we fit then? Oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, where are you both going? Uh, to the pictures. Oh, yeah, our men folk are meeting at the oh, Legion, so we thought, what? Don't say that. Tonight's what? already given Mr Sugden ideas. He says oh. next time the four of us should do something together. Oh. Sherry, please. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll have one as well, love, yeah. All right. Oh. I know, I know what it is that's different about you. What? It's your colour. You've been on holiday, haven't you? No. No, I have not. I've been in a sunbed. You told her to say that. I never. He did. You should have found yourself a better liar. <laughs> Come on, I'll get you another drink. <laughs> well, Andy's been to see him. Yeah? Yeah. Rex has been around to see Liz, you know what I mean? Big time, too, I have to say. Needless to say, he's been nowhere near me. I mean, I know I've been a wee bit yampy over the last few months, Willie, but, I mean, I've got to see him. There's a load of things I have to tell him. I mean, I've got to try and stop him from bending these rules, you know, otherwise he's going to end up inside. No kidding. God knows how he's managed to avoid it up till now. I mean, we all know about the last time now, don't we? I mean, that was Victoria build him out. <laughs> well, they've dug himself in deep, and that's for sure. Is there any way out? Ugh, I don't know. I hope so. You know, Victoria was... She was the only one who had a good word for me when I was in bother. Apart from yourself, like Willie, you know. Aye, they like that sort of me, though, aren't they? I always take the man's side. Except when it's the dome. Why? Then it's a different story, like, isn't it? Mm. Oh, well, no, don't be too hard on her, you know. 
See, Stephen's got her wrapped round his wee finger, so he has. So you reckon it's like she says uh, he put her up to it, man? Mm-hmm. Hello, Daniel. It's Daddy. I'm missing you. Hello, can you hear me? Did you hear him? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Did he hear me? He understood every <coughs> word. Oh, okay. We're going to have our tea soon. Oh, right. OK, well, can I just say goodnight to him then? Yeah. yeah. Night-night, Daniel. Sleep tight. Right, bye-bye. Bye. Right, bye, Kelly. Bye. bye. Is that Daddy? What's it? We are talking to Daddy on the telephone. Better. Well, you don't smell like meat anymore. More like something sweet. Are you Flowers. Sw- are you smell like bullbath with plastic bear? That's Daniel's. That other buckle pond. It's Mr Barlow's. You're up there ages anyway. What were you doing? I hope you haven't used all hot water. No, I've been playing with bath toys. It's got a me collection. <laughs> How many kids am I looking after tonight, eh? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Oh. You're not paying good money for what I can do for you, better. Oh, fine. Over to the left. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No. There's no escaping him, is there? There they are. Right, buy a drink. If anybody knows you deserve one, it's me. They've never stopped today. Am I included in that bill? Of course you are. And they, whatever they want. Right. I really am trying, but I can't say it's appreciated. And do you know what she said to me? Mother, I don't know what I'd do without you at the moment. Oh. She said you've been so supportive, fronting up to people when I'm not up to it. I feel closer to you than I ever have. Oh. And I said, Maureen, what are mothers for? Well, absolutely. And she'll find somebody else soon enough. What do you mean? A bloke. She's not ready for anything like that. No, but in time, you know. Oh, she's here now. Hey, hey your mother's here. Oh, thanks. Uh, sorry, Mother, it all took longer than expected. What did? Closing up anyway, Bill's off to buy us a drink. Well, I've got one already, and so have you. Oh, well, we'll buy Bill one. I'll just go to the lit and, uh, is it mine? It is, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'll get you one la- la- later. Hey, Sal, do you think Gail knows? Knows what? Hi. Uh, do you mind if I join you? No. I'm just waiting for Martin. Oh. I'll see to the kids, then he's coming home. Busy lives. You're not working tonight? No, no. Night off. Not quite sure what to do with myself. No? Jim's behaving himself. You know he's meant to stay away from me. Uh-huh. Well, he is. We have had some contact over this business with Steve. I suppose you've heard about that. Yeah. Imagine how I feel as his mother. Just can't fathom the sort of things he gets up to. When you look at Andy over there, you can't believe how different two sons can be. No. Hey, Gail! Hi, Sal. Yeah, apparently Martin talked to Kevin earlier on and we're all going out for a foursome tonight. First, I'd have had of it just now, but we're going for a pizza together. Oh, great! Are you sure you didn't want to be oh, alone? No, no, no. More the merrier. Oh. Uh, do you want to come, Liz? Oh, no, no, thanks. I've eaten. Oh, right. Well, I'll, um, I'll go hurry Martin up. All right, we'll wait for you here then. All right, um, it's nice talking to you. Hope things work out all right. Thanks. Have a nice night. No, I'm not sure I'm in the right place, actually. I'm uh, trying to track down one of your guests, Sally Gilroy. A right place, but I'm not sure that he's in at the moment. Well, actually, it's his granddaughter I really wanted to see. Steve? Yeah. I was only saying to Vicky this morning that these things can be worked out. She's been a bit upset, confided in me. They all do. Uh, what room is she in? Well, I don't think she's in at the moment, not yet. But wait, I'm sure she won't be long. Oh, thanks, I will. No, that's it. I think we've had the last of him for a few hours. Good. Are you going to switch that thing off? Best not, just in case. Why? Well, how does it work? We can hear him. Is he able to listen to us? Listen to us what?
You've had a busy day, haven't you? Here. You may as well have this. It's no good to me, not with one pound left in it. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be, would it? Uncle Nick advised me. You were advised? Don't give me this poor little orphan airhead number, Vicky. I know you too well. I've seen you in action. Why did you marry me, Steve? What? Why did you marry me? Well, I could ask you the same question. Because I loved you. I always did. No, you decided you wanted me. So you hounded me and you bought me. You came to me for help. And you came back to me with a deal. I'll do this if you'll do that. You blackmailed me into it. You calculated the whole thing. People say I'm sly. They want to take a better look at you. Doesn't anybody, apart from me, know what you're really like? Not your Uncle Nick. Not your granddad. Well, we'll soon find out, won't they? Poor little Vicky's an expert. She's so good, her husband's going to probably end up in jail. You drove me to see Malcolm Fox. You waited outside while I went in. Oh, well, let's all tell the truth and everything will be fine. How can I trust what you're going to say in court on Friday? You went to the police behind me back. You've emptied the joint account without even consulting me. How did you find out it was empty, Steve? Did you try and get there first? I'll save you any more embarrassment. All club memberships have been stopped. Oh, and the rent's due on the flat. Feel free to pay that. And the lease is up for grabs. My car's still outside, is it? Have you had that taken away while I've been in here? Your biggest mistake, Vicky, was always believing I relied on you for everything. Well, there are one or two... No, one thing I can always get for myself. With no hassle. No cost. Good. Then you shouldn't have any trouble finding anywhere else to sleep, should you? <laughs>